And we have a new tornado warning that has been issued that includes portions of Green and Hale counties. This is going to last until 1230 p.m. We've got James Van in the studio as well. And we're going to be uh, watching this circulation here that's located very close to Bullogy. And it's going to continue moving northeastward right along 11 there. And this will be crossing, uh, it's really staying just to the south, riding parallel to I-20 here. And uh, I'm going to pull a storm track on this. This is moving northeastward at 45 miles per hour. So we're going to pull that storm track there, give you an idea of some of the cities included in this uh, tornado warning here. Utah, you are included in this. It also includes Akron and Stewart. And here's a list of some of those cities in times when you can expect uh, this center of circulation to arrive in your location. So uh, moving towards Wedgworth at 1157 a.m. Evansville at 1159 and eventually Akron close to 12 p.m. So everybody included in this polygon, you need to be getting into your safe place. Uh, we are looking at a pretty strong indication here of rotation showing up on the radar. This is going to be very, very close to Bullogy. Yeah, let's go and uh, talk about Okay, so I'm going to zoom down. We're, we're working on getting James's mic ready to go, and we will have him uh, update us here in just a second. But I wanted to zoom down and uh, give us a closer look at what's going on here. So this rotation right here near Bullogy, just to the north of High Cut, very close to uh, Lizzieville, and moving towards Allison here. So as I circle this, this is what we're looking at is the uh, differentiation here of these colors. So we've got red and greens coming in very close contact, which indicate a pretty strong signal of rotation here, riding right along uh, Bullogy Street. So if you live in and around Bullogy Street, this rotation is moving very, very close to you. I'm going to use this uh, marker here to draw the uh, general motion of this thunderstorm here. James, do we have uh, your mic ready to go at this point? Yes, we do. Uh, so what I want to do right now is kind of talk about who is in and who is out. All right, so let's expand out the polygon here just a little bit, Taylor. And we're going to be in weather coverage probably for a long time. Uh, this could go on for uh, probably through the evening hour. So just kind of sit back and we'll take every storm today one at a time. This is the concern right here. Let me kind of get your bearing straight. This is Utah. Utah is the county seat of Greene County. We have a possible tornado pretty much on U.S. Highway 11, very close to Bolagy, a little northeast of Bolagy. And this is going to be rolling right down U.S. 11 into uh, into Utah uh, here in Greene County. So uh, again, if you are in Utah, you're in the polygon. Let me kind of go through some of the cities in the polygon right now. Uh, in Hale County, you've got Moundville, Havana Junction, Wedgworth, Sawyerville. If you're in any of these places we call out, you need to be in a safe place right now. Go through your tornado precautions. This does not include any part of Tuscaloosa County. So again, a possible tornado is currently down just about five miles southwest of Utah, moving northeast right toward downtown Utah. And we have a camera that is live in Utah, so if we can take that live. And today we'll be doing some double boxing. I know that some of you don't necessarily like that because uh, you, you want either the radar full screen or this full screen, but we, we know, we know from social science studies that if people can actually see a tornado, they will do something, they'll react. They react better than what we have on radar. So again, we'll try and get the boxes squared away where maybe uh, we can make my box a little bigger so we can see the radar a little better. We can flip that. So let's go to me full screen. What I'd like to do is have me in the bigger box, the live video from Utah coming in the smaller box. But again, we've got a camera in Utah, so we'll be watching this possible tornado coming right up into the core of uh, Greene County. Again, uh, Bolagy is right here. This is your possible tornado about halfway between Bolagy and Utah. So again, the uh, clear message here, if you're in the community of Utah in Greene County, now is the time to go to a safe place. That's a small room, lowest floor, near the center, no windows, everybody with a helmet on. You cannot be in a car, you cannot be in a mobile home. The tornado is close enough to Interstate 5920. We advise that you do not travel along either Interstate 5920 or U.S. Highway 11 or U.S. 43 or or Alabama 14. All of those major roads intersect in the city of Utah. The last place you want to be is a car. And today we're going to have multiple situations just like this. It's going to be a day where we could have some strong, violent tornadoes. And uh, everybody needs to be very attentive today and listen very carefully. Watch these polygons and you respect the polygons if you're in it. And if you're not in it, 
That's okay. Watch the weather carefully. So again, we've got a live camera that is in Utah, and this uh, possible tornado is coming right up on that particular location right here. We have multiple spotters out in the field, and what's going to happen once it exits Utah, it'll be crossing the Warrior River, which is right here. That's the boundary between Green and Hale counties, and from there, it's going to cross over into Hale County. Akron is right here. Havana Junction is right here. This is Alabama Highway 14 coming back over towards Sawyerville and Wedgworth. Uh, and again, uh, obviously, all of this area is in that flashing red polygon. This is the only tornado warning in the state, so we'll be focusing exclusively on this storm. We have a lot of flooding issues in North Alabama that happened earlier today that's going to be going on for a while. But again, the focus we are going to have during our coverage this afternoon and tonight, storms that are life-threatening, and this is the first one of the day with a possible tornado. Uh, so again, you can see that possible tornado coming right up in the direction of Utah here in Greene County. And if we could put the tracks back on there real quick, uh, Taylor, we're going to you know, give you some approximate arrival times. And again, as you see these ETAs, understand, don't take it down to the second. We want you to see, if you're in the polygon, you should be sheltered right now. Uh, so again, uh, these are the approximate arrival times. You can see Utah at 1149. It's currently 1143, meaning you've got six minutes. But again, don't wait. Do not wait, uh, but this will give you an idea when the tornadic circulation should be close to you. You want to be sheltered right now. And the other approximate arrival times, Akron and Hale County, which is right here about noon. Uh, Stewart, which is up here near Havana Junction, that would be at 1203. Uh, Knoxville, which is right here, Mo more than likely the circulation is going to pass south of Knoxville. That's on Interstate 5920 at 1204. The tornado warning does not include, again, any part of Tuscaloosa County. This is exclusively for Green and Hale counties in the western part of the state. This is the first tornado warning of the day for the state. We think we'll have multiple warnings. And again, we have a PDS watch. We'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, a particularly dangerous situation tornado watch in effect for much of north, central, and west Alabama until 8 o'clock this evening. Uh, we have the high and we have the moderate risk. And again, we believe conditions today favor the potential for some violent long track tornadoes. And we want to thank our radio partners in Tuscaloosa. We'll be on uh, various radio stations when uh, tornadoes are close to the cities. In Tuscaloosa, we're on 92.9, uh, 101.7, 95.3, the Bear, the Town Square Media stations, uh, uh, Town Square Media Company stations in Tuscaloosa. So again, thanks them to for them for airing our coverage today. But again, uh, we've got a tornado coming right up on Utah. And the, the other video that you're seeing next to me, that's a live camera that is in Utah looking back into this storm. And uh, these storms are going to be uh, pretty much rain wrapped today. Uh, you know, there are some days we can show you clear evidence of a tornado, but in this case, it's going to be tough to do that. So you can see we're seeing a lot of gray sky. It, it, remember, if you don't see a tornado in that video in that other box, I'm not telling you that it's not there. It is there most likely. You just can't see it because of the hills, the trees, and the fact that it's all wrapped in rain. Any uh, debris, Taylor? I saw you put on the CC there just a second ago. Kind of hard to pick out anything at this point. A little bit noisy, uh, seeing a little bit of a lowering in the CC, but at this point, nothing that strongly indicates debris being lofted at this moment. Okay, uh, so again, we're going to be watching that product. This is the debris tracker. This is a product with dual polarization radar. We can see the differentiation between hydrometeors and something that's coming being lofted like boards and bricks and glass nails, tree limbs and things like that. Right now we're not seeing that, but we'll keep a close eye on that. So let's go back to the velocity. This is the best way of looking at this. And again, that uh, possible tornadic circulation is basically right up into Utah. And again, we're watching a live camera from Utah on the other box in here. And again, today we'll be doing a lot of double boxing. We're, we're going to show you actual images of these storms. We cannot show you every tornado. We physically can't do that because we don't have cameras in every spot in the state, but we've got a lot of them out today. And uh, you'll be seeing that. So again, we're watching live video coming from Utah and a possible tornado about to come right through the heart of town right here. Again, to get your bearings straight, this is U.S. Highway 11 right here. Uh, U.S. 11 runs from Tuscaloosa down to Sumter County. This is Alabama Highway 14. Uh, Aliceville is up that way. Greensboro is down this way. And, of course, uh, going south out of Utah, this is U.S. Highway 43 that goes down toward Demopolis and uh, Forkland. Uh, but, again, that tornadic circulation very close to the town of Utah in Greene County moving northeast. After passing through Utah, the circulation is going to cross the Black Warrior River and cross over into the northern part of Hale County. And, again, let's stress that this tornado warning polygon does not include Greensboro, the county seat of Hale County. 
It's Alabama 14 right here. This is Wedgworth. Sawyerville's down here, and really Sawyerville is not in this polygon. Wedgworth is. And again, that circulation will be affecting places like Akron, which is right here. This is the split right here at Havana Junction. Highway 60 goes down to Akron and Wedgworth. Highway 69 goes south down to Greensboro. And uh, that circulation is going to be uh, coming through Utah. It's coming through Utah right now. And again, we're watching that live camera to see what happens at that particular vantage point. Do we know an exact spot of where they're located? If one of the producers can tell me in my ear. All right, and uh, again, we've got... Uh, I've got their location right here, James. Uh, they're actually located... It's th this is... Right off of 20 there. Okay, they're at the Love's Truck Stop, and uh, uh, Brian White is on our Skywatcher chat. This is coming from Bill Castle's camera, and uh, Byron Khalil is with him, and they are uh, in Utah, and again, uh, Bill... It will be safe. Well, that's the next question. Is he safe? Bill has, been, Bill has been at so many spotter training classes, I can't tell you how many. He knows how to stay safe. Safety is always the first concern for our people out in the field. But again, uh, this is coming from uh, Bill Castle's camera in Greene County in Utah, right off Interstate 5920. This is most likely the Alabama Highway 14 exit, which is located uh, right here. So again, that is your possible tornado right here moving northeast. That'll be coming very close to downtown Utah. Again, the camera, uh, Taylor's got it circled, which is right here. So you can see the circulation is going to be passing south of their location. And what's going to happen once the circulation moves northeast of Utah, they'll have a better chance of seeing the backside of this thing. At this point, it's just all rain. They're not going to see much of anything. But again, once we get the circulation a little northeast of Utah, uh, the, the camera crew here should be able to look back into it. If there's anything down, we can see that. And it is crucial that we have the storm spotters and the folks out in the field like this because keep in mind that radar beam is several thousand feet off the ground coming from Birmingham. The radar beam goes in a straight line. The earth curves, so the beam is higher and higher. So we know there's circulation several thousand feet off the ground. Is there circulation down at the surface? The only way to know that it's train spotters or, or eyes or cameras, things like that. And that's why the training program is so critical. The Skywarn program, the storm spotters we often talk about. Uh, so again, uh, Bill Castle is located right here. The possible tornadic circulation is coming right through the middle of Utah right now. Uh, we do not know at this point if it's down, uh, but we have to assume that it's down. And that's the reason the Weather Service has posted the tornado warning. So if you're just joining us, we have one tornado warning for the entire state. And this is it. We're, we're not going to have to bounce back and forth between storms. We have a possible tornado that is located near the town of Utah in uh, Greene County. This is about uh, 28 miles southwest of Tuscaloosa, the tornado moving towards the northeast. And on the trajectory, it's going to stay south of the city of Tuscaloosa and mostly in northern Hale County. Uh, this possible tornado will be crossing over the Warrior River, crossing into Hale County. And again, you've got Akron here, Stewart, Havana Junction. Moundville is included in this. Moundville, of course, was hit by that EF1 last Wednesday, we do have a sky cam at Moundville. And again, once that gets closer, we can't see anything from that camera right now. Once it gets closer, we'll be establishing uh, that and take a look at it as it passes to the south of there. Uh, but this is going to be a day where these circulations could last a long time. And I often tell the uh, younger people that work in this business, typically the first storm of the day will talk to you. It's going to tell you a story. And this is really our first tornadic storm of the day. And we'll see how this thing behaves. Uh, but again, that circulation is now just a little east of Utah. It's come through the town of Utah within the past five minutes. And we're watching very carefully to see if we have any reports. And so far, Taylor, I have not seen any damage from this particular tornado. Uh, as we look at the uh, various reports on social media here. Uh, and again, Utah is the population center of Hale County. And uh, Bill and Byron, once this thing clears, they can go down to see if we have any damage. But again, uh, Bill and Byron are located at uh, this exit right here. Again, you can see their location here. Looking back into this, uh, that's the camera angle that you're seeing. And right now it's rain wrap. But once it moves a little farther northeast, we'll have a better chance of looking back into this on the back side of this. So uh, again, tornado warning for northern green. This does not include Forkland. If you're down there in the southern end of the county, down toward the Green County steam plant, Demopolis, you're, you're not involved here. This will not affect you. Other storms might later in the day. Uh, but again, this is going to be moving up in this direction. This is the Hale-Tuscaloosa County line. This is Moundville right here. This, again, this town was hit by an EF1 last Wednesday, causing a lot of damage. And that tornado ultimately came up into southern Tuscaloosa County. And we'll see 
Understand, if this continues to stay down, it could cross over into southern Tuscaloosa County, and a warning could be required for the southern part of Tuscaloosa County. This will probably not affect the city of Tuscaloosa. It will pass south of the city of Tuscaloosa. But again, uh, we'll just see how long the signature stays there. Let's check the correlation coefficient. Again, this is the product where we might see debris being lofted. And again, we're seeing a, it's, it's noisy. That is not a well-defined TDS or a tornado debris signature. We'll watch for the trends here. Uh, but again, at, at this point, we have to assume that the tornado is, uh, is down. And by the way, we should mention there are some strong storms in other parts of the state as well. But we're noticing now that we're starting to see better visibility on Bill's camera back at uh, uh, Utah on, on the interstate. And we're going to show the other storm. I do want to show the other storms in just a second. But before we do that, again, if you're just joining us, the important message, we have a possible tornado that is now located just east, southeast of the town of Utah that's moving to the northeast. And uh, this might be moving a little to the right of the mean flow here. Uh, it could be one of these that's uh, turning. We'll see. It, it looks like it's taking more of an eastward progression. But the general idea is this is going to move northeast up into northern Hale County. And again, uh, this is Havana Junction right here. That's the split. Highway 69 is here going down to Greensboro. Highway 60 here is going down toward Wedgworth. The town of Akron is right here. Akron is in the path of this. Stewart, Havana Junction, ultimately Moundville could be. So if you're in any of these places that we're calling out, we want you to be in a safe place, a good, safe place. And hopefully you've worked out your plan. I think Alabamians did an incredible, incredible job of being prepared last Wednesday. We had no loss of life. We had no serious injuries, despite the fact we had 25 tornadoes. And that level of preparedness needs to be in place today. And I think it is. But uh, again, uh, we don't want anybody driving. And let's first off give an all clear to Interstate 5920. Uh, up here. Interstate 5920 in Greene County will give you an all clear. You can travel on that road. It's very clear now that this tornado is going to stay south of there for at least the next 45 minutes. Now we might have to look at it again, maybe closer to Birmingham, but again for now, Interstate 5920 travel is okay. Travel on US 11 and US 43 is okay. We'll give an all clear. Again, US 11 and US 43 are co signed here, and then 43 splits off going town toward uh, Demopolis. But now the tornado is sitting on the river. Uh, it is sitting on the Black Warrior River. If there's a tornado down, uh, this is going to be a water spout for a few moments as it crosses the river. But that circulation is sitting on the Black Warrior River. And in a matter of seconds, it's going to be over here into Hale County. So very shortly, we can clear Greene County out of this warning and focus on northern Hale. And of course, if the circulation continues, then we're going to have to uh, look at uh, southern Tuscaloosa County. Uh, but this is a pretty sparsely populated part of our state if you're watching this from uh, outside the state. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, if there's one person there, we'll go on television. Every single life is precious, whether you live in a city or live out in the country. It doesn't matter. Uh, but in terms of getting reports back in through here, it's a fairly sparsely, uh, sparsely populated part of the state. Got some hunting camps on the river down here. And again, that's going to be coming right up toward Akron, which is right here. And then it'll be crossing Highway 60 up toward uh, Havana, Havana Junction. Probably passing a little to the south of Moundville, but still, you're in the polygon. You're in the polygon, you respect the polygon, you're going to be in a safe place. Uh, this will be crossing uh, Highway 69. Again, Highway 60 is right here. Akron is located right here, pretty close to the river. So again, this is pretty, very close to the town of Akron in Hale County. And again, these are some approximate arrival times you're seeing over here on your screen. We've got Akron at 12 noon. It's currently 1155. It's basically right up on the town of Akron in Hale County. And let me just say this as you look at those ETAs. Uh, let's give it all clear to Greene County. So if you're watching us in Greene County, we're going to give it all clear. The concern now, it's Northern Hale. So we'll take off Greene County. I'm at uh, Super. We've got the grant there. Thank you. Uh, it's Hale County, Northern Hale County for this tornado uh, that seems to be with a very strong rotational signature here. It's still there coming right up on Akron, Stewart, Havana Junction. Quickly, I want to go to a wide view, Taylor, and talk about the other storms. We have some severe thunderstorm warnings in effect. Some of you are getting small hail and strong winds. Uh, and I just wanted to point that out. It's this cluster of storms right here. I want to focus on very quickly. Uh, these are this storm is considered severe and by severe. The definition is 58 mile per hour winds or greater or one inch hail in diameter or larger. 
and you can see that severe thunderstorm complex now from northeast to Birmingham. This out here toward uh, Fultondale and Pinson approaching Clay, Chalkville and Argo up into Blount County. Aniana, Highland Lake right here. All good is right here. That thunderstorm complex is going to be moving out of Blount and St. Clair counties in, or Blount and Jefferson counties into St. Clair County. Uh, places like Asheville and Odenville and Branchville. And within this storm, you'll probably have some small hail and strong gusty winds. So there's no tornado warning in effect for this storm. This is a severe thunderstorm warning. And on top of that, the rain is tremendous. We've had major flooding problems this morning. I-65 is closed up in Coleman at US 278 because of flooding from earlier heavy rains. And there could be some flooding very easily from this. And uh, let's expand it out. Really, let me show you a big picture while we got the uh, uh, the whole state full screen here. These are flash flood warnings up here. Parts of Coleman County, Marshall, Jackson, and DeKalb. This is where we've had some major flooding this morning. This is the severe thunderstorm complex coming out of the northeast part of Birmingham. That'll be coming over toward Anniston and Gadsden. Again, no tornado warning here. That's a severe thunderstorm warning. The reason we are here, it's that. So let's go back to uh, northern Hale County. Again, you can see Tuscaloosa in relation to this. Uh, this is going to be moving about like that. And uh, it might clip the southern part of Tuscaloosa County, but the city of Tuscaloosa most likely will not be affected. Uh, the University of Alabama most likely will not be affected by this. So let's put the velocity display back on. That's a very, very tight tornadic circulation. It looks like it's down to me. So again, it's, it's urgent that if you're in Akron or Havana Junction or Stewart or Cypress or even Moundville, we want you in a safe place, okay? And we're gonna watch this camera really carefully like a hawk. Uh, and, and the one thing we're going to ask you to do today is to be part of what we do. We want you to be an extension of what we do. If you know anybody that lives in any polygon we call out today or tonight, we want you to call them, text them. If, if it's a friend, a family member, a relative, get in touch with them and tell them to turn on the TV. Uh, you know, James Spann's got his jacket off. You know, he's up there in his suspenders and he's got polygons flying. You've got to pay attention uh, because a lot of people on days like today, perhaps they you know, they're off work and they just go home and they watch a streaming service. They will have no idea this is happening. So if you can help us today, that would be a great, great benefit. And you could literally save somebody's life and you can be a hero in this process. So if you know anybody in this polygon, Moundville, Havana Junction, Stewart, Akron, uh, call them and get in touch with them. It's possible tornado, again, is awfully close to Akron and it's moving northeast about like that. And again, this is the split. This is Moundville. This is Highway 69. Uh, the uh, football field, the high school football stadium, Hale County High School sits right here. Uh, the split is here. This is Highway 69 going south to Moundville. That's Alabama Highway 60 going down toward Akron and Wedgworth. And let's just say that Wedgworth, you are okay now. Earlier you were in the polygon, right now you are not. The polygons continue to be defined as the storm moves along. And let's also stress that you will not have any issues if you're located in Greensboro, okay, or if you are in uh, the southern end of the county, down toward Galleon. This will not affect you at all. This is the northern end of Hale County only. And again, Wedgworth and Sawyerville, you are okay from this storm. We'll give you an all clear uh, as this will be passing well to the north of you. The concern will be Akron, Stewart, Havana Junction. And again, if you're in Moundville, you want to be in a safe place. Taylor, what you see on that sky cam? Uh, looking on the sky cam now, we're seeing uh, kind of just uh, some heavy rain at this point. And we're seeing what looks like uh, some, some darker clouds off in the distance. I'm actually going to try to swing this around the other way and see if we can get a more clear picture uh, from some of these other angles here. Uh, but at this point, heavy rain. Looks fairly calm. The wind doesn't appear to be as that strong right now in Moundville, but we've got a tornadic signature on the way. So if you are in Moundville, you are included in that polygon and you should be uh, heading to your safe place if you're not already there, but you should already be there at this point. And just so you'll know, this tower is in downtown Moundville and, and it's uh, a camera that the city of Moundville has. We thank them for letting us tap into that. Uh, Daniel Fowler and his crew down there do a great job and uh, we thank them for access to this camera. So let's just kind of leave that on the Moundville camera. And again, obviously we're looking back into this. Let's put the uh, reflectivity back on real quick and I'll kind of show you what we're looking through here. So this is your camera and we're looking through all of this to try and see this. And obviously that's not gonna work. But again, once this moves northeast, we'll get that back view on the back side of this. So once it departs that area, we'll have a much better view of that. To see this, you'd have to be you know, down here in the south toward Wedgworth or Sawyerville, looking back to the north. 
And again, this is a fairly sparsely populated part of the state, but just understand there's a very strong likelihood there's a tornado down. So let's go back to the velocity, which I think tells the story maybe better than anything else at this point. And again, your possible tornadic circulation maybe is just north of uh, Akron. The, the, the old school building in Akron is probably about maybe a mile or so north of there. But remember, I, I want to point this out. Like in a case like this, when your radar beam is several thousand feet off the ground, the storm can be tilted and the tornado down at the ground might not be at the exact location where you see the velocity couplet on radar. Uh, in fact, sometimes the radar beam can be 8,000 feet off the ground, and if the storm is tilted, that tornado is not going to be in that exact spot. But it gives you a pretty good idea. Still, anybody in this polygon, uh, you've got to be in your safe place. So possible tornadic circulation near Moundville. This is the town of Stewart. Again, you've got uh, Havana Junction right here, the home of the legendary J.B. Elliott, my mentor, who uh, was such an important figure in my life. He worked for the National Weather Service in Birmingham for 32 years and had me under his wings. Uh, J.B. passed away several years ago. We miss him greatly, but uh, he's from Havana Junction. J.B. and I have been down through there so many times over the years, but that'll keep on moving northeast. That'll be crossing Highway 69, most likely a little north of the junction right here, uh, between the junction and Moundville, but clearly anybody in Moundville should be sheltered. Anybody in Havana, in Stewart, in Akron, you should have been sheltered 30 minutes ago when the warning was issued. Uh, and again, that will keep on moving to the northeast. And we're watching the sky cam at Moundville. This is what you see in the other box. And again, I, I just want to address the way we do the video. People say, why, you know, you're, you don't see a tornado on the sky cam. Why do you leave it up? Well, number one, we might see something at any time over there. And number two, people just react better. The, the one thing we, we've learned over the years, what we do is not enough. Physical science, that's my background. That's Taylor's background. We don't know much about human behavior. We don't know much about social science, but social scientists have worked with us. We have to have this interdisciplinary approach with physical and social science to help us. And they've said, you, you show them, you said lightning flash, that was pretty wicked on the, sky, on the camera there, but you can show them the storm that it's really there. They, they do something about it. So that's one of the reasons we do that. Uh, and again, we're gonna be here probably for a long time. This could be a situation where we're gonna stay on television maybe for eight, nine, ten hours uh, between now and the time it all ends later tonight. So just everybody kind of strap in. And I, I want to also talk with you for just a second if you have a, a anxiety about this day, uh, maybe a, a phobia about what's happening. Some people do. Maybe you've experienced a horrible tornado in the past. Remember, even on a big day like this will probably be, the odds of your house being hit are really low, very low. But still, you've got to listen to the warnings and you've got to respond if you become in a polygon later today and just go about it. And we're going to get through this day together just fine. Last Wednesday, we had 25 tornadoes, no, in, no loss of life, no serious injuries. And, and that's our goal for today. But again, you can help us. And if you know anybody in these polygons, please let us know. Uh, we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning for Blunt, parts of Blunt, Calhoun, Etowah, Jefferson, St. Clair, Talladega counties. Let's go back to the other storm very quickly. We're focusing on the tornadic storm. Uh, in West Alabama, but we should mention we have a uh, cluster of, of strong storms that could produce strong straight line winds and large hail. So this is your new polygon. This does include the city of Anniston. Uh, and again, it does include the city of Gadsden. So this is a cluster of severe storms from near Trussville, Chalkville, Argo, back up towards Springville, Straight Mountain, All Good, Aniana, uh, Highland Lake, and that's going to be coming into St. Clair County, affecting Asheville, Odenville, moving over toward Raglan into Calhoun County, ultimately affecting places like Jacksonville, Sachs, Weaver, and Anniston. And with this storm complex on the eastern side of the state here, you could see hail and strong, maybe damaging straight line winds. Uh, and that's the concern here. So the severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until uh, 1 15 for these counties in East Alabama, for parts of Blunt, Calhoun, Etowah, Jefferson, St. Clair, and Talladega counties until 1:15, as this moves on to the east. Uh, and again, this does include Anniston and Gadsden. So you could see strong straight line winds and hail. Wanted to be sure you were aware of that. Let's go back to our Hale County storm. We're gonna stay mostly focused on this one because this is the one storm in the entire state that is producing a tornado or most likely producing a tornado at this point. This is a radar indicated tornado. And again, you can clearly see the notch and the hook in the back of the storm that's passing through northern Hale County. And again, here's the edge, the northern edge of the, <coughs> the uh, polygon, which is pretty close to Moundville. But that still shows pretty violent circulation. Let's go to the uh, correlation coefficient real quick, and we'll see if we can see a lowering, which would represent debris. And really, we don't. It's noisy down through there. 
So hopefully it's a strong circulation of law, but forget the fact that we don't see anything here. You still got to be sheltered. So back to our velocity, that'll tell the best story. And again, uh, Taylor's working the camera in Moundville, which is right here. And we're obviously looking back down into this. Rain is going to be a problem today. Uh, you know, if you watch some tornado coverage, you might see these beautiful shots of you know, tornadoes from miles away. Well, that's where there are no hills and no trees. They're, they're high based and they're not these LP supercells or HP, uh, not the HPs like we have, but the LP, the light precipitation. We have the heavy precipitation supercells and it's really tough to see this stuff, but still we're going to do our best to get cameras on here today. And again, uh, Bill Castle and Byron Khalil, they're going down into uh, Utah to check and see if we have any damage down through there. Uh, Hale County EMA Brian White in our newsroom uh, is reporting no damage or injuries so far. They have uh, talked with Hale County EMA, but again, the tornado has been going through a fairly sparsely populated part of northwestern Hale County. But at this moment, uh, we have no reports of uh, damage or injuries from this segment of the storm in uh, Hale County. A uh, couple of other notes. Uh, we've got, uh, again, flash flood warnings continue in effect up in parts of uh, North Alabama for Cullman Marshall Morgan. If you're up in that part of the state in Cullman County, you know the flooding has been rough. Interstate 65 is probably still shut down from flooding right at US 278. So if you're trying to drive up through there, it's going to be a rough ride. In fact, today, I'm not so sure I'd want to drive around a lot. A car is the worst possible place to be during a tornado. But if you do have to drive today, be very weather aware. And if your phone goes off, if you're driving, you hear that loud WIA tone, that wireless emergency alert tone. Uh, pull off at the next exit, the next gas station, convenience store, fast food restaurant, and take shelter in there because the last place you want to be today is a car or a mobile home. Uh, so again, we've got uh, strong evidence of a, what could be a tornado that is now east of the Warrior River. And again, it's cleared Green County. Green County, you have no danger from this storm. That tornadic circulation is about to cross over Highway 69 just north of Havana Junction, just north of there between Moundville and the junction. And again, the junction I'm talking about is right here. That's Highway 60 that goes down toward Akron. Uh, this is Highway 69 that goes down toward Greensboro. We can give an all clear to the town of Akron. If you're in Akron, you can come out of your tornado safe place. The tornado is now north and east of you, moving away from you. And uh, the Weather Service will probably have to consider a tornado warning here for southern Tuscaloosa County shortly. Uh, again, uh, you can see Taylorville right up here, Inglewood, uh, Maxwell's Crossroads, the community of Hull. That's Highway 69 going up toward Tuscaloosa. This is US 82. Uh, Duncanville is located right here. Uh, if you were affected by that Moundville tornado, this probably will go south of you by a little bit, but just heads up, watch this thing really carefully. For example, if you live on Rossa Road in southern Tuscaloosa County, if you had damage last Wednesday, it's going to be close. It might pass a little south of you, but it's going to be close. And we'll see if the Weather Service uh, issues a uh, warning uh, for this storm. Uh, and uh, again, just watching some of the reports coming in from the Weather Service. Taylor, I've not seen any damage. Have you? Uh, I have not yet. I've been monitoring those different uh, chat sites, and I have not seen I mean, I also am still monitoring the CC here on one of my other devices, and I haven't seen a lowering yet, but uh, certainly seeing that strengthening right now of that, that uh, velocity signature. Right. It, it's very intense. I mean, it is very intense, and nobody should be letting their guard down. And I'm afraid we're going to see a lot of these today, and I mean a lot. And quite frankly, this might be the easiest storm of the day for us to work because we have just one. On a day like today, we'll probably have multiple storm, uh, storms like this. But again, uh, we're watching the Moundville sky cam, which is looking down into this, and all you can see is rain. To have a chance of seeing a tornado, it's going to be when the tornadic circulation moves up here near the Tuscaloosa County line, and we can look back to the east into this and ultimately look back from this direction. But we're not quite in that position yet. But uh, we're going to watch that camera in Moundville very carefully. The, again, this is a sky cam that's on the uh, communications tower in downtown Moundville, the city of Moundville. But that's your couplet right here. Uh, the, the couplet's only about 15 miles due south of downtown Tuscaloosa. But again, uh, if you're in the city of Tuscaloosa, this will not affect you at all. Just to give you some level of comfort. The same thing for the University of Alabama campus, for the parents all over the world that watch this. They have kids at the university. There's no issue here. But again, this is the first of many storms coming during the course of the day today. And again, much of the state, much of uh, north, central, west Alabama under a tornado watch until 8 o'clock tonight. And this is not your ordinary watch. This is a PDS watch. 
and that means this is a particularly dangerous situation. Based on the atmospheric profile today, we think we could see a few strong violent tornadoes uh, with a chance that they could stay on the ground for a long time. The long track type tornadoes that might be down for 30, 40, 50 miles or longer. And by strong violent tornadoes, we're talking EF345, these upper end tornadoes that can be so destructive. But all tornadoes are dangerous, understand that, but those are the ones we really, really have to focus on. So we've got evidence of a tornado right now that's crossing Highway 69 uh, between the junction here, Havana Junction and downtown Moundville. And again, uh, we've got intense rain that is falling in Moundville. Let's pop the reflectivity back on here real quick. And I'll show you, they are just an extremely, extremely heavy rain. There could be some small hail falling in Moundville. And that's the reason on the sky cam over here, you're just not going to see that much. Uh, but again, this is the inflow notch. And again, your possible tornado is right here about to cross over Highway 69. Moundville here, we're looking south in the sky cam. This is your possible tornado. So we'll go back to the velocity, and that's always going to give a better view. Uh, goodness, I think back on the days we didn't have velocity before Doppler processing the old WSR 57s and 74s and these old radars, how far we have come. And now with dual polarization, it's amazing the products we have. Here's your new tornado warning, okay? This is going to be in effect for southern and eastern Tuscaloosa County and northern Bibb County. So let me tell you who's in and who's out. And if you're in the polygon, respect the polygon. You're going to do something about it. You're going to go to a safe place. You're going to be off these roads. So uh, first off, uh, this does not include Tuscaloosa. Let's make that perfectly clear. The uh, tornado warning for southern and eastern Tuscaloosa County does include uh, Duncanville. Uh, it does include uh, areas up to about Taylorville. It includes Vance. It includes Coaling. Uh, it includes the southern part of the town of Brookwood. It includes Lakeview in the far eastern part of Tuscaloosa County. In Bibb County, Brent and Centerville are not in the polygon. Areas to the north are. So uh, again, this would include uh, US 82 Eoline back over toward uh, West Blockton. You're in the polygon. This is Highway 5. This is US 82. Nobody should be driving now along US 82 from Tuscaloosa to Brent. Just stop right now. Do not be on that road because this tornado, uh, and most likely it is, is going to be crossing US 82 down here near Duncanville. Very close. So again, nobody traveling along US 82 between Tuscaloosa and Brent. And then it's going to be crossing Highway 5, maybe up here near the uh, US 11 junction in North Bibb or Bibbville near Woodstock. Uh, but again, Woodstock, all these towns we're calling out. You're in the Polygon, West Blockton. You've got to be sheltered. Now, again, if you're in Brent or Centerville, technically down here, you are not in this, okay? This is Brent. This is Centerville right here. The county seat sits right here. This is your tornadic circulation that's going like that. Tuscaloosa's not in this. This is splitting. Tuscaloosa and Brent, okay? So, but again, US 82 is your major corridor through here, and we want no travel. This tornado is probably about uh, three miles due south of Moundville. And Taylor, we're going to watch that camera. You might, even though it's pouring rain, you might want to adjust the camera just a little bit to see if we can see something on the sky cam. Um, again, it's it is just totally pouring rain right here. Uh, but again, you saw that polygon. So southern and eastern Tuscaloosa County, northern Bibb County, no travel on US 82 between Tuscaloosa and Brent, no travel on Alabama Highway 5 between Woodstock and Brent. Okay, those are the two major highways in there. We don't want anybody in a vehicle. And, you know, it's, it's tough. I mean, Taylor, goodness, you, you got visibility. I mean, you could barely see your hand in front of your face if you stick it out there. It's raining so hard in Moundville. And again, the camera is here. Tornadic circulation is here. The tornadic circulation is now east of Alabama Highway 69. Uh, so it's only about maybe two miles south southeast of that camera location. Once we get that rain cleared out and the, and the storm moves more to the northeast, we have a better chance of seeing something on the back side of this thing. Uh, but again, we're, we're working this one tornadic storm. This is the only one in the state. There are other storms. I understand that. But please allow us to focus on this because this is a life threatening storm. Uh, the warning for parts of northern Bibb, eastern and southern Tuscaloosa counties, the tornado warning in effect until 1:15 uh, this afternoon. Uh, and the Weather Service will stay with this. And so far, we have heard of no reports of any damage from this particular thunderstorm. Mostly, I'm seeing a lot of hail coming from the storm over on the eastern side of the state. Uh, but again, US 82 is right here. This is Duncanville uh, right here. Uh, this is Taylorville right up here. And again, you can see the edge of the polygon is here. And again, I stress if you're just joining us, Tuscaloosa is not involved in this. Some of the legacy systems sound the alarm state or countywide. 
And if you're in Tuscaloosa, Northport, University of Alabama, if you're hearing some type of alarm, this does not include you. You don't need to do anything, but just watch this carefully. This does include everybody south of Tuscaloosa. Uh, down US 82, down uh, from Taylorville, down through Duncanville into northern Bibb County to just north of Centerville and Brent. And it's also going to include that Highway 5 corridor from Brent up to West Blockton and Woodstock and uh, North Bibb. But that's your circulation. So now we can give an all clear to Moundville. If you're in the city of Moundville, all clear. Highway 69, all clear. From Moundville down to Havana Junction, the tornadic circulation is now east of there. And that's going to continue moving in the direction of US 82. So let's expand this out a little bit, Taylor. Let me kind of focus on what's to come. But again, Moundville, all clear. You dodged it this time. You didn't last week. Uh, but again, I, if you can go back a little bit, I can't quite see the couplet there in the box. Thank you. So again, this is your couplet right here. And you can see the tornadic circulation moving right up through here. Centerville and Brent are right here. This is US 82. This is US Highway 11. Let me just say this. Uh, the Mercedes plant is in the polygon. Uh, and they are very good at, at dealing with this. They have uh, systems, a systemic way of dealing with tornadoes in terms of getting people to safety, but the Mercedes plant at Vance is in this polygon. Uh, more than likely, the tornadic circulation will be passing south of the plant, but again, you've got to follow these polygons because that defines the difference between being in danger and being safe and these flashing red lines. Uh, this is the, in the middle of Brookwood right here, the, the elementary school, the high school. You're just out of the polygon, but just across the line here on the interstate, you are. And again, this will affect Interstate 5920. And again, I think the circulation stays south of the interstate, but you're in the polygon, so we advise no travel along Interstate 5920 from the Abernat Bucksville exit down to the Cottondale exit for about the next 20, 25, 30 minutes. Uh, what you're gonna do is pull off at an exit uh, preferably with his a gas station, a convenience store, things like that. Maybe not the Mercedes exit because they don't have much there, uh, but you go down here toward the Brookwood exit. There's a, a number of gas stations right here. Same thing up here uh, for the uh, Abernat Bucksville exit. Uh, so just be in a safe place and do not be driving. We don't want anybody in a mobile home. We don't want anybody in a vehicle, okay, during a tornado. And so if you're listening to us by radio, and again, thanks to our radio partners for their uh, fine work in helping us. Uh, and again, just so you'll know, in Tuscaloosa, we are currently live on the Town Square media stations on Alt 1017, 95.3 The Bear, 92.9 WTUG, and 105.1 The Block. All the stations in Tuscaloosa were live, and that's how you can hear us if you're in your car. We have radio partners in other parts of the state as well, but we thank uh, our friends in Tuscaloosa for airing this coverage. It is a crucial uh, lifeline here. So we've got a very strong indication of a tornado now that's uh, located southeast of Moundville. And Taylor, we're getting out of the rain and we're going to have a pretty good view. And so Taylor's going to work that camera. And if you see anything, you scream at me. And, and by the way, if Taylor ever cuts me off, we, we, we do that on purpose. We want to interrupt each other. We have to do that. If I see something, if she sees something, we've got to just say stop, time out. I've got to go to what I'm looking at here. So Taylor's going to be working the sky cam in Moundville because if we're going to see it, Taylor, we're going to see this thing here in a few minutes, but that's a very, very tight circulation. And then next up, we've got the US 82, which is here. This is the county line, Tuscaloosa County here, Bibb County here. So in terms of travel, nobody on US 82 between Taylorville and Brent for about the next 30 minutes. We want you to, and again, I know there's not a lot on that stretch. You don't have a lot of gas stations or opportunities, but we want you to get off as soon as you can and get into a safe place. Same thing for Alabama Highway 5 from Woodstock down to Brent. We don't want nobody traveling along that road. And on Interstate 5920, we advise no travel from, uh, let's say, the Cottondale exit back up toward the Abernat Bucksville exit on Interstate 5920 until this storm gets out of the territory. Uh, this is in a fairly remotely uh, remote part of the Talladega National Forest, and there are two segments of the Talladega National Forest, one in East Alabama. This is the one in West Alabama. And again, we're watching multiple sources. And again, as you look at this, a reminder that we do have a severe thunderstorm warning on the eastern side of the state until uh, 115 for parts of Blunt, Calhoun, Etowah, St. Clair, Talladega counties. That's that storm that's coming out of the northeast part of the Birmingham metro. That's going to be for hail and strong winds. But we've got to stay focused on this one storm because, again, we've got a very strong indication of a tornado. So let's quickly put on the CC product here, and we'll see if we see debris being lofted in this area right here. And we do. All right, so now we have a TDS, a tornado debris signature here. So uh, we have a tight velocity couplet, and we can call this a confirmed tornado that is located 
in the Talladega National Forest about uh, eight miles or maybe seven or eight miles southeast of the town of Moundville. And again, uh, Taylor, if you see something on that sky cam, you just uh, holler at me because I'm focused on the radar. You're focusing on the sky camera watching the uh, basin here. We might be able to see this and this thing might be big. Uh, it's going to be a day where we're going to have some very large tornadoes, I'm afraid. And again, sometimes they're so large, they're still wrapped in rain and you can't really identify them that well. Uh, but this uh, tornado will be crossing U.S. Highway 82, most likely in southern Tuscaloosa County. Clearly, if you're anywhere around Duncanville, Rossa Road, you want to be in a safe place. Hagler, this community right here, uh, and then back up toward Cottondale and Coaling. Uh, this is all south of the city of Tuscaloosa. And then ultimately, that will be coming out into northern Bibb County. And if, understand, if this thing carries on, if this thing keeps on trucking, and it might, we're going to have some long track tornado. Look at that thing now. Look at the debris signature right here. Wow, that's a new volume scan. So we have debris that is being lofted. And again, that's going to be crossing out of Hale County into Tuscaloosa County pretty soon here. Uh, so uh, again, there's an urgent message here. And again, our, our ask today, if you know anybody in any of these places we've called out, call them or text them. And don't scare them, but just tell them that you're under a tornado warning. And this is a very dangerous weather situation today. You need to join us on the television side and watch what's going on here. And just let them know because we, we can't do that. We, we can't change the channel for people. We can't alert people that don't have a weather radio and, and their smartphone doesn't have all the apps and everything, but you can help us by calling them. That is a major, major part of what I want to see happen today. I don't think we've utilized you enough in the past. We want to do that today. So uh, again, West Blockton in the Polygon, Woodstock, North Bibb, Bibbville, Lakeview in Tuscaloosa County, Coaling, Hagler, Duncanville on US 82, any of these communities, anybody you know down there, give them a call and let them know that there's a, a strong indication of a tornado that is down right now. Um, this will not affect the city of Tuscaloosa. And again, some people say, hey, you keep repeating yourself all the time. Well, people come and go here in severe weather coverage, and some of you will sit down and watch this for entertainment value, even if you're 100 miles away for this or 1,000 miles or 2,000 miles away from this. But remember, people are coming and going, and we have to be sure that they're hearing the most urgent part of our message. And sometimes that means being repetitive. So that's the reason we often stop and repeat ourselves and do these resets. So if you're just joining us now, it is 1223 on Thursday, March 25th, 2021. I'm James Spann. We have Taylor Serralo here, and uh, we're in the process of working a tornado event that is just underway. This is the genesis. This is the beginning. And we're expecting a number of uh, tornadoes today, including the potential for violent long track tornadoes. And our first tornado of the day is in the far northeastern corner of Hale County. Uh, this is about eight miles east of the town of Moundville near the Hale Tuscaloosa County line. Uh, this is about to cross over into southern Tuscaloosa County. This is really going to affect a small part of Tuscaloosa County in terms of geography. Tuscaloosa County is big. Uh, if you're in Samantha, if you live at Lake Tuscaloosa, this is not close to you. OK, this is way down in the southern end of the county. If you're in the city of Tuscaloosa, this will not affect you. If you're in Cottondale, Alberta City, if you're at the University of Alabama campus, this will not affect you. This is all down to the south. But understand, if you're planning on driving from Tuscaloosa down to Brent, don't do that. Don't. Uh, you've got to stop and, and you, I don't care what it is. It might be the most urgent deal of the day for you, but it's not worth your life uh, risking it getting out here on US 82 to go from Tuscaloosa down to Centerville today. Just don't do that. There'll be a time where you can, but just not right now. Uh, and again, you can see that well-defined lowering in the CC right. Taylor, anything? Uh, not, not yet? No, I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay. Uh, and again, we're gonna keep scanning through that uh, uh, storm. We're watching the camera. We're watching it all together and I'm focused on the radar. Taylor's focused on the, uh, on the uh, camera. And, and again, I'm telling you, we're gonna have situations later today with multiple tornadoes and it's gonna get pretty complex. Uh, right now, we just have one, which makes it awfully easy to cover. Uh, so again, that's your negative CC drop right there. That's debris being lofted. And uh, again, what the radar is doing, it, it Radar works like this. It's like throwing a basketball against a brick wall. What's it going to do? It's going to bounce back to you. Well, these are beams of electromagnetic energy, pulses, and they bounce off raindrops or anything else that's out there. And the beams come back a little differently depending on what it's, the bounce is coming from. And these are moving targets as well, raindrops, but it can determine if there's something different about the returned energy. 
and it correlates everything. And if there's something just different, uh, you get this big negative value in the correlation coefficient product, and that's what this is. And so that means this is not a raindrop, not a snowflake, not a hailstone, uh, not an ice pellet. This is something from the ground being taken up. This could be part of a building, most likely in this case because of where it's located, mostly trees, tree limbs and uh, debris from the, the forest. And again, it's clearly down, so we've got a tornado that is down, a confirmed tornado, and that's the way we work it now. This is an amazing product. We didn't have this 10 years ago. We've got a confirmed tornado that's going to be crossing over US 82 near Duncanville uh, in about the next, uh, oh goodness, maybe five minutes. You don't have a lot of time, uh, so uh, we want everybody to take this extremely seriously and understand that this is a situation where uh, we think it is down. And Taylor's watching some spots on the radar looking for uh, locations from that Moundville sky cam where we might be able to see that. And so far we haven't. This is tough, guys. And again, I know a lot of you that watch us from Kansas and Nebraska and Oklahoma, you're thinking, goodness, well, they, you know, they do all this and this. Well, we can't do this. It's a different world down here in the, in the deep south. Our tornadoes are wrapped in rain. We have hills. We have trees. We have just terrain issues. It's tough. We can't do that like you can out in the Great Plains. Uh, they're just different. Uh, so, but again, even though you can't see it on that camera, this is a well-defined confirmed tornado. And again, it's sitting on the Hale Tuscaloosa County line. Uh, and, uh, this is going to be, uh, crossing over into Southern Tuscaloosa County here in just a matter of minutes. And again, watching all the reports on the social side, looks like most of what I'm seeing over here, it's flooding. And that's important. I understand, uh, we've had some major, major flooding through parts of North Alabama this morning. Uh, through parts of Cullman County, back up toward Marshall and DeKalb counties. They've they probably seen an excess of four inches of rain just this morning alone. Interstate 65 was shut down at last word at Cullman at uh, US 278. But again, we're focusing on this right now. Understand it. And when it comes to the flooding, just don't be a bonehead. You know, just listen, turn around and don't drown. It's really not that hard. Don't ever get into water that's running across the road. Doesn't matter what you might think it's not that deep. You don't know. You don't know if the road's been washed out. So just be very careful on the flooding side and, and use your common sense while we focus on these tornadoes here today. So uh, again, Tuscaloosa County, Hale County, Bibb County. This is almost where the counties come together. That triple point right here, that tornado is uh, in a matter of minutes going to be up on US 82. Uh, and again, very, very close to Duncanville. And again, probably the uh, you know, I guess the, the biggest landmark might be the, the middle school there, beautiful uh, school. Uh, but if you're anywhere near the school, the post office in Duncanville, you've got to be in a safe place. This is going to pass clearly well to the north of Centerville and Brent. Centerville, you've never been in the Polygon. Never. Brent, not with this storm, no. Uh, this does not affect you. So again, uh, Tuscaloosa, no, you're not in the Polygon. Brent, no. Centerville, no. It's everybody in the middle here between those two cities, between Tuscaloosa and Brent. And uh, again, we're getting evidence of debris that is being lofted, a very well-defined TDS, a tornado debris signature. And uh, that TDS is, uh, uh, and let me just say that the Weather Service is up their verbiage. Uh, they're not calling this a confirmed, large, and extremely dangerous tornado, which I think it is too. Which it's going to be that kind of day. So again, we have a confirmed, large, an extremely dangerous tornado uh, that is sitting at the point where Hale, Bibb, and Tuscaloosa counties all come together. This is about uh, 15 miles south of downtown Tuscaloosa, and it's moving northeast. We can do a storm track on this, Taylor, put some of the communities in the path that want to give some ETAs. And again, forget the ETA. And you, you see a time. No, we want you sheltered now, right now. If you're in the Polygon, don't wait. But this is just a convenience for you. And again, uh, these are some of the communities out here in eastern Tuscaloosa County and in northern Bibb County. Uh, we've got Vance at 1249. There is a good chance the tornado is going to pass south of Mercedes, but I can't confirm that. It might be close. And you've been in the polygon. Mercedes needs to implement their tornado plan now. And hopefully they did that about uh, 10 minutes ago when the warning was issued. But again, right now we've got Vance at 1249. It's currently 1230. And it might be sooner than that. These are approximate arrival times. Bibbville, this is up in the northern part of Bibb County where uh, 5 comes into 11 uh, at 1253. Uh, so just be aware that th these are communities up and through here. This is in northern Bibb and south and eastern Tuscaloosa counties. Uh, the Mercedes plant sits about right here, just to give you kind of a point of reference uh, in uh, Vance. The town of Vance, the school at Vance is here. The Mercedes plant is right here between US 11 and Interstate 5920. 
Uh, and that's clearly the biggest landmark, the, the biggest place with a lot of people in this track. But again, a lot of folks live in through here. So if you're in this polygon, you've got to stay sheltered. But again, we can give an all clear right now to Hale County. All right, so Hale County, you're all clear from this tornado. Hale County, all clear. Uh, the warning continues in effect for the far southern and eastern part of Tuscaloosa County and the northern part of Bibb County. You can see the polygon boundary by these uh, flash by the flashing red uh, boundaries here. Uh, and again, that's your tornado debris signature right here moving like this. And again, uh, you can see Vance here. Uh, Bibbville is right here, North Bibb, Woodstock. Uh, Green Pond. These are communities all in the in the in the polygon, and that's going to keep on moving. And I want to expand this out, Taylor. Uh, we're dealing with long track tornadoes probably today, so let's keep expanding this out. I want to show the Birmingham Metro. So again, this is your possible tornado right here. It keeps on moving on this track, and what's going to happen? Uh, it's going to come through the southern part of the Birmingham Metro. So just a heads up: if you are in places like Hoover, Bessemer, Shannon. Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, Vestavia, just a heads up, there's no warning right now. Uh, and this includes the TV station here. And the way we're going to do this, if we have to abandon the studio and abandon uh, the control rooms, what we're going to do is go live on a live view. We'll take my laptop into a stairwell on the other side of the building and broadcast live from there. Uh, we drill for this. This is what we do. We keep everybody here safe. But again, if we do have to abandon the control room and the studio, we're going to be broadcasting live. You'll still see the radar, You'll see all these cool graphics. We'll still have control of that. We have remote control of that. But we might have to broadcast from a stairwell over here. And we're located in River Chase in the southern part of the city of Hoover, uh, just off Valleydale Road, just so you'll know we're not on Red Mountain with the other uh, TV stations. But that's way down the road. Again, that, I'm just trying to give you a heads up for those of you in these densely populated southern suburbs of Birmingham. Okay, so got a violent tornado moving like this. All right, and again, this could wind up going right through these northern Shelby County or southern Jefferson County suburbs right in through here. So this is a situation where you've got, you know, an hour to get ready for it. Hopefully you've been getting ready for this day for days. We've talked about this day for days. We talked about it last night, night before last. Don't wait until you see a tornado coming at you on the radar. You do it when the sun is out like yesterday. That's when you do your preps on this. Um, so again, the confirmation is uh, coming from Birmingham. It's off the... Uh, 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 the TDS, obviously, the tornado debris signature that you're seeing here. And I know we've got a lot of flooding going on here, but please allow us to focus on this life-threatening storm. And that's the way we're going to have to work it today. We're going to have to prioritize the storms. And the first priority is going to be dealing with these large tornadoes. So, uh, Taylor, let's take this off and let's go back closer in here. We'll take a look at the, it uh, looks like the uh, lowering is not as intense as it was. So let's go from the uh, debris tracker back over to the velocity display. And let's see what that looks like. And yeah, I think this thing is probably cycling. Hopefully it's lifting. That'd be the greatest thing. So the signature is greatly diminished on radar. And, and I'll say this, the other thing about this, we're getting closer to the radar we're using, which is at the Shelby County Airport, getting a pretty good low level slice into this. So uh, there is a chance this thing is lifted. In fact, I would suggest it probably has. But again, do not assume that you're safe if you're in this polygon right now because this thing could easily ramp back up again. Uh, but this uh, has been down from uh, Greene County near Bology. This came right over Utah. And to my knowledge, we've had no reports of any uh, damage uh, in Utah. Bill Castle and Byron Khalil are there. And I've seen no reports from them. We've got them all together on the uh, Skywarn chat here. Um, and I do want to thank all our sky watchers. It is uh, absolutely uh, critical that uh, what they do on a day like today. These are trained spotters that we've trained over the years, and we're all together on Slack, and uh, uh, it's having this is outstanding. Uh, Ginger Z of ABC News, she's in the area today. We have all of our news folks. We have a lot of folks out in the field, and you saw Bill Castle and Byron Khalil. They were on this storm in Utah, uh, and again, we, we've not been able to see it so far. I think we had it down, but we couldn't see it from the Utah camera that Bill had and from the Moundville sky cam. But again, so far, Taylor, that looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? certainly does. Looks like, uh, at least for the moment, a, a better indication that maybe this is either cycling or has lifted or has broadened out a bit in the last couple of minutes here or so. Uh, so we'll keep monitoring just in case this does tighten back up. So here's a report from Lauren Walsh. Uh, Lauren is with us uh, over in the newsroom. Uh, she has in, been in talks with the Hale County EMA, and they have reports of damage 
on Hale County Road 58 miles south of Moundville in the Talladega National Forest. Trees are down and blocking roads. That makes perfect sense. Uh, that's exactly where the tornado came through. So again, um, uh, we've got reports of damage on Hale County Road 58 miles south of Moundville, right where that thing went through there. Uh, and that's in the National Forest. Uh, trees down and roads are blocked. And also, uh, I do know from, uh, that the Mercedes plant, is, they are in sheltering condition now, and they have been. And again, they do a very good job of taking care of their people in situations like this. Mercedes sits right here between Interstate 59 and U.S. Highway 11, and uh, they're in the polygon. Uh, but again, this could cycle right back up. We don't want anybody thinking that the danger is over here. I think at the moment the tornado is lifted. It could come back down at any time. Uh, but again, the spot to watch is going to be right back here. Let's go to uh, the uh, reflectivity display. And this is going to be, you know, what you're used to seeing on radar. And again, you can see it's gotten a lot. The, the structure does not look as good. It, it is clearly not as healthy in terms of structure as it was 5, 10, 15 minutes ago. But again, this could ramp right back up on a day like today. And understand, we've got a high risk, a moderate risk day going on here. And uh, this thing could come right back. So we're going to watch this, and, and the way the Weather Service will do it, they'll keep, keep an eye on this for a while, and if it ultimately uh, continues to show signs of dissipation, they'll, they'll let the tornado warning lapse. They'll cancel that. They have not done that yet. You have to watch for several volume scans to see what happens here, and that's what they're doing right now. So at the moment, it looks like we had a large tornado down through northern Hale County in a relatively rural part of the county, through the Talladega National Forest. We have confirmed reports of trees down. Uh, and now it looks like that tornado is lifted in southern Tuscaloosa County uh, near the Bibb County line. Uh, Duncanville is over here. Hagler is right here. And that tornado is going to be crossing through northern Bibb. I say the, the tornado, that segment of the storm with the mesocyclone is going to be coming through northern Bibb. And again, this is no direct impact to Centerville or Brent. Might be raining where you are, but I'm talking the chance of a tornado. That's the threat we're going to be looking at uh, most of the day today. And again, there's clearly a mesocyclone going on here, mid-level circulation, but the question is, is anything down? Let's go back to the correlation coefficient product, the CC. And again, we've still got a lowering down here, but that's become pretty noisy. It's not that intense, deep blue that we saw earlier. So again, there's still evidence that there's still some debris that was being picked up, but the uh, signature not looking as healthy as it did 5, 15 minutes ago. And again, we've got reports of damage from this on Hale County Road 50, eight miles south of Moundville, out in the Talladega National Forest. So again, everybody in the polygon, you got to be in a safe place. I know you've been there for a while, but we want you to stay there for a while. And everybody's going to have a what on in your safe place? Helmet. And remember, as we talk about helmets today, there was a great story on our newscast last night from a friend of mine who works at uh, Children's of Alabama uh, in talking about the medical perspective on this. But it, it really, really, really mitigates the chance of being seriously injured or losing your life with a cheap bicycle helmet. Uh, that's all it takes. And this is not just for kids. If, if you're 80 years old, your life is precious too. Everybody's going to have one of these things on as it is, if you're in a tornado warning polygon today. So again, if you're in this polygon, you're going to be sheltered in your safe place with a helmet on. And if you live in a mobile home, you're not going to be there because you left when the warning was issued. You are in a local community shelter or you've gone to a business that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week that will let you in. Most will. A gas station, convenience store, Fast food joint, something like that, anything like that, but you can't stay in a mobile home today during these tornadoes. Uh, we, we hope that you've been thinking about this. And again, the response last week was tremendous statewide. And people heard the messaging, they, they responded, they were prepared, they heard the warnings, they did the right thing. And we've got to make that work today. We have to make that work today. The goal of getting through this day, no loss of life, no serious injuries. And part of that is having that helmet on in your safe place. So this is Alabama Highway 5, and again, we've got broad circulation back here near US 82 that's down below Duncanville. Duncanville will give you an all clear. If you're anywhere near Duncanville, the school, all clear for you. The, the circulation has passed to the east and southeast of you. And again, it's crossing over into northern Bibb. And uh, again, still Vance up here, you're in the polygon. Hopefully we can give you an all clear. The Weather Service will redefine the polygon as the system continues to move northeast. Uh, but those in the polygon would include Woodstock, Green Pond, Lakeview in Tuscaloosa County, Bibville, North Bibb, uh, town of West Blockton, which is right here, uh, the town of Vance. And again, we stress this does not include Centerville or Brent. And if by chance this regenerates and keeps on moving, it's going to wind up in uh, northern Shelby County uh, here. And that's why we gave you a heads up. And hopefully this continues. This weakening trend will continue. Um, 
And again, uh, just watching some other reports from the Weather Service, they're going to leave the warning up for now for northern hail. Uh, excuse me, for northern bib. Uh, hail, you're all clear. And in terms of Tuscaloosa County, there's the city of Tuscaloosa right here. And I know it's raining. I know it's pouring rain. But this does not involve this storm. This is the storm that is producing this possible tornado, or has been. And uh, that's about to cross out of Tuscaloosa County coming into northern Bibb. All right, so uh, the Birmingham Metro is right here. This is the city of Birmingham. And again, this is going to be coming up into northern Shelby County. You've got Helena, Pelham, Alabaster, Hoover, which, of course, is in part of both counties, southern Jefferson, northern Shelby. So if you're in any of these communities in the southern part of the Birmingham metro, keep an eye on this. All right? and that's the thing about it. You know, a lot of times people say, well, this is out in the middle of nowhere. I don't care about it. Well, you better care about it because a tornado in this trajectory, it's coming right for those populated suburbs of Birmingham. And that's why we want to give you as much advance notice as we can on this. So let's go back to our velocity, Taylor. And it uh, looks like, uh, let's see what this scan looks like. It looks a lot better, doesn't it? It certainly does. Yeah, I'm having a hard time picking up uh, on really any strong indication of rotation at this point. But we are still showing on CC, uh, this just could be still lofted from when we had that tornado on the ground earlier, but uh, still seeing a lowering in the CC. Right, and, and again, that, that's probably from the earlier tornado circulation. And, and again, notice how it just it's yep. fading away uh, with time is that debris falls back down to the ground. We begin to lose the lowered CC, is, which is what we're doing right now. And that's, there's no evidence of a tornado at this moment. But again, remember, this could be cyclic. Uh, we might have had an occlusion process where it choked itself off and it might come back. And, uh, but again, if this continues, the Weather Service could cancel this warning. And we certainly hope that they do that because we don't want to see something like this coming up on the Birmingham Metro. And, you know, the thing about last week, last Wednesday, we, we had 25 tornadoes, and I've heard this over and over for people. Well, nothing happened. Well, maybe it didn't happen where you live, but what about those people that lost their home that had horrible property damage? I mean, just horrible, you know, situations. Uh, just, you should be thankful that it didn't happen where you live, and we didn't have any of the major population centers hit last Wednesday on St. Patrick's Day. These tornadoes were out in the country. And again, so what? Every life is important, whether you live out in the country or in the city. I, I'm from rural South Alabama. I, I mean, I grew up as a boy in Greenville, Alabama. Taylor, you ever seen Forrest Gump? I have. Greenville, Alabama. Uh, I'm from Greenville, and uh, uh, I appreciate people that live in rural areas. That's where I'm from, and I, well, I'll always take care of them. And every life is important, and that's the way we do it here. Uh, and uh, again, I, I know that some people would be watching television at this point, and I apologize for cutting off the programs, but that's just, again, that's just the way it's going to have to be today. So we've got very broad circulation in a storm that is disorganized now, uh, moving out of Tuscaloosa County into northern Bibb. We don't have evidence of a tornado on radar at this point, and uh, we're going to wait to see if the Weather Service decides to... Uh, uh, they're going to keep it. Yeah, they're, they're going to keep it. What they've done, they've taken off the tag of a large confirmed destructive tornado and they've kind of downgraded everything in their messaging here uh, but they're going to keep it I, you know that's not a bad thing to do on a day like today and like, like i said at the beginning the first storm of the day will talk to you if you listen if you listen carefully and watch these things it's going to tell you a story about the state of the atmosphere and what might happen so many times over the years i, I can tell you i learned much about the day ahead by storm number one and this is storm number one of the day today uh, I am very thankful that this thing apparently is lifted uh, because your great concern, that first tornado gets down and stays down for 50, 60 miles. That's not happened, but remember, it could come right back down. And, and look, some of the most destructive tornadoes in this state have done that. Uh, you look back at that Tuscaloosa, Birmingham tornado, April 27, 2011. You know, it, it lifted north of downtown Birmingham at Fultondale. It lifted, then it got back down and went through Webster's Chapel. Uh, so it can come back down. But while we got a break, let's look at the big picture here, Taylor. And uh, if, uh, what I want to do is go to a full image of me now. We can take away the double box here for just a second, and we don't have a camera nearby. So uh, if we can just take me full, thank you. Let's, let's do a reset. So here we go. Uh, all the blue polygons, these are flash flood warnings up here for North Alabama. Horrible flooding this morning. I mean... You know, it, it was like a you know, cow going to the bathroom on a flat rock. Uh, it was coming down so hard, and we had major flooding involving roads uh, in parts of Coleman County, including the city of Coleman. Uh, and we have flash flood warnings in effect now for Marshall, Jackson, and uh, DeKalb counties up here in northeast Alabama from earlier rains. This is our tornado warning here. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning for east Alabama. Let's look at this one, Taylor. This is uh, on the eastern side of the state. 
And again, we have no sign of any tornado circulation here, but the storm system that's been coming through Gadsden uh, is capable of producing some small hail. I'm seeing a lot of images of small hail, uh, strong winds, and these are severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of Etowah County and Calhoun County. Uh, the core of this uh, thunderstorm complex is now through eastern Etowah County, uh, Ball Play, uh, Hoax Bluff, Glencoe, places like that, and then curving right down the river down toward uh, Ohatchee uh, and Lake Neely Henry, around the Lake Neely Henry Dam between Raglan and Ohatchee right here, and that'll be moving on to the east. Now, the, the polygon does not include the city of Anniston, does not include the city of Oxford here. This thunderstorm complex will pass north of Anniston, north of Oxford. It's going to come right through Jacksonville, uh, going to come right through uh, Alexandria, kind of clipping Weaver, Sachs, Linlock. Uh, again, this is the split right here. That's 431 going up toward Gadsden. This is Highway 21, Jacksonville back up to Piedmont. Piedmont since right here. But just be aware that uh, this could produce hail and strong winds. It'll be coming into Cherokee County. Uh, at the moment, we don't have a warning for Cherokee or for, Hef or for Cleburne County here. But again, we'll keep an eye on that. So let's go back to our big picture again. And we're at 1246 on a day where we've got potential for some real problems. We're watching those storms off to the west as well. The reason we are here, it's this storm. Okay, this is a severe storm that is coming into northern Bibb County. Uh, everything else in the state right now, except for this and this, it is sub-severe. Uh, so let's go back to our storm that has prompted this tornado warning, and we'll take a look at the structure of this. And we are watching storms back to the west, and I'm afraid as the... Uh, day progresses, the air will become more unstable and volatile. We've seen some breaks in the cloud cover, and again, it, it could be um, in a pretty rough afternoon here. We think it will be, but again, for the moment, that still looks fairly disorganized. Uh, we've got really no evidence of a tornado, just a mesocyclone, a broad circulation that will be crossing Highway 5, and clearly, if you're in West Blockton, please stay sheltered. Uh, the one thing I worry about when you get on television and say, well, the structure is not as good, we don't see evidence of a tornado, it doesn't matter because it might come right back. You stay sh As long as you're in the polygon, you stay sheltered. Now, if that polygon goes away, fine. But if you're in that polygon, you stay sheltered. And again, for if you're in West Blockton, we have broad circulation coming right in your direction right here. So just be aware of that. In the Highway 5, I wouldn't be traveling on Highway 5 from near uh, Woodstock right down to Brent. Now, US 82 will give you an all clear. US 82, all clear. You can drive now from Tuscaloosa to Brent, Centerville. If you need to do that, go for it. But uh, if you need to drive from Green Pond, Bibville, North Bib, Wet Wetstock down to Brent, Centerville, don't do that right now along Highway 5. Just wait until the circulation passes. Now, it's not going to take much longer for that to happen. This is Shelby County right here, by the way. This is Shelby. This is Jefferson. And this is the Birmingham Metro back up and through here. Uh, biggest population center in the state, so we'll be watching this uh, very anxiously. And I think what the Weather Service is doing, knowing this is up the road here, they're just going to keep the warning in effect and see if it cycles again. I do want to mention we have a new flash flood warning in effect for Cherokee and Etowah County. So if we can go over to uh, uh, that part of the state, want to show quickly that new polygon. This is a flash flood warning in effect for parts of Cherokee and uh, Etowah counties. Uh, and you can see it uh, right here. This includes the city of Gadsden. This is for the tremendous amounts of rain coming down from this uh, thunderstorm complex that came through the county earlier. So again, we have a, a flash flood warning in effect for Cherokee, Etowah counties uh, until, until 445 this afternoon. The, the blue polygons, that's your flash flood warning in effect here. And again, that big cluster of storms coming up on Leesburg Center, Cedar Bluff, Galesville, and Weiss Lake, uh, maybe producing some hail and strong gusty winds. There's no severe thunderstorm warning for Cherokee, but there is that flash flood warning. So just wanted to show that. Again, the new flash flood warning for Cherokee and Etowah. So let's go back to our storm that prompted the tornado warning. We're going to spend most of our time here. One of our sky watchers is in the Vance Woodstock area, and uh, he uh, is watching this, and uh, he's in the middle of a heavy thunderstorm, incredible lightning, but no sign of rotation right now. And of course, uh, by that, he's up in this area right in through here, kind of looking down into it. But again, you can still see the inflow notch and potential for some trouble right in through here. That's Highway 5, West Blockton right here. Uh, and it's broad. It's not really tight. Um, I, I would not, if, if you looked at this, you would probably not issue a tornado warning. Um, uh, John DeBlock at the Weather Service, John at the WCM down there, the warning coordination meteorologist, he said it's probably uh, not severe criteria now, but he's going to let the warning ride for now. I think that um, was for that severe oh, thunderstorm that, warning. That, you're right. Uh, okay, I see what, yeah, yeah you're, you're, thank you, Taylor. Um, this, the Weather Service has a severe thunderstorm warning for Calhoun and Etowah. That's what he's talking about here. 
It's not severe by classic definition. That's 58 mile per hour winds or one inch diameter hail. But he's going to let it ride now because of the wet soil. Won't take much to down, bring down trees. And that's certainly true today. Um, and I should mention what's interesting, uh, Taylor, the, the weather service is in Shelby County. All right. So that's this tornadic, uh, again, a broad circulation. The uh, weather service office is located uh, right here at the Shelby County Airport, where my finger is. And they're in the process of getting ready to shelter. And they're in the process of potentially transferring control to the weather service in Atlanta, Peachtree City, um, if they have to shelter. And that's the right that that's what I, you know, I just told you a few minutes ago. We have to go into a stairwell. We'll broadcast live from a spot we have picked out over there. And what the weather service does in uh, Birmingham, if they have to shelter, they transfer control and the warnings come out of the National Weather Service, in this case, out of Peachtree City uh, near Atlanta. Uh, but hopefully for all of us in through here and again, uh, the TV station, we are in River Chase, which is right here. Uh, the weather service is right here. You can kind of see we're all in the path of this thing. And if we, uh, you know, have to shelter, we again, we, safety first. Sa it doesn't matter if we work in a TV station. Everybody here is important. And, and we take the same precautions that you have to take if we ever have a tornado approaching our particular TV station here. Uh, and the same thing for the National Weather Service. So uh, they are anxiously watching to see if this thing ramps up again. But it's a, it's a mesocyclone that the storm is rotating. But there's no evidence of really tight circulation right now. But forget that. Again, if you're in this flashing red polygon, you stay sheltered. And that includes West Blockton. That's the biggest population center that's near this uh, particular uh, location here. Um, the tornado warning is in effect for uh, northern Bibb County until 115. And I can give an all clear to Tuscaloosa County. All right, so uh, Vance, Mercedes, uh, from this storm, you're all clear. Uh, it is now well to the east of you. It's in exclusively in Bibb County. So uh, Coling, Vance, Lakeview will give you an all clear. The concern now, it's exclusively northern Bibb, northern Bibb County. Again, Centerville and Brent are down here. Uh, this is well to the north of you. You've never been in this polygon. This is for northern Bibb County. And that broad circulation is going to come right over West Blockton. So uh, even though I don't have a really tight circulation to show, I don't have a tornado debris signature to show, I still want you to be sheltered today. That's a course of least regret. You don't want any regrets on a day like today. Life is a series of decisions. Sometimes you make good ones, sometimes you make bad ones. We've all made bad ones. But on a day like today, you don't want to make a bad decision when it comes to sheltering. And, uh, the, you know, all these crazy things I say, you know, the respect the polygon, it, it's important messaging because if you're in it, then you stay sheltered. And if you're not, it's okay. You don't have to be sheltered. It, it's, we try and make it really easy. And since these storm-based warnings came out over 10 years ago, it's really helped us focus on small parts of these counties where these tornadoes are located. Back in the old days, the whole county was warned. If this was 20 years ago, people in Centerville and Brent would be in a shelter where they don't need to be. Tornadoes are small, counties are big. The storm-based warnings, that was a great advancement in the warning process. Uh, so Northern Bibb, that's the focus right now for this uh, broad circulation that's about to cross Highway 5 near the town of West Blockton. That'll be coming up into uh, Jefferson and Shelby counties, which is right here. And we just got that new tornado warning and we're seeing a little bit of evidence here. It's going to pop on here in a second. Yeah. A little bit of evidence of that tightening up. All right. So here we go. We're going to hear all these going right, off you're on gonna our hear, phones. What you're hearing right now, this is WIA. This is what it sounds like. Okay. It's loud. This is not our app. This is wireless emergency alerts. All right. So a lot of people in the Birmingham Metro just got this uh, wireless emergency alert for a tornado warning. There's an effect for the southern part of Jefferson and much of Shelby County. So again, let me just kind of explain who's in right now, because this is pretty important. This is a lot of population right here. We have a potential tornado near West Blockton in Bibb County that is moving northeast just like this. So to get your bearings straight, this is Interstate 459. All of Interstate 459 is in this polygon. So if you're near Interstate 459, you're in. That runs from Bessemer, McCullough, through Hoover, back up here to Trussville. Uh, Interstate uh, 65 and US 31, basically from Homewood South all the way down to Calera, you're in the polygon. So Calera, Alabaster, Pelham, Helena, Hoover, Vestavia, Shannon, Bessemer, Mountain Brook, down the 280 corridor, you got Chelsea, which is located right here. Now, Columbiana's not. Columbiana's not in the polygon. Wilsonville is not. Harpersville, yes. Westover, yes. Mount Laurel, yes. Inverness, yes. Greystone, yes. 
Uh, anything I've called out here, you're in this polygon and you need to be sheltered right now. So uh, let me just kind of talk you through this. What we want you to do is to go into a small interior room on the lowest floor of your house. That could be a closet hall bathroom. If you have a one floor house, you're fine, but just don't go up if you have a multiple floor house. And in that small room, we want you to hopefully have helmets for everybody. We want you to put those helmets on. And uh, if you have a portable air horn, we've talked about these, just stick it in your pocket in case you need help if there is a tornado hit. And, and if you have hard soled shoes, put those on. If you, if you have to walk over a tornado debris field, your feet can be injured. So those are the three things we want people to do right now. So we want you to put on a helmet, portable air horn if you've got that, and hard soled shoes. And understand the tornado will not affect everybody in this polygon. It will affect a small part of that polygon, but understand it will. All right, so these are the approximate arrival times of some of the communities in the path of this. And please don't take that to the bank. Uh, we want you sheltered right now. Some people see those times and they wait. No, we want you to go to your safe place. If you can, watch us on your phone. You, if you're watching us on your big TV screen right now and you need to leave that and go to your shelter, you can watch us on the uh, ABC 3340 Facebook page. You can watch us on Facebook Watch if you have a Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, Chromecast. Uh, you can go to abc3340.com, the ABC 3340 app. All of these are ways you can watch us on your phone in your safe place. You can just take us with you, and that's what we advise people to do. Uh, this tornado is beginning to show more evidence of increasing wind velocity, and it looks like we might have another debris signature coming down again near West Blockton right here. You see that lowering in the correlation coefficient product right there. That could easily be some, uh, be some debris that is being lofted from this tornado. Uh, and so it's back. So uh, the Weather Service is after seeing this, and boy, look at the circulation. Uh, it is back. Like I say, we worried about this. That's why you don't let the tornado warnings go. You leave them up. So uh, the tornado is back now, and it's uh, down very close to West Blockton, maybe just north of the school. Uh, the high school, the elementary school is right here at my fingertip, that tornado circulation just north of there, and that's going to be crossing over into Shelby County. Uh, so initially, this is Cherokee Beach off uh, uh, County Road 52 right here in Shelby County. And uh, where, where's the other video coming from, guys, on the other side, just so I'll know that will help me. Okay, this is uh, Shelby County and, okay, near Helena. So again, uh, this is a crew in the field that will be uh, looking at this. And again, we've got a pretty good SkyCam location from Galleria Tower we can look into this. But right now, it's uh, just north of West Blockton. And again, it's going to be crossing over out of Bibb into Shelby counties. So let's uh, expand this out a little bit more, Taylor. And again, I just want to explain for everybody in the path of this what you need to do. And this would include Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, Hoover, Vestavia Hills, Bessemer, Shannon, Chelsea, Inverness. This would include Mountain Brook. Uh, and ultimately, this includes places like Irondale. The town of Donovan is right here. Uh, any of these communities we've called out, now is the time to shelter. Uh, don't walk outside and look for it. You understand the tornado is located near West Blockton. We're giving you plenty of lead time. Uh, this is a case today where we're going to have these large tornadoes, and the lead time might be 20 or 30 minutes. And I think that's going to be the situation here. So just uh, understand that we've got that circulation. Let's take the circle off, Taylor. We've got a new volume scan, and you can see that very well-defined circulation right here. It's going to be moving right up toward Interstate 65. In terms of travel, and by the way, for those that want to hear us on radio in the Birmingham metro, uh, our radio partners, uh, the uh, Summit Media Stations, WZZK, uh, 104.7 is one of them. You can listen to us on the radio there. Uh, and uh, again, that's, I know you see a lot of noise in here. This is coming from the radar. Forget all this stuff. That one blue dot that I'm looking for is right there. That's debris that is being lofted, a tornado debris signature that's located right here. We don't want anybody traveling along Interstate 459. Nobody on Interstate 459 right now. What you're going to do, hear us on the radio, if you're listening to us in one of the uh, Summit Media stations, pull off at the next exit. Get into a gas station, convenience store, fast food restaurant. Stay there until we give you an all clear. Uh, we don't want anybody driving on US 31 or Interstate 65 from downtown Birmingham to Calera in the next 30 minutes because this tornado, if it stays down, will be crossing Interstate 65 and US 31 some are probably in northern Shelby County, whether it's the southern part of Hoover, whether it's Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, maybe in southern Jefferson County up toward Vestavia. We don't know that yet. But the, the key messaging here is this flashing red line you see right here. So that's your polygon. And if you're in it, you've got to respect the polygon by going to your safe place now. 
Uh, and it's a time not to just be calm. We've had tornadoes before. We'll have them again. This is nothing. We're Alabamians. We know how to deal with this. Uh, but in a case like today, some of these tornadoes could be large and destructive tornadoes. And we don't want anybody being hurt today. And that's the reason we're asking you to do this. I don't ask you to do much. But today I'm going to ask you, if you're in these polygons, you've got to be in a safe place. So again, uh, from McCullough and Bessemer, all the way up to Hoover, Vestavia Hills, Shannon, Bluff Park, Mountain Brook, uh, back up to Irondale, that Interstate 459 corridor. You be sheltered. Uh, down the I-65 US-31 corridor, all of the city of Hoover, uh, the city of Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, anybody close to these locations, you stay sheltered. Down the 280 corridor, same thing. We want everybody in places like Mountain Brook, people in Inverness, people in Chelsea, people in Greystone, people in Mount Laurel, Donovan to be sheltered until this passes. So this is the time to go into your safe place right now. We do not want anybody in a car. We don't want anybody in a mobile home. Those are the two worst possible places to be. Uh, if, if you're listening to us by radio, just pull off right now if you're in the polygon and get into a safe place. Uh, again, this can be any site built structure, a gas station, anything like that. And again, people say, well, you got somebody driving here. They've been trained in storm spotting. You probably haven't. There's a big difference here. They know how to stay safe. So that's the object is to get everybody in this densely populated southern part of the Birmingham metro off the roads. Uh, for those that are in mobile homes, you've got to go to your shelter now. And if you don't have a community shelter, some people don't, that's okay. Your plan should be to go to a, uh, a business, a gas station, anything like that. But again, the Weather Service is calling this now a confirmed, large, and extremely dangerous tornado near West Blockton in Bibb County, uh, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. That's your circulation right here. And this is Bibb County, and this is Shelby County, and this is Jefferson. Uh, so that's the clear messaging right here. Uh, and again, once we get a little closer, we're going to have the uh, Galleria Tower Skycam looking back into this. It's got an amazing view of storms back in the northeastern part of Bibb County. Uh, we have seen that uh, over and over over the years. So tornadic circulation here coming out of Bibb County, coming up into Shelby County. And again, you can see these communities that are in the path of this. So if we can draw another one, Taylor, another uh, a track on this, uh, it is uh, 102. Uh, this is the only tornado warning in the state right now, the only storm that is tornadic. So we're not bouncing back and forth between storms for that reason. We have some flooding issues, yes, but we have to work the tornadic storms. We have to prioritize things today, and that's what we're going to do. So again, this will give you some approximate arrival times of the tornadic circulation. And don't take this to the bank. We want you sheltered right now. This is just a convenience thing for you more than anything else. Uh, but these are communities in northern uh, Shelby County. And you can see these uh, arrival times. Places like Maylene uh, will be between 115 and 120 this afternoon. Currently, it's 103. So you've got a little time, but not much. And that we, the one thing I do think we're going to be able to provide today, these long lead times. On a day like today where you do have strong, violent, long track tornadoes, we can often give you a 30 minute, maybe a 40 minute lead time. Uh, and, and we often debate that in the weather enterprise. Is that too much time? Because nothing happens and you're sitting in a shelter. But just please understand, we want you to hear the messaging and kind of respond to what we're asking you to do today. And you might have to sit there for a little bit, but we'd rather you be safe than sorry. And again, it, it is a course of least regret that you stay sheltered. And, and here's the other thing that I'm going to ask. A lot of people right now in this part of the Birmingham metro are sitting back watching Netflix and they're watching something on Hulu, Amazon Prime. They have no earthly idea that they're under a tornado warning. These sirens, you might hear one, but most people don't in their home. So we want you to call a friend or a relative or a neighbor that you know in the polygon. This again, there's a large, large area here in this polygon in terms of population density and let them know that there's a perhaps a violent tornado coming out of Bibb County, coming right up into Shelby County. Call them now and text them and let them know that they need to turn on the television and watch what's going on here and be sheltered. Uh, it's very important. You can help us and be a hero in this process by calling and texting people in the path of this right now because there are many, many people that have no idea this is happening in the southern part of the Birmingham metro. So this is your flashing pond. By the way, there's your tornado debris signature. Very, very, very deep lowering of the correlation coefficient product. And uh, the, the other thing we're looking at, I think most of the schools, many of them are on spring break uh, and some have dismissed early today. Uh, but if by chance we have a school or a private school that is in session, you've got to go through your plan as well. 
but I think most schools are off or on spring break this week. So hopefully all the kids are home with their parents and you can kind of do this as a family. Uh, but uh, here we go. This is going to be crossing right out of Bibb into this very densely populated part of Shelby County. Initially coming into places like uh, Maylene and Helena right here. And remember, tornadoes are small. Uh, even within a polygon, they're fairly small. The polygons are drawn like this to account for room for error in the track of a storm because sometimes you might have a storm that veers to the left or the right of the main flow and that's the reason for the polygons that fan out like this. But uh, understand all of these places right in through here are in danger of what could be a large destructive tornado. And uh, the Weather Service in Birmingham is discussing the possibility of posting a tornado emergency for this. They've not done that yet. A tornado emergency is when there's a large destructive tornado that is known and it's moving into a you know, big population corridor and that just kind of ramps everything up. But for, forget that, it's not that important. Uh, you've got a tornado warning, you've got to do something about it. And again, uh, the best possible thing is that this thing dissipates and we get away with nothing. That could happen. But remember, on a day like today, in years past, with events like this, we have had these long track violent tornadoes uh, that have been down. And you have to assume that this is going to stay down. You just can't assume this goes away. That's not the way to do it. And, and let me just say, hope is not a plan. Hope is not a plan. You plan for this and you implement that plan. That's what you have to do right now. Hoping it goes away is fine, but you do that in your safe place in your shelter because we have to assume that this thing is going to stay down. So we have a tornado warning in effect now for southern Jefferson, northern Shelby County. It's moving out of Bibb. This is the Bibb County line right here. This is Bibb County and this is Shelby County. And in terms of travel, again, many people are listening to us right now uh, on the Birmingham Summit Media Radio Stations. And thank you so much for airing this. Um, we don't want anybody in a car. What I'm going to ask you to do is, is stop somewhere. If you're driving in southern Jefferson, northern Shelby, Vestavia, Mountain Brook, Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, Calera, McCalla, Bessemer, Chelsea, Inverness, any of these places, I want you to stop and go into a restaurant, go into a, a grocery store, go into a, a Walmart, a Target, some place like that and, and seek shelter in those places instead of a car. If this is a large destructive tornado, that car can be thrown like a toy. And many people that lose their life in the state, they lose their life in vehicles and mobile homes. So no cars. Please stop and get into uh, any business and they'll let you in and you go shelter in those businesses. And if you know somebody that's driving, you call them and text them and tell them the same thing. Let them know what I just said. If they're driving through any of these places in southern Jefferson, northern Shelby counties, I want you off the road and uh, get into any kind of a store, a site built facility and just ride this thing out. It's not going to last long. It's going to be gone before you know it. Uh, but you've got to stay sheltered and off the road. And the other thing when it comes to mobile homes, uh, there are a lot of folks that do live in manufactured housing, especially out here. We've got some in the uh, Oxmore Valley area and, and Shannon and, and in that part of the county. You can't stay in a trailer. You've got to be out of there. And we want you in your shelter. Uh, again, same thing. Go to a business. Go to a gas station. Anything like that. Same thing for a car. But you can't be in a mobile home as this thing passes by. Um, the... TDS is not as intense as it was a few minutes ago, so they've taken that emergency off the table for the moment, uh, the tornado emergency. But again, we've got a tornado warning here. Understand that. The, the velocity signature is not quite as intense on this volume scan as it was a few minutes ago. But this has cycled once, and it could be cycling again. Goes through an occlusion process, chokes itself off, redevelops. Uh, but again, the best possible scenario here is this thing dissipates and we have no problem. That could happen. That's what everybody prays that happened, but we just can't assume that's going to stay the case. Uh, so again, we've got a possible tornado on the Bibb uh, Jefferson County line south of uh, Tannehill State Park uh, that's going to be coming right up toward Helena, Pelham, Maylene, Alabaster, southern part of Hoover. All right. And again, we're watching the Gallery of Tower Skycam and Taylor. It's obviously got you know, pouring rain here. We're not going to see much. Uh, we, th the storms today, I think, will be rain wrapped. We've had other days where we've had higher based storms and we could see them. I don't think we're going to see a lot of them today. We've got dash cams all over the place. We've got these tower cams. Just don't expect to see a lot. You're going to have to rely on us to talk you through radar. We know that research has shown that when a lot of people see this, they see a bucket of spill paint. You know, we can be in here, you know, saying whatever, and they just don't believe you. 
but just you're going to have to trust us today. If we say there's a dangerous storm, you'll have to trust us. You'll have to get ready to go to a safe place. Uh, so again, we're kind of looking west from the top of Galleria Tower. We'll be watching those cloud bases back in the back to see if we see anything. The, the camera is uh, right here looking back in that direction. But there's no doubt we've still probably got a tornado here that's now into uh, Shelby County. So let's give an all clear to Bibb. If you are in northern Bibb County, we'll give you an all clear. West Blockton, Woodstock, North Bibb, Bibbville, all clear for you. Uh, the, the main concern, it's northern Shelby. Uh, and I know that we still have uh, Jefferson and the Polygon. Southern, this is extreme southern Jefferson. Uh, if you are in downtown Birmingham or points north, you're fine from this storm. Okay, now it might be raining and there's thunder and lightning and creepy clouds or something, but in terms of a tornado threat from this one storm, uh, you're okay. Downtown Birmingham is located right here. Uh, the Polygon Edge uh, begins about Homewood and Vestavia Hills and runs all the way down to Calera. Just to give you kind of a point of reference here, uh, this is Interstate 65, this is U.S. Highway 31. And again, this thing has been in a fairly sparsely populated part of the world, but it's about to get into a really densely populated part of the world coming up through southern Shelby County. So I'm uh, sorry, northern Shelby County. So again, everybody in Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, down to Calera, up to Hoover and Vestavia Hills. We want you sheltered. Bessemer, you're now out of the polygon. So Bessemer will give you an all clear. This is going to pass south of you. Uh, McCullough right here is going to pass south of you. We can give you an all clear. So McCullough, Bessemer, initially you were in the polygon. You were now not in that polygon because it's going to stay south of there. So McCullough all clear, Bessemer all clear. Uh, again, the concern it's going to be these communities on the I-65 US-31 corridor, but it's beginning to cycle again. The last couple of volume scans, the intensities have gone up a little bit. And uh, let's see, what school is that? If you can tell me what, uh, I'm on the exact location of this camera back here. That's Helena. He oh, that's in Calera. Oh, Helena, okay. Yeah, that, that, if that's on County Road 50, is that Helena Intermediate? Uh, oh, okay, so again, uh, this is one of our uh, dash cam locations that is in uh, northern Shelby County at Helena. We'll be watching that. And again, I go back, if you've just joined us, the reason we double box is that we've learned that if you see a storm with a live video stream, you do something about it. You perform a little better in the warning process. And that's the reason we've got that up there. Uh, so far, these things have been rain wrapped today. We're going to bounce back between the Helena camera we have and the Galleria Tower camera we have. But uh, once again, there's your circulation right here that is exclusively into Shelby County. So again, Bibb County will give you an all clear. Uh, this is for Shelby County coming up into the Birmingham Metro, the southern part of the Birmingham Metro. Pelham, Helena, Alabaster, Hoover. Uh, this is kind of the core, core concern. We'll see how this thing behaves. Now, I know there's a lot of people on the 280 corridor watching this. Inverness, Greystone, Chelsea, Highland Lakes, Mount Laurel, you're watching this and you're probably sheltered. It's going to take a little longer to get to you, but I want you to stay sheltered. Okay, that's very important. That's Alabama Highway 119, by the way, that goes up toward Leeds. This is 280 right here. This is Chelsea. This is Inverness. That's that uh, 280 corridor. The summit sits right here. Uh, we've got a camera that's on top of Grandview Medical Center that's going to give us a great shot looking south into this when it gets closer. It's not quite there yet. Uh, but again, we'll start with our Galleria camera looking back down into this. But you can see circulation right here. And again, it's going to be coming up uh, on these uh, communities right along Interstate 65 and U.S. Highway 31. We're going to be watching these cameras very carefully. Um, the uh, Weather Service in Birmingham is not going to transfer control to Atlanta because the uh, signature is going to clearly stay north of their office. The, the, the Weather Service in Birmingham is at the Shelby County Airport. Uh, so the Weather Service in Birmingham is going to uh, maintain control here. And uh, they are concerned about downtown Helena, uh, the Oak Mountain Amphitheater, Pelham High School. Uh, these are some of the places right in the path of this. And uh, again, I, I certainly concur with that. This is U.S. Uh, Alabama Highway 19 right here. And this tornado just looks like it wants to come right up through here. And again, that will take it through. A, and, and goodness, there's so many new neighborhoods out here in the western part of Helena. Uh, but you've got to stay sheltered if you're in Helena, if your kids go to school in Helena. Uh, and uh, again, this will be coming right up toward, again, the Oak Mountain Amphitheater, Pelham High School, uh, Helena High School, Old Town Helena. 
uh, these places like that. And uh, this thing, we hope it just goes away, but it won't. It, it is hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. And uh, it, it tried to dissipate over northern Bibb, and it just didn't. Uh, it maintained that mesocyclone, another tornado drop. We had the TDS. Uh, let's go to correlation coefficient real quick. We'll take a look at this spot here and see if we see uh, lowered CC. And we see a little bit. This is not an intense type signature that we've seen before. Uh, so, again, you know, that's the, it's clearly cycling right now. So we'll go back to our velocity display. If you're just joining us here, it's 115. Uh, I know we have other locations uh, in the state where we have uh, uh, flooding going on and some hail, but we have to focus on this storm that is uh, particularly dangerous that is coming through the western part of uh, Shelby County. We're watching multiple cameras uh, that we have uh, some bonehead getting in the shot. Come on, guys, don't do that. Uh, this is serious business. Uh, so again, right in through here, tornadic circulation coming right up in through here. So Helena, Pelham, this is going to be north of Maylene. I called out Maylene earlier. I think it's pretty clear the circulation is going to be north of Maylene and most likely north of Alabaster. The Shelby uh, Medical Center uh, sits about right here. There's your circulation. And again, it's clearly ramped down again, but it could ramp right back up. We hope that it stays ramped down. That's what we want. Uh, so, but again, this, this could pop at any time. So that's the thing. You might hear me say that it's ramped down, but that really doesn't matter in what you do. As long as you're in this polygon, you're going to stay sheltered. And the good thing is the fact that we're working just one storm right here. Uh, we've got one storm that we're working, uh, and this is the one coming through Shelby County. Uh, so we don't have to bounce back and forth between storms. Uh, so we've got one camera that you see on your screen. That is in Helena. We've got another camera that's on top of Galleria Tower looking back into this, and a lot of this is rain wrapped. This is the location of the camera, right? That is the, the uh, dash cam. Oh, yeah, the dash cam camera. So again, right in the thank, track of yeah, it. thank you, Taylor, again. And again, if we need to get them moved, we uh, will do that. At this moment, we have lost our uh, TDS. Um, I want to show you what this thing has done. Let me pull up uh, Slack, and I, I'm going, fellows, I'm going to ask for WEX05 here in just a second. Uh, so, um, yeah, if you guys can take uh, WEX05 for just a minute, please. Uh, I want to show you what this did. I believe that's WEX07. We're looking for WEX05. Uh, I want to show you the damage in West Blockton, some of the damage in West Blockton from this. Uh, and if we can't, that's okay. If you, okay, it is, I'm showing that we are connected on WEX05, and you should be able to see that back there. Uh, maybe we'll get somebody in an There we go. Thank you. Uh, so this is uh, what this torna tornado has done. We take the banner down for just a second, please. I just wanted to show you apparently what this tornado has done here. This is in West Blockton uh, on uh, County Road 27 in the uh, 6000 block. And let me show you one more image here. Uh, this is... Um, near the Bibb Shelby County line. Uh, and again, the evidence there could be a tornado down. There's no doubt we've had a tornado down. It's just awfully hard to see. So let's go back to the uh, radar. We'll do the triple box here behind me. Uh, again, we've got a tornado warning in effect for northern Shelby County. And uh, we're watching a dangerous storm coming up toward Helena and uh, Pelham and uh, Alabaster right now, especially Helena and Pelham. Alabaster is probably going to stay north of you. And by the way, the dash cam is in front of uh, the uh, Riverwood subdivision in Helena, just to give you a reference for those that are watching. And again, the, the problem today, all of these things are wrapped in really, really, really heavy rain. Uh, okay, so here's, and just so you'll, and again, you know, people, all these trolls get on here. The, for those asking about the crew in the Shelby County uh, car here, the crew is sheltered, okay? The crew is sheltered. The live cam is in a locked car. Uh, it is unmanned, and th that's the way we do it here. We don't take risks. We're not going to put anybody in danger. So that particular camera coming from Helena is uh, unmanned, and if a tornado happens to come through there and that car is hit, we'll see it, but there's nobody in there. The crew is sheltered. And the other camera on top of Galleria Tower, that is an unmanned camera. That's one of our sky cams. So Ooh, we got a tightening uh, up it's, again. it's starting to tighten up again, which we don't like to see. Let's go in a little closer. I want to go in pretty close on this this time and uh, kind of show you some reference points. We're going to zoom in closer and uh, go in a little closer. All right, so uh, Old Town Helena sits uh, right here where you see the word uh, Helena. 
This is your possible tornado that's located right here. This is Cherokee Beach coming off County Road 52. County Road 52 comes down here into Helena. We got a TDS again. Oh, great. Uh, there we go. Let me say that uh, Bibb County Sheriff right now, they're reporting no injuries so far from this. But again, yeah, this is the uh, debris signature on radar. We have debris that is being lofted. So again, this is an urgent call for everybody in Helena and Pelham to be sheltered right now. Everybody in the Polygon's got to be sheltered. I mean, everybody in the Polygon. But if you're specifically in Helena or Pelham, any part of those two cities, municipalities, you've got to be sheltered right now. And again, we're going to watch the camera. Again, the camera in Helena is uh, unmanned. The crew is sheltered right now. Um, and uh, watching some other reports coming in. We've, we've, got, we've got some damage from this, I'll put it that way. And again, a lot of the damage is related to trees because it's been out in the middle of, of open country. But this tornado is about to come into a very, very densely populated part of the world. Uh, this is U.S. Highway 31 right here. Uh, this is Old Town Helena. This is Alabama Highway 261 that runs up and becomes Valleydale Road up and through here. And uh, that is going to be passing a little to the south of the state. Let's zoom this out just a little bit because we have to consider what we're going to do here at the uh, TV station. Zoom out a little bit more, please. A little more. Uh, all right. So uh, we are located right up here. And this tornado is going to be moving about like that. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is ask everybody in the news department to go into the stairwell on the other side. And if we have to abandon the studio, we'll go live from uh, the uh, live view coming off uh, this laptop here. Uh, so again, uh, everybody on the news department side of our building, uh, if you would go ahead and go through your tornado safe place, uh, your tornado plans right now. Again, uh, we're located right here. This is a possible tornado and it's going to be doing this. It's probably going to pass south of the TV station, but again, we've just got to be sure that they're sheltered over there. If we need to do that, we'll do that too. Uh, but again, Old Town Helena is right here and we're going to watch that camera, which is unmanned. Uh, we can't move it around because there's nobody in there. It's a car that is running that is unmanned. It's locked. Uh, and again, this is going to be cutting right through the middle of uh, Old Town Helena, then cutting right through Highway 31. Uh, again, Pelham is located uh, right here, pretty close to uh, uh, County Road 52. This is coming off the interstate, the tank farm exit, if you will, which is located right here. Uh, the Pelham City Hall and Municipal Complex is right here. First Baptist Church of Pelham sits right here. Uh, and again, we've got debris that is being lofted. So this is a tornado that is down, uh, and we've had damage with this. Uh, the uh, uh, tornado is coming up into Old Town Helena. Uh, it is going to be passing through the northern part of Pelham and then coming out toward in the general direction of the Oak Mount Amphitheater, Alabama 119 and US 31, which is just south of the TV station here. Uh, and then that's going to keep on moving in that general direction down Highway 119 uh, over toward Briarwood High School and then US 280. And then uh, we'll see if it keeps on moving in that path. So, uh, Taylor, let's go back to our velocity display real quick. All right, so this is your possible tornado that's located right here. And again, it's uh, Old Town Helena sits right here. You've got uh, Alabama Highway 261 that comes right down through here. Uh, you've got uh, uh, the uh, Buck Creek, the falls right here. Uh, Helena is here, possible tornado here. About to cross over Old Town Helena. That will be crossing over the northern part of Pelham, US 31 and uh, I-65. All right, and then from there it's going to move over across Interstate 65. Clearly nobody should be driving along US Highway 31 or Interstate 65 south of Valleydale Road or north of Calera. All right, uh, that's the call right here. So again, you can see Old Town Helena here. We're watching these cameras. And again, uh, Taylor, we, all we've got is rain on the Gallery of Tower cam, right? Yeah, that's yeah. all we got. This is going to cross very, very close to that, that uh, dash cam we've got, though. Right. I'm about to say, it, it is going to be really close to the camera that you see. And again, this is in a locked car. There's nobody in there. Uh, this is a situation where we've got the crew and th they're sheltered. It's crossing it right now with that latest radar scan. Yeah. Again, you can see it right here. And again, that will be moving northeast, and it's awfully close to Old Town Helena. The good news that the, the velocities have come down a smidgen, not much. But again, Helena, if you live anywhere in Helena, you've got to be sheltered right now. You should have been sheltered 30 minutes ago when the warning was first issued. But again, you've got to be sheltered. Again, do not worry about these colors back here. This is your tornado debris signature right here. 
Old Town Helena is right here. And again, forget all these colors. This is the one you're concerned about, that drop. Let's go back to the velocity display, which is probably going to tell a better story at this point. And look at that camera on that dash cam there. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, this is a vehicle that is unmanned, and uh, the tornado is passing very close to that camera location right now, which is out uh, County Road 52, out toward the Intermediate School in, uh, in Helena. Uh, so after it comes through the core of Helena in Old Town, it's going to be crossing over uh, Interstate 65 and U.S. 31, initially U.S. Highway 31, uh, north of the Pella Municipal Complex, north of the tank farm exit. This thing's going to be crossing I-65, most likely between uh, Alabama Highway 119 and uh, County Road 52 down here, the tank farm exit and uh, Alabama Highway 119. Uh, same thing for U.S. 31, same thing for I-65. These are very densely populated corridors, and these are major travel highways right now. Nobody should be in a vehicle, and I mean nobody. You've got to be off the road, pull over into a gas station, convenience store, something like that, and stay safe until this passes, and we'll give you an all clear as we can. Um, we, again, looking at all of these sources right now, uh, I'm seeing a lot of tree damage from this storm over in Bibb County. It's been coming through a fairly sparsely populated part of the county. Uh, the, the velocity intensities are not as high as they were earlier, but this has been cyclic. We've, we've seen cycling going on here. We've seen uh, this ramp up and ramp down, and we don't know exactly when it's going to be at an up peak or a down peak here. You just have to be in a safe place. So again, it's urgent that you be sheltered if you're in Helena, and obviously the circulation is right on top of Old Town Helena. Uh, Buck Creek Park right here, uh, then coming right over Interstate, uh, or US 31 initially, in the northern part of the city of Pelham. It's going to be a little south of the Old Valley Elementary School, maybe close to First Baptist Church of Pelham, then crossing uh, US 31. Right here, that's Alabama Highway 119. All right, we've, we've lost our live shot, by the way, uh, from that unmanned car in Helena, which is not a good sign. But this is uh, the Alabama 119 exit. The Oak Mount Amphitheater sits right here. This is Amphitheater Road. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 119. Uh, again, we are located right up here, the TV station. This tornadic circulation is going to pass south of the TV station. I still think it's the right call for our news department to be sheltered for about 10, 15 more minutes. I'm confident enough that this will be passing south of us, that we are not in danger here. Uh, but again, just as a course of least regret, the best thing to do is to stay sheltered on the other side of the building for about 15 minutes. We're going to stay on the air from the studio. Uh, this will be crossing, again, north of US 31, or north of downtown Pelham, north of the uh, Home Depot, the uh, municipal complex, again, out here around the First Baptist Church, then cutting across I-65 between the tank farm exit and Alabama Highway 119. And from there, it's going to cut over into uh, Shelby County near Indian Springs, the Indian Springs School. If you're anywhere near these places we've talked about, we want you to be sheltered. And again, if you're in the Polygon, we want you to be sheltered. New volume scan has come in. The rotation is located right here. Uh, so the circulation is about to cross over U.S. Highway 31. Uh, again, it's uh, Alabama 119 is, is right here. Uh, the Oak Mount Amphitheater is right here. Uh, just to get your bearings straight on what you're looking at. Alabama 119, that's 31, that's 65. The amphitheater is here. That's a possible tornado that's about to cross over uh, 31 and 65. This is awfully close to the old Valley Elementary. It's, of course, Valley's not been in existence for a while. They're making that into an uh, entertainment type complex, I think. Uh, but after it crosses over 31, it's going to come over Interstate 65, pretty close to 119. Obviously, all of these businesses should be sheltered right now at uh, Alabama 119, US 31, uh, Interstate 65. A lot of fast food restaurants, a lot of restaurants here. Again, the amphitheater's right here. That's Amphitheater Road. That's Alabama Highway 119, Indian Springs. Uh, the school is right here, this Indian Springs Village on Highway 119. And again, that's your possible tornado. Still nothing on the Galleria camera, right? Uh, All rain. I do want to mention that we do have a new tornado warning that does include Pickens County as well. Okay, and this is for a storm coming out of Mississippi. So we'll go to that in just a moment. We're going to, uh, and I'll just kind of read you the tornado warning for Pickens County while we look at this. Uh, tornado warning uh, for Pickens County. We have a possible tornado 17 miles southwest of Aliceville moving northeast at 40. So if you're in Aliceville and Pickens County, you need to be sheltered right now. I'll show you the full look at that in just a second. We've got to focus on this for just a few more moments. So a Pickens County tornado warning until 2.30. Uh, a possible tornado is 17 miles southwest of Aliceville, moving northeast at 40. Uh, so if you're in Pickens County in that polygon, be sheltered right now. So we got the camera back. Uh, and again, it looks like our car made it, the unmanned car. 
Uh, it's still there, and we have live video back again, which is a good thing. We lost it briefly when the possible tornado came right through there. But understand, we're getting a good low-level slice. The, the radar is just right down the road. The, the uh, Shelby County Airport radar is only about seven miles south of this location here, so it's a good low-level look into this. And that circulation, again, is about to cross over uh, US 31, Interstate 65. Uh, there's your TDS right there, tornado debris signature, and that's going to be crossing over very close to the Oak Mountain Amphitheater. Uh, so it's coming through uh, really close to where Pelham High School is located, maybe just a smidgen north of there. Some of you might remember on March 27, 1994, we had a tornado that came down Highway 119, very similar track here. That was the Palm Sunday event. Most people recall the disaster at the Goshen United Methodist Church, but we had a smaller tornado that day in this same general area. And it looks like it's going to want to ride down Highway 119. Uh, so from the Oak Mountain Amphitheater, uh, and it's going to come right down 119. And again, the, the clear message is that if you're anywhere close to Alabama 119, and this is in northern Shelby County, you've got to be sheltered. New volume scan here, and again, you can see the circulation is pretty much on uh, U.S. Highway 31 near the Oak Mountain Amphitheater. Uh, Amphitheater Road is right here. That's Alabama Highway 119. Uh, Chick-fil-A, Whataburger. McDonald's, Captain D's, uh, these restaurants are right here. Uh, again, the amphitheater is here, and that's your tornadic circulation. And it's crossing over 31, it's about to cross over 65, and it's going to pretty much want to ride down Alabama Highway 119. Uh, you've got our TV station is right here, that's your tornado circulation. So the tornadic circulation is passing about a mile and a half to two miles south of ABC 3340 in River Chase. This is River Chase right here. Uh, that's your possible tornado circulation, and uh, again, that's going to be coming over I-65 into northern Shelby, or continuing through northern Shelby County, coming down uh, uh, Alabama Highway 119. Uh, down 119, you, you're going to come into uh, Our Lady of the Valley uh, Church down through there. you got Briarwood High School down through there, uh, and then ultimately you come out on Highway 280, uh, and then from there at 119 goes to Leeds. This might want to ride right down Highway 119, uh, but uh, obviously the other big plot of land out here is Oak Mountain State Park. Uh, this entire plot of land is the state park, beautiful, beautiful state park, and it's, uh, that circulation is coming right through Oak Mountain State Park. Uh, it's just crossed over the amphitheater, and again, it's going to be awfully close to Highway 119. The circulation center passing about two miles south of River Chase, where we are, uh, and again, you can see that that's going to keep on moving to the uh, northeast, uh, right down close to Highway 119. Uh, so this is a, a very, very densely populated corridor here. The good news, that camera in the box that says Shelby County, uh, that's in Helena. That we can give you an all clear. Helena, all clear. Alabaster, all clear. Calera, all clear. Hoover, all clear. Uh, and I, hang on, let me take that back. Hoover is a very large city. Uh, and there's going to be a part of Hoover that might be affected by this on the 280 side. So let me take that back. But for Pelham, uh, this thing is now moving out of there. This is the State Park Road. That's Amphitheater Road. That's Alabama 119. And there's your uh, TDS, your tornado debris signature. Is, this out of, is that Birmingham radar? That's Birmingham radar. That thing just ramped up again, didn't it? Uh, so based on the fact that it's ramped up again, the Weather Service is now considering this a confirmed, large, and extremely dangerous tornado over the Oak Mountain Amphitheater. Uh, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. Again, River Chase here, Tornado here, Oak Mountain Amphitheater here, Alabama Highway 119 runs right up through here. So anybody, anybody close, really, Valleydale 119, uh, either one of those two roads, Valleydale Road, Alabama Highway 119, you've got to be in a safe place. Don't, don't fool around here. This is a dangerous storm, very dangerous, and this is life-threatening. Again, the Weather Service in Birmingham calling this a large and extremely dangerous tornado that's going to be going right down. So let me, let's expand this out. Taylor, I want to expand it out, go back to the velocity. We'll take out some of this noise here. And I want to show uh, uh, the 280 corridor. All right. So again, there's your circulation right here. It's near Indian Springs School, approximately. And when I call out these locations, these are approximate locations. I'm just giving you some reference points. Possible tornado circulation near Indian Spring School coming right down Highway 119. Obviously, anybody, in, uh, this is the Oak Mountain property right in through here, Oak Mountain State Park. Uh, Oak Mountain Lakes is right here. But it, it's going to want to go down 119. It might hop over toward Valleydale. This is Valleydale Road right up in through here. 
and that's going to come out toward uh, US 280. So you got Brook Highland over here, uh, and most likely Brook Highland could be pretty close to this thing. So again, if you are located near Brook Highland, Inverness, any place close to that, you've got to be sheltered. I still want anybody in the polygon has got to be sheltered. I'm being really specific here because this is moving through a densely populated part of the world where we can really kind of narrow this down. Uh, but uh, clearly the call to action on 280, uh, this is the hill right here. Uh, the old Joe's Crab Shack used to sit right here. Uh, you've got the Brook Highland Shopping Center, which is right here. There's a Lowe's here. Uh, this is the Brook Highland subdivision, the, the residential community. The tennis club is up and through here. Uh, any of these places, it's coming right at you. And you've got to be sheltered. Small room, lowest floor, near the center, no windows. And if you know anybody, please help us today. If you know anybody in any of these places, help us, call them. Spain Park, Meadowbrook, Inverness, and tell them there's a, a significant tornado that's about to move right through there if they missed the warning. We hope they heard the warning 30 minutes ago. Uh, Oak Mountain High School, Spain Park High School, Oak Mountain Intermediate School, uh, Barry Middle School, uh, Brook Highland, and Inverness, all of these places uh, it's where we have potential for a significant tornado about to come through. Uh, this is 280 right here. All right, possible tornado here moving like that. And then from there, it's going to keep on moving out into the northeastern part of Shelby County. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But clearly, this thing is coming right up on the 280 corridor. Uh, and the next camera, you know, if, if we can't see anything here, Taylor, you might want to try the uh, uh, Grandview Medical Center sky cam which is on the 280 side, it's going to be probably looking through a lot of rain into this. Really, the Galleria Tower should be the best one. But at this point, again, it looks like it's just rain wrapped. We're having a really hard time today defining these things. Uh, but again, understand this is a very dangerous uh, situation. And the Weather Service in Birmingham is now calling this a tornado emergency. The National Weather Service in Birmingham is issuing a tornado emergency. So again, we Inverness. Still have, we still have a pretty well-defined TDS with this. Yeah. Brook Highland, Oak Mountain, Spain Park, Lee Branch, Greystone, any of these communities that we're calling out. If you're anywhere close to these places, you've got to be sheltered right now. This uh, um, is a very ser serious situation. Let me just read the, the latest uh, damage or, or tornado warning from the Weather Service in Birmingham. We have a tornado warning for northern Shelby County in extreme southern Jefferson. The tornado damage threat is catastrophic. We have a large, confirmed, destructive tornado over Indian Springs Village moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. Uh, this is a tornado emergency. So, and again, this is riding right up 119, riding right up Valleydale Road in that general vicinity. We don't know how large this is because we're having a really hard time getting a camera on this thing and seeing it. It is rain wrapped. Do not, and I mean do not, go look out your window or walk out in the front yard. That's a horrible mistake you don't want to make if you're near this thing. You've got to trust me when I tell you that this could be a large destructive tornado that is coming through northern Shelby County right now. It's coming down uh, Highway 119. Uh, it's passed over the Oak Mountain Amphitheater vicinity. It's been passing over some of the property at Oak Mountain State Park. And again, that's going to be coming over here toward uh, U.S. Highway 280. Uh, and uh, this is Highway 119. This is uh, up on the ridge. You've got uh, Valleydale Road, which is right over here. This is Inverness. This is Brook Highland. You've got Lee Branch. You've got Greystone over here. All of these neighborhoods, you've got to be sheltered right now. And again, what you can do is help us. If you know anybody that lives in these places we've called out, I want you to call or text them now and tell them you've got to turn on the television. Or forget that, you've got to be in a safe place. You can turn on the TV on your phone if you want to. And again, the danger has ended in Shelby County. So uh, again, our, our camera there is moving again. Uh, it passed over their location, and we'll see if we can find any damage. But at this point, the urgent message is that we have what, potentially a large destructive tornado that is down coming up on Brook Highland on Inverness. Uh, Inverness is located right here. Uh, Meadow Brook, that residential subdivision just off Highway 280. Uh, Spain Park, Oak Mountain High School, Oak Mountain Intermediate School, Oak Mountain Elementary and Middle School. Spain Park High School, Barry Middle School. Uh, again, back over toward Inverness and Brook Highland, Greystone, Lee Branch. All these places we're calling out. We want you to be really, really, really sheltered. And again, uh, Taylor is highlighting where that uh, tornado is currently located. And it's coming right up on Highway 280, uh, right over and through here. Again, this is the uh, Brook Highland Shopping Center, which is right down here. 
Again, you've got a lows here. Uh, this is 280 coming up on the hill. The old uh, Joe's Crab Shack used to set up in through here. And then that's 280 going back into uh, Birmingham through here. But that's about to cross over 280 in minutes. Uh, we are getting reports now. Helena Pol Fire Department responding to a partial collapse of a structure uh, in Helena. We're getting reports of damage in Helena on Cunningham Drive from this tornado. This is when it came through Helena. Uh, so we're now getting reports of confirmed damage in Helena from this. Um, and again, let me just say, what some people are asking, that doesn't really look like a tornado. The, the one issue we have, the 0 0.5 degree beam coming into this is probably being attenuated by Oak Mountain, some terrain features in through here. Believe it or not, we have hills and mountains in Alabama if you're watching from other parts of the country. country. The bottom line is, forget what it looks like, understand this could be very significant. So let's put the TDS back on there, Taylor. If we can, the T a tornado debris signature. It's in the noise right now. It's just in this noise, and we're not going to be able to see that. But again, Brook Highland, Inverness, Greystone, Lee Branch, any place like that we're calling out, you've got to be sheltered. Uh, nobody should be on driving on 280. We'll give you an all clear right now for I-65 and US-31. This is way past you. All clear I-65 and US-31. Nobody should be on US-280 between Interstate 459 and uh, we'll say Lee Branch right now. Nobody on 280 between 459 and Lee Branch until this thing crosses. Most likely the tornado is crossing over right now. We're looking at it live on that Grandview Medical Center sky cam. We're looking right into it. Okay, and again, that's Doug Baker Boulevard at 280. That's the top camera. Uh, we are now getting uh, Pelham police responding to multiple calls for assistance. Uh, Pelham Fire, Pelham Fire Department, uh, they're responding to multiple calls for assistance in the city of Pelham, which is a sign that perhaps a large tornado has come through a very densely populated area. This is a life-threatening situation, and you've got to take this really seriously. We hoped everybody was sheltered all up and down the path of this thing. This originated way back in you know, goodness, Green County, it's, this is going to be a long track uh, supercell type storm, a long track tornado, and it's crossing over Highway 280 uh, right now. Uh, out here around Brook Highland, the Brook Highland Shopping Center, and that's going to keep on moving northeast. What I want to do is expand this out again, Taylor. Let's, let's talk about who's next. It's coming right over 280 right now. Uh, and let's keep going and expand it out some more. All right, so there's your tornado right here, and that's going to be coming out into this part of Shelby County, east of uh, U.S. Highway 280. And out here, it's not as densely populated. We have uh, Lake Purdy out here. We have the Little Cahaba. Uh, uh, but again, that uh, is clearly going to be coming right at, this is Dunavant Valley Road right here. That's uh, County Road 41. Uh, everybody in Mount Laurel needs to be sheltered. Shoal Creek, Greystone Crest, Greystone Farms. Uh, the COVID Greystone, you need to be sheltered. All right, let's, let's take the camera live. Which, which, which camera do we, okay, goodness gracious. Wh which camera is this? Oh boy, this is 119 and 280. This is a large, violent tornado that is down. This oh is at uh, Alabama Highway 119 and uh, US 280. This is one of the traffic oh cams. You saw the power flashes yeah. too. This is a large, destructive, violent tornado that is down. Mount Laurel, Shoal Creek, Greystone. Uh, you've got to be sheltered right now. This is urgent. Uh, this is an urgent situation. This is a tornado emergency for the neighborhoods that we've called out. What I'm doing is texting my wife to be sure she's in the shelter. Uh, so again, uh, if we can go back to that camera, th th this is... Um, Again, we, we're getting a little blockage on the beam on the radar, and if we can go back to that uh, camera, but clearly, okay. So this is Dunavant Valley Road uh, right here. This is Greystone Crest. Uh, that thing is coming through, goodness, it's passing a little south of Brook Highland. Uh, it's coming through some of the Greystone neighborhoods. Um, again, the crest is right here on top of the mountain. Uh, this is Dunavant Valley Road right here. Uh, you've got Shoal Creek, which is right here, Greystone Cove, which is right here, Greystone Farms, which is right here. This thing is dangerous, extremely dangerous, all right? Don't fool with this. 
and it's going to keep on rolling down Shelby County 41 or Alabama Highway 119 in that general area. Uh, we've got the couplet showing up near the crest. This, this is Hugh Daniel Drive, uh, which kind of goes over the mountain right here. Uh, again, Dunavant Valley Road is right here, but uh, from here it's going to keep on moving northeast. This is Dunavant along Alabama Highway 25. This is Shelby County 43 coming back over to Vandiver. Um, and again, we've got now, we can see some fire units and we're getting, okay, this is from Old Town Helena. Um, we have damage with power lines on the road and poles broken, trees down, Cahaba Valley Road, that's 119, it's Summer Circle. Um, uh, we got multiple, multiple calls for assistance here. This is a, again, a tornado emergency for Northern Shelby County. Got this possible tornado, which is located uh, again near the Greystone Farms, Greystone Cove, the crest at Greystone, the main Greystone neighborhoods that's moving northeast, and that'll be uh, coming right out toward uh, Highway 119 or staying along 119 or maybe County Road 41. The main roads here are County Road 41, that's Dunavant Valley Road, and Highway 119 that goes up the leads over here. And again, uh, you can see the possible tornado right here with what could be a debris ball. And again, we've got a lot of damage here. And if you guys uh, note any more uh, damage, and, and let me say one more thing. We've got a confirmed tornado near Aliceville. I, I don't want to leave you out. If you're in Aliceville, you've got to be sheltered. Pickens County, there's a tornado warning there. You've got to be sheltered. Please be sheltered in Pickens County. Um, North Shelby Fire reporting multiple houses hit on Parkside Drive. Uh, Helena Road and Bearden Road being shut down by Pelham Fire on Helena request. We have possible damage at the Pelham Civic Complex, uh, which is by the Oak Mountain Amphitheater. Uh, Pelham Fire reporting power lines and trees down. Helena Fire asking for mutual aid from Pelham. So again, this, this is a very high impact major tornado emergency. And you can see the tornado warning extends now into St. Clair County. So we got a possible tornado here in Shelby County, and again, this is located uh, in the vicinity of Greystone, uh, Mount Laurel, Brook Highland, uh, moving northeast, and that's going to cross over into Shelby into St. Clair County. So in St. Clair County, uh, the cities involved would be Asheville down Highway 231 to Pell City. This is a time to be sheltered. We've got Moody right here. All of these communities, you've got to be sheltered. Obviously, Leeds, uh, the community of Donovan on Alabama Highway 25. Uh, so a tornado warning in effect now for Shelby County, I'm sorry, St. Clair County. Now, this is the new tornado warning that is currently in effect, and that will be in effect until 2.30 this afternoon. Um, and it also includes parts of uh, Talladega County as well. So again, we've got a possible tornado near Greystone, Mount Laurel, in uh, Shelby County right here. It's going to be coming up into St. Clair County. And this is going to be going down either Highway 119 or County Road 41. Uh, one of the two over here toward Alabama Highway 25. Uh, again, Shoal Creek, uh, you want to be sheltered. Uh, Brock's Gap, the, the Brock property on Highway 41, you want to be sheltered. And uh, that will continue moving right in the direction of Highway 25. Everybody along Highway 25 right here should be sheltered. The danger is now past Highway 280. We can give an all clear to US 280. An all clear to US Highway 280. Uh, from this. Uh, and again, we, we're, watch, we're watching that Grandview Medical Center sky cam and uh, we're watching. All of these things are rain wrapped today. It's going to be so hard to see these things. But we have multiple agencies involved here. And let me just say one more thing. The high risk has been expanded east and now includes Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and Gadsden. Not that that's that important at this point, but we have a level five out of five high risk that now includes Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, and Gadsden. All right, so again, we've got a tornado that is approaching Highway 25. Uh, Dunavant here, Vandiver here. This is Sterrett. Leeds is up here. Looks like the tornado is going to be passing south of Leeds. And ultimately, this thing could cross uh, Interstate 20. Uh, Pell City is right here. Cropwell is right here. Uh, that's 231 going down north toward the town of Vincent and Harpersville. Uh, possible tornado coming up on Vandiver uh, and Dunavant. Uh, again, it looks like this thing kind of went down uh, uh, County Road 41. But I want to go to Pickens County real quick. Uh, we're getting reports of a confirmed tornado on the ground at Aliceville. Uh, and again, let me just show you who's in the polygon over here. Very dangerous storm. Aliceville is right here. Tornado right here along Alabama Highway 14. Pickensville here. Aliceville here. Tornado 
between Aliceville and Pickensville, moving northeast toward Carrollton. This is your polygon. Uh, it's not quite up to US 82. This is Reform. This is Gordo. But everybody in Carrollton, Aliceville, uh, Saps, you've got to be sheltered. Uh, is this very dangerous storm? Apparently is dropping a tornado that is on the ground in Pickens County. This is in West Alabama, about 40 miles west of Tuscaloosa. So a tornado warning continues in effect for Pickens County. Uh, that is in effect until 2.30 this afternoon. Uh, and again, we're getting some reports of law enforcement from law enforcement of a confirmed tornado down near Aliceville with that storm. Let's go back to our storm that's south of Birmingham. Um, and again, we've got the camera at Bald Rock. I don't know if that one is up. It might not be today. We've got a camera that's on top of Bald Rock Mountain. We give us a pretty good view of this thing. Let's look at the debris product if we can. This is probably going to be noisy. Uh, the uh, correlation coefficient. And uh, again, I don't want to point out a TDS at this point because of the noise. Let's go back to the velocity display one more time. Uh, and again, clearly the concern is going to be right here. That's County Road 41. Yeah, there's your hook. Uh, there's your tornado. And uh, that's coming right up on Vandiver and uh, Dunavant right in through here. This is Shelby County 43. Looks like the tornadoes come uh, right down uh, County Road uh, uh, 41, Dunavant Valley Road. And uh, that'll be coming up on Dunavant, Vandiver. You've got to be sheltered along Highway 25. Nobody driving on Highway 25 south of Leeds uh, down to Vincent. I just would stay off Highway 25 for the next 15 minutes. Again, we're giving an all clear to uh, US 280. All clear to Highway 280 and all clear to Interstate 65 and US 31. Um, There's our TDS. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, it's clearly down. Um, clearly down. And where you see uh, Greystone Crest there, Carnoustie, that Shoal Creek. And I'll let you take it for just a second. Let me check on some folks here real quick. Okay. All right. So uh, what I've circled there is the indication of lofted debris. This is going to continue moving, as James has mentioned, towards Dunavant, Winburn, Vandiver. It's moving uh, very close to Wahapa Lake Circle, County Road 101, and it's going to be on its way towards Sand Ridge Road here coming up pretty soon. It's likely going to cross very close to uh, Oak Crossing as well. Uh, this is moving very close to Dunavant here. I'm thinking within the next radar scan, it's going to be moving closer to Dunavant. It's right north here of County Road 43. It's in between County Road 41 and County Road 43. It's going to keep moving uh, northeast towards Dunavant here pretty soon. So now if let, you are let me in pass on a few reports real okay. quick. I'm sorry, Taylor. Uh, it's okay. Uh, we've got apparently some entrapment now in Eagle Point, <sighs> uh, which is right off Highway 280 near Lee Branch. Um, and uh, we've got reports of people trapped in Pelham right now. We're getting reports of major damage in Helena. This is apparently a major tornado that has come through here. And again, uh, that tornado is located right here, and it's about to cross over Highway 25. Very, very, very dangerous situation here. This is a tornado emergency uh, for the northeastern part of Shelby County, and again, that's going to continue to carry out up into St. Or St. St. Clair County, which is right here. Uh, this is Wolf Creek. Uh, this is uh, Interstate 20 right here. Uh, that's U.S. Highway 78. Pell City is right here. So everybody in St. Clair County in this thing, you've got to be sheltered right now. Um, and again, uh, what we're doing here, working a tornado emergency. I'm James Spann with Taylor Serralo. And uh, this is a, an extremely dangerous uh, situation today. Um, and we're starting to Let's go to Wexo 5 if we can real quick. Um, so this is some of the uh, damage that we're getting right now. And uh, this is from, uh, I want to say, this is by the Oak Mountain Football Stadium on Highway 119. And that's an example of some of the damage we're getting from that particular point. Um, that's a look at what could be that uh, this, this, the tornado going that's over Pelham. Uh, so let's go back to the uh, radar. And again, we're going to stay with this. Uh, uh, if you're just joining us, uh, this is James Spann with Taylor Serralo. Um, mainly checking on my wife. Mm. Uh, we've got several uh, she, she's, o she's okay and she's in the tornado shelter. Uh, okay, go ahead, uh, Taylor. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're, yeah, we're, we're glad to hear that. Uh, your wife is okay. We've got trees uprooted, Pelham High School. We're getting a lot of damage reports in here, and we've still got that TDS showing up very strong. Uh, 
moving towards Vandiver. Right. So again, the, the main concern, it's going to be Highway uh, 25, uh, Alabama Highway 25, uh, Vandiver, Starrett, um, really up toward Leeds. That's Highway 25 right there. Got a major tornado right here about to cross over Highway 25. That's going to come out of Shelby County coming into uh, St. Clair County. And again, Interstate 20. Nobody should be along Interstate 20 between Leeds and let's just say the Coosa River right now. Nobody along Interstate 20 between Leeds and the Coosa River. Nobody along US 78, same stretch. Everybody in Pell City should be sheltered. Everybody in Asheville should be sheltered. Everybody in Wolf Creek should be sheltered right now. Is this uh, possible? Uh, say possible. That is a very large destructive tornado is coming up into St. Clair. Again, Interstate 20 right here, US Highway 78 right here. Uh, and again, that will continue moving into St. Clair. Get, and keep in mind as we show you this, we've got a tornado warning in effect for Pickens County in West Alabama as well. If you're in Carrollton, Aliceville, you've got to be sheltered. We're focusing on multiple uh, tornadoes today. Uh, understand that. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do right real quick is change my battery, Taylor. So we're going to go back to you for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I, we haven't pulled a storm track in a while on this circulation, so that's what I am going to do. And I want to remind you that if you are in this polygon, you need to be in that safe place and stay there. But I'm going to try to give you some approximate arrival times for when this circulation uh, could arrive in your location. So I'm going to pull this to the northeast here at about 45, 50 miles per hour. And uh, this is an approximate arrival time here, but uh, moving up on Dunavant here at 1.59 p.m., so that's in like three minutes. So if you're in Dunavant, you, sh you should be hunkered down in your safe place. It's going to be loud out there, but make sure you've got that helmet on. Stay where you are. Stay put. If you're in a safe place, you're going to be okay. Stewart's Crossroad coming up at 2.06, uh, Brompton at 2.08, and we've just got this newest radar scan here. Uh, this will be moving into Chula Vista at 2.14 p.m., and then eventually uh, towards Hunting Ridge at 2.17. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Uh, uh, is I'm going to continue uh, circling here this this um, this TDS here moving right through the Vandiver area and I want to zoom you down because I want to give you that street view here of what exactly streets this is moving along. So this is going to be moving along County Road 43 uh, on High Road here pretty soon. County Road 480, County Road 50 uh, coming up on Stewart's Crossroads here in the next few minutes. And so we are still seeing that indication that we have a tornado on the ground. What I want to do here is switch over to the velocity and see if we can pick out where that rotation is at the moment. So uh, based on this velocity here, it's moving very close to the community of Vandiver. Um, and we are, uh, it's a confirmed tornado. So that's what the National Weather Service is updating there. Um, and it's moving towards the Stewart Crossroads area. Eventually, it's going to end up near Prescott. And it's going to also uh, end up. And what you're seeing here in that box, that video footage is going to be live footage from Helena. So this is the same storm that moved through the Helena area just a few moments ago. Um, and it's going to continue moving towards Wolf Creek, Stewart's Crossroads here pretty soon. Uh, moving towards in the general direction of Pell City in between Moody and Pell City here pretty soon. So this is going to be crossing over into St. Clair County in the next few minutes or so. Uh, so if you live in Prescott, Chula Vista, Moody, Stewart's, Pell City, Cole City, Odenville, make sure you're in that safe place. Stay there. Put your helmets on. Make sure you've got your shoes on uh, and you are remaining in that safe place in the next few minutes here as we continue to track this circulation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put back on the uh, correlation coefficient, the debris tracker, and this is giving us an idea of the different uh, different types of things that might be in the atmosphere. So if we're picking up boards and pieces of homes or pieces of trees, this is going to give us a better idea of if there's any debris. Kind of noisy at this point, but based on what we have seen, this is where I'm indicating the uh, most likely tornado debris signature. Very close to Vandiver, as that circulation has been moving through Vandiver, uh, moving near the Sterrett community. Uh, so Stewart's Crossroads, you are going to be coming up next here, so stay in that safe place. Hang tight there. Sequoia Road, if you live near, uh, as I zoom down, near Morris Road, near 78 State Route 4, along I-20. So at this point, if you are on I-20, you need to be pulling off and you need to be headed to a gas station, a sturdy structure. You do not want to be in your car. If you live 
uh, near Chula Vista or if you're driving near Chula Vista on I-20 in St. Clair County, you want to pull off the highway at this point. Uh, I do see that we have uh, some crews on I-20 here. Uh, that, that circulation is going to pass to the east of them. So at this point, um, they are okay. This is where our crews are located right here, very close to Leeds. Uh, this circulation is likely going to cross to the east of Leeds. So if you're in Leeds, the circulation is moving uh, to the east of you. So you are okay and you are not actually technically included in this warning polygon. So I'm going to try to put back on this storm relative velocity here and I'm going to circle where the most likely rotation is, has moved through the Vandiver area and I'm going to draw this arrow here. It's going to be heading north eastward towards Prescott Community, towards Stewart Crossroads, and towards Chula Vista. So this is headed uh, towards I-20 here pretty soon, and this is where we are showing uh, some of the roads here that are in uh, the path of this. So Mill Ridge Lane, Shaw Road, Morris Road, State Route 4, Rock Ridge Road, and Rock Ridge Road where it uh, connects to I-20. If you live in this area, uh, this, this circulation is headed your way here pretty soon. Okay, so I'm getting word from the National Weather Service that they have dropped the, the tornado emergency tag, but this is still has the potential uh, to, to drop back down on the ground. At this point, we're not seeing super strong indications in this correlation coefficient, but, but you uh, still need to be uh, treating this as a tornado on the ground because what we've been seeing with this we've been tracking this all the way from Greene County and this storm has been cycling this is a, a long track supercell thunderstorm um, on the bottom right of your screen you are seeing the Pelham Civic Complex on the top uh, is a, a live shot from Helena in a uh, Shelby County as this the storm did move through that area not too long ago I'm going to circle where this rotation could be it's going to be passing pretty close to Prescott in Wolf Creek here in the next few minutes and I'm going to pull another storm track here because these storms are moving pretty quickly today to the northeast at about 45 miles per hour. So if this continues on the same track, this is going to put it uh, pretty close here to Lakeview at tw uh, 211, Walkerton at 212, Glen City at 213, and then Stewart's at uh, 213. So we are tracking this this uh, circulation here headed towards the community of Cole City as well. And this will likely be crossing over I-20. So I've said it once, but I'll say it again. If you are in between Moody or Lincoln on I-20, you need to be pulling off here. Uh, especially if you're very close to Chula Vista, you need to be pulling off the interstate. You should not be driving on the interstate at this point. Uh, find a gas station, find a sturdy structure. We don't want you in your car driving along I-20 at this point. Uh, looking again at the correlation coefficient, I'm going to kind of just bounce between different radar products to try to find uh, the most likely location of this circulation at this point. Uh, but our better indications are showing up here on this storm relative velocity. So once again, I'm going to draw this arrow in the direction that the storm is moving. It's going to be moving very close to the Chula Vista community. So if, so if you live in the Chula Vista community or Prescott, this is moving very close to you. Uh, so I want to take you down to the street level. So if you live on any of these streets or live near these streets, you need to hang tight, hang in that safe place. I know it's going to be loud out there. You're going to hear the rain, you're going to hear the wind, but if you're in that safe place, you've got your helmet on, you're going to be okay. So we're going to uh, track this circulation here. It's moving towards Morris Road, Jennigan's Road, Chula Vista Mountain Road, Cook Springs Road, moving towards the community of Tanyard here pretty soon, State Route 174, uh, State Route 4, and then crossing over I-20 here, I'd say in the next couple of minutes. So uh, once again, if you are listening to us on the radio and you can hear me and you are on I-20, you need to get off at the nearest exit. And uh, if you're in between Moody and the Chula Vista area, you need to get off at the nearest exit and make sure you are getting to a sturdy location. We do not want you in your car at this point. I'm checking with uh, the National Weather Service here, not hearing any updated information on this exact circulation. Uh, we are getting reports of more damage coming from Helena, so that would be this same circulation here. Um, and we are 
getting also reports that that circulation that we've been tracking in Pickens County uh, has broadened a bit, but if you are still in that warning polygon in Pickens County, we want you to remain in that safe place until that tornado warning is dropped and expired for you. At this point, it still is in effect, so we want you to stay in that safe place. With this latest radar scan here, seeing a little bit of an indication of a broadening of the circulation, so that could indicate that this is cycling a bit. Uh, so let me put on this reflectivity. might be easier to pick out where that rotation is. And at this point, the storm structure, not quite as organized as it was a, a little bit farther back in time. But as we've seen with this system, it's been cycling. So this could be going through a cycling and it could tighten right back up here pretty soon. Uh, but if you live in Prescott, Chula Vista, Stewart's, Cole City, now is the time you want to stay in that safe place. And this will be crossing over uh, towards I-20 here pretty soon. Also on 78, if you live on 78, this is going to be crossing very close to you. So let me uh, look here at uh, some of the, the chat. We're getting more damage reports from Highway 280 when the circulation crossed over Highway 280. And putting on this, this uh, velocity here, at this point, not showing a super tight couplet, a tornado velocity signature, uh, but this is where I would assume the uh, strongest rotation would be at this point. Um, and as I've mentioned, this could be cycling, so we're going to keep a very close eye on the storm. If you're in this polygon, stay in that safe place. Y Pell City, you are included in this polygon. This is likely going to cross just to the northwest of your location if you're in Pell City crossing in between Moody and Pell City, very close to the Chula Vista community, moving towards Wattsville and Odenville here pretty soon. Uh, and it will eventually be... Okay, so we are showing uh, on your screen now some damage on 280. And what you're looking at is you're seeing traffic has been stopped. And if you look really carefully, that you can see there are what looks to be a, a bunch of trees that have just been snapped off. Um, their trunks snapped off, and you can also tell there are power lines down. This is going to be on 280. Where, where is this on 280? Do you guys know in the back? Douglas Baker. Okay, so this is uh, um, 280 and Douglas Baker, and you can see their indication of what was likely yeah, that, that That's, uh, that's Doug Baker Boulevard. Yeah. Um, you, you got people trapped in houses in Eagle Point over there. Um, it's, <laughs> it's not a good situation. And, 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 um, the reason I had to step out, we've had major damage in my house. Um, I had to be sure my, my wife is okay, uh, but the tornado came right through there, and it, it's not good. It's bad. Uh, it's, it, it's bad. We've got a lot of... Uh, let, let's go to WEX05 real quick, and again, this is not the worst of it. I'll just show you some of these images. This is coming from uh, uh, Indian Springs and Highway 119. Uh, this is right after it came through the uh, amphitheater uh, area. Um, and... Uh, Looking at some more of the damage. This is Greystone Farms. And again, you can see it uh, looks like uh, some pretty serious uh, structural damage. Uh, this is just off Hugh Daniel Drive near County Road 41. So it's going to be a pretty big tornado that's caused all this damage out through here. Uh, this is uh, Eagle Point in uh, northern Shelby County. And again, this is not too far from Lee Branch. And again, you can see major, major damage. Um, they're, they're shutting down a part of 119 uh, at 280 due to power lines down. Uh, let's go back to the radar, and again, I, I want to, we, we got to stay focused on what's to come. Right, we'll, we'll look at the damage here in just a second, but uh, the Helena's got major damage. All phone lines, the Helena police are down. Uh, please stay out of the area of Old Town. But let's look at the tornado, just look at the TDS, the tornado debris signature here real quick. Uh, if we can, Taylor, just kind of get you updated on this. Um, and Taylor, help me out. I've been out in the hall trying to be sure my family's okay. Uh, where, where are we on the, is this the TDS over here now? Uh, uh, that does, that is not the TDS. I'm about to say, I, I'm pretty no. sure that's not it. No, um, I'm having a hard time picking it up here. Uh, I, I assume it is next to uh, near Stewart's is where I'm thinking. It's pretty noisy, but I'm thinking this is going to be that tornado debris signature. Let me co-locate it here. No, that's probably not it. It might be farther down here towards uh, Wolf Creek still. Uh, I'm having a hard time picking out the TDS uh, on the uh, correlation coefficient product here. Uh, but this could be it near Wolf Creek. 
we might be able to get a better picture here uh, looking at reflectivity. Let's and go back to a Wexo 5 real quick, uh, show some more of the images of uh, what's happened here. This is a obviously a major tornado coming through uh, Shelby County. Is that a, a plane? Very densely populated part of the Birmingham metro. And uh, again, uh, this is what's caused so much damage. And it's, uh, it's, it's, we've got damage in so many places. So let's go back to the radar. Again, we, we, we try and focus on what's to come and that we still have life-threatening weather. So again, St. Clair County, uh, you need to be in a safe place. Uh, Pell City, uh, Asheville, Wattsville, Cold City, Ragland, uh, you are all in the polygon. Riverside, uh, if you're in this polygon, be sure that you're in a safe place and stay there until it passes. We, again, this storm has had a history of producing major major damage. Um, the, the storm in St. Clair is probably in air that is not quite as conducive as the air that was in the Birmingham Metro. The air is a little less unstable and hopefully that will help to let this thing spin down a bit. Uh, but again, uh, and we don't have the bald rock camera, do we, uh, Taylor? Uh, we do not. I, okay. try, I tried to pull it up, but... Okay. Um, the tornado warning for Pickens County is not going to be extended. Uh, so again, the tornado warning for Pickens not extended. Uh, so the one tornado that we have is this tornado warning for St. Clair County. So Pickens is being canceled right now. So if you're in Pickens County, the tornado warning for Pickens County in West Alabama has been canceled. Uh, all right, so now we have a tornado warning in effect for St. Clair County. Again, this is Pell City. And even though the rotation is not as intense as it was earlier, you've still got to be sheltered as long as you're in this polygon. Some of the places in the polygon would include Asheville, uh, Raglan, uh, Wattsville, Pell City. Uh, the, the storm is on by Wolf Creek and uh, Chula Vista Bald Rock, but uh, this, the broad circulation coming obviously right up on Pell City. I think it's going to stay pretty far south of Asheville. But again, as long as you're in that polygon, you want to stay sheltered. Uh, again, broad circulation coming up on Pell City, but it still could be down. So please take this seriously. We've had major damage uh, in parts of the Birmingham Metro in northern Shelby County from this storm. Major damage with injuries. We don't know how many injuries. We don't know much beyond that. And again, the, uh, uh, the newsroom will help us as we get the video in and we find out more about that. Uh, but again, this is your tornado circulation that's very close to Pell City. Pell City here, Cropwell here, uh, Riverside is right here. This is the Coosa, Lake Logan Martin. And uh, that will continue moving to the northeast. And we'll see if the Weather Service decides to extend that warning over into uh, uh, Calhoun County. So uh, I want to go back to just a big picture really quickly, Taylor. Uh, we we, we want to do a reset here. It's uh, 212. We've had a major tornado come through the Birmingham Metro. The tornado warning for Pickens County has uh, been canceled. We have flash flood warnings in effect now for many counties, including the Birmingham Metro. We have one active tornado warning, and it's this one. So let's go back to St. Clair County. This is the storm that came through northern Shelby and uh, produced some very uh, significant damage. All right, let's roll it. If we got some video of this, uh, let's go ahead and take that. Uh, again, this, this, is, uh, this is off the traffic camera, and uh, this is at... Uh, uh, around Lee Branch and uh, U.S. Highway 280, uh, 119. Uh, and again, uh, that's the CVS. You see the power uh, going off and on there, but that's, that's just horrifying. That's coming through Eagle Point. That is the tornado coming through Eagle Point, that subdivision where we have people trapped. And uh, it uh, has cr went down Shelby County Highway 41, uh, down in the vicinity of uh, some of the Greystone neighborhoods, uh, Greystone Farms, uh, down toward uh, Greystone Cove, Shoal Creek, and then ultimately down toward the town of Dunavant, and then uh, from there it has uh, moved into St. Clair County, and uh, it's produced major damage, and that's probably the best view we've had of that thing today coming off that uh, traffic cam, and that uh, thunderstorm is what we're watching right now, and it might be ramping up again very close to Pell City. So again, uh, everybody in Pell City, you should have been sheltered about 30 minutes ago. The lead times today have been very extensive. Uh, which is a good thing, but th that's bad and that we know that these could be long track violent tornadoes. And again, we're getting evidence that this thing is ramping up again. Let's look at the CC, the correlation coefficient product, if we can. Uh, and again, you can see that uh, there's a bit of a lowering right there, so it might be getting down again. So we'll go back to the velocity. And again, we've got a lot of damage in um, Helena and Pelham and North Shelby County. Um, 
20 as well. Right, and obviously nobody should be along Interstate 20 right now. Uh, so, and again, the traffic you're seeing in that video, that's US 280 that's been blocked off where the tornado came through near Lee Branch uh, earlier. But a possible tornado near Pell City. So again, uh, Pell City, uh, Riverside, uh, and we'll see if the Weather Service extends the warning. They, they, they could very well do that over into Talladega or Calhoun counties, northern Talladega, based on the damage that this thing has caused. Um, and again, uh, uh, Hoover Police, they've got several officers going over toward Greystone. Uh, there's a lot of damage in Helena and Pelham, and just a lot of things going on here. Uh, so again, this is a tornado warning for St. Clair County in parts of Talladega County in effect until 2.45 this afternoon. Uh, and again, you can see the uh, polygon uh, right here. And this is your possible tornado. And uh, oh. it's pretty much, wow. Yeah. It looks like it's ramping up again right here. Um, you've got the Home Depot, which is right here. Golden Rule Barbecue, which is right here. Uh, what could be a, a destructive tornado is down again. Uh, that's just north of Pell City. And again, that's going to uh, be moving uh, a little south of Wattsville, crossing the Coosa, and that's going to be moving over into uh, Calhoun County. This is Ohatchee right here, Calhoun County. You've got uh, coal, uh, Boiling Springs, which right here, Boiling Springs Road runs down from uh, Alabama, or uh, 144 down to Highway 77. But again, that's a, a tornado that is right here. It looks like it's ramping up once again, uh, crossing over Highway 231 just north of downtown Pell City. Downtown Pell City is right here. Old US 78 is right here. That's Interstate 20. This is US 231 going north back up to Asheville. Uh, Wattsville is right here. And again, uh, that, that's, there's a lot of retail shops and restaurants right here, hotels just right off the interstate. And that's about where that tornado is right now. That's going to keep on moving to the northeast. And again, that'll be crossing the Coosa River uh, and then moving over into Calhoun County. So the next county of concern after St. Clair will be Calhoun. Let's expand this out just a little bit. Let me show some of the bigger cities that might be in the path of this thing to give people some lead time on this. We've talked about lead times today. So if we can expand the view out a little bit, Taylor, uh, make it a little wider. And again, we're watching some of the damage video coming in uh, kind of together. Let's expand it out a little more, please. Thank you right there. So this is moving northeast, and just to give you an idea of what might be, and this is the one that caused all of this damage in the Birmingham Metro, the southern part of the Birmingham Metro, northern Shelby. Uh, next up for this thing, it's going to be uh, coming out into Calhoun, and most likely it's going to be crossing north of Anniston, north of Oxford. Uh, again, some places like Alexandria sits right here, uh, Weaver sits right here, Jacksonville sits right here. Uh, the greatest potential in Calhoun, it's going to be these communities north of Anniston. So at the moment, there's not a tornado warning in effect. Um, but, okay, so the bottom box we're seeing, by the way, is Old Town Helena. The tornado came through Old Town Helena. Uh, and again, this is uh, what, what it looks like now. And again, you can see that uh, at that particular point, we've got some damage. We, we've got reports of injuries. We have reports of entrapment, but we do not at this point uh, have a count. We just don't know. We're in this phase where we're trying to just determine what has happened, who's been hit, who's trapped. We're doing search and rescue at this point, and uh, uh, it's been obviously a very large tornado. So let's go back to uh, uh, what we've got here. Again, we've got a tornado that apparently is uh, down, a TDS in St. Clair. A new tornado has most likely come back down uh, just north of Pell City, uh, and uh, this is moving Got a tornado debris signature right here. And again, that, that's going to be around the hotels up there, the Home Depot, Golden Rule Barbecue. It'll be crossing the Coosa over into Calhoun County. This is Calhoun County. This is Ohatchee right here. And uh, in a matter of minutes, I'm sure the Weather Service will be uh, posting a warning for Calhoun County. So uh, here, here we are at uh, 219. Uh, we have a tornado warning in effect for St. Clair County for the possible, in fact, we have a tornado that is down uh, currently along Highway 231 that's moving northeast. That's going to be crossing the Coosa. And again, Ohatchee is here, Boiling Springs here, Boiling Springs Road goes back over toward uh, the Mamre Baptist Church, which sits right here. Uh, and all of this is moving in that general direction. So again, if you're in Ohatchee, even though there's no formal warning for uh, Calhoun, I'd go ahead and go to a safe place. The warning should be coming out in a matter of minutes. Uh, so again, if you're in Ohatchee, anywhere near Ohatchee, uh, just be in a safe place. You've got the Lake Neely Henry Dam, Highway 144 is right here. 
Uh, this is Lake Neely Henry. Uh, this is Logan Martin down here below that. And uh, that possible tornado is going to be uh, very close to Ragland as well. So uh, Ragland, Ohatchee, uh, anybody close to these places, you've got to be in a safe place is this possible tornado is now north of Pell City ramping up again. Let's go to the correlation coefficient product. Uh, uh, and again, we'll take a look at the possibility of uh, debris that's being lofted. And you can see a little negative spike right there. That would be the potential for debris moving like this. And again, these blue lines, these are flash flood warning polygons. The ones I want you to focus on today are the red lines. I'll take those off again. Okay, the red lines are the tornado warning polygons here. So uh, uh, again, uh, and we will do our best. In fact, let me show you. Let's go to WEX05 real quick. Um, again, again, a lot of images. Uh, this was taken uh, from Jim and Nick's on uh, US 280. Mm. That's uh, Double Oak Mountain. I'm sorry. Let me uh, go back to this. Uh, and uh, again, uh, you can see that we've got uh, probably some pretty serious damage. I've got all kind of video of this thing, but the way we do it here, I'm not going to focus on the video of this tornado. We've got to focus on what's happening right now. So let's go back to the radar. But I wanted to show you that because that's probably what this thing looks like right now. Um, what could be a significant tornado is now northeast of Pell City. It's crossed over Highway 231. In about five minutes, we'll give 231 an all clear. Uh, moving northeast, and again, that's coming up in the vicinity of uh, uh, Ragland and Ohatchee. So those are our next communities in the path of this thing. So if you're in Ragland, Ohatchee, don't fool around with this, please. It's been rough. Um, it's, it's been very rough. We know that many people have been hurt. Uh, we've got a lot of damage, and this is a very serious situation. So once again, uh, the call to action is for everybody in Calhoun and St. Clair to be in a safe place. The warning is coming in minutes here for Calhoun. Uh, that'll be up on the board in just a second. And uh, again, the, the, we'll try and handle the damage in the double boxes. Uh, again, we, we've got a lot of reporters and a lot of video to show, but we've got to focus on this. We've got to protect life. That's the main reason that we're here is to protect life. And we have to focus on the storms that are in progress now and not necessarily the damage that has occurred. We'll, we'll show you that in the double boxes. We'll do the best we can to do that. And I know there's a lot of neighborhoods hit. We've got people that are trapped in parts of northern Shelby County. It's been a really, really rough ride here. Uh, but again, tornadic circulation here. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 144 right there, my finger that goes up to Raglan. Alabama Highway 144, then it goes over to uh, uh, the dam. This is the Lake Neely Henry Dam, uh, Highway 144. That's Alabama Highway 77. This is Ohatchee. And again, you can see evidence of very, very, very tight rotation right in through here. That'll be crossing the uh, river. Obviously, nobody should be out there in this water on the river right now. But if you've got a Raglan mailing address, anywhere close to Raglan, you've got to be sheltered right now. And again, helmets for everybody. And what you can do today, like we've talked about before, is please help us by calling or texting somebody in these polygons. As we call out the, the communities, the neighborhoods, they might be watching something on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime and they're not watching the weather. We want you to help us by calling them and texting them today. You can be a big part of this warning process. Uh, so again, uh, what could be a large destructive tornado is about to be crossing the Coosa. In fact, the, the river is located right there. Uh, this is Raglan and uh, coming right up toward Ohatchee. And from there, it's going to keep on moving through northern Calhoun County. This will not be affecting Anniston. For those of you in Anniston and Oxford, this will not be affecting you. This is going to be affecting areas north of Anniston, the northern part of Calhoun County. There's your new tornado warning. Tornado warning in effect now for Calhoun County, uh, in effect until 3.30 this afternoon. Uh, you can see the southern edge of the polygon kind of clipping Anniston. But the greatest concern, it's going to be areas up here like uh, Alexandria, Duke, Weaver, Sachs, Linlock. The McClellan property, Jacksonville, uh, Piedmont is in the polygon. Uh, this is Highway 431 going up toward Glencoe. This is Alabama Highway 21 uh, going up to Jacksonville and Piedmont. So a very dangerous situation for the northern part of Calhoun County. This, uh, this storm is a long track storm. This thing got down in Greene County uh, before 12 noon. It was about 1145 today. And it, it's been maintaining itself mostly the entire time. We've had a couple of frames where it gets up, but it comes right back down. And it's just wanting to stay down. So again, forget the quality of the air mass over here. It's wanting to stay down once again. So it could be a large tornado is about to cross the uh, Coosa right here. That's the river right here. And then it's going to come over here into uh, Calhoun County. So again, if you're close to Raglan, close to Ohatchee, we want you sheltered. If you're over here in Alexandria, we want you sheltered. Same thing for Jacksonville, Weaver, Sachs, 
any of these communities north of Anniston, you've got to be sheltered. This could be a very significant tornado. It has been a significant tornado that has been coming through uh, Shelby County. And again, I've got just gobs and gobs of video and images I will show you as we go along. But we've got to keep our eyes on the prize here. We've got to stay focused and, and be sure that people are safe. And once we get people through this, we'll be able to go back and look at some of these amazing videos and images that we're seeing coming in from some of the damage. And I'll show a little bit, Taylor. In fact, let me kick it back over to you, and I'll show just a little bit in a minute to remind people how serious this is. So, Taylor, okay. back over to you. Sounds good. So we are tracking that circulation that is very close to em Embry uh, Bend, moving over the Coosa River, headed in the general direction of Sulphur Springs and Boiling Springs here pretty soon. This is also going to be passing very close to Ragland and Ohatchee. So what we haven't done here in a little while, which I'm going to do, is pull one of those storm tracks for you. And remember, if you are in that polygon, you should be in your safe place at this point anyway. But this is going to kind of give you an idea of when that circulation could be clo uh, passing close to your location here. So looking at the storm track here, I'm going to pull it at about uh, between 45 and 50 miles per hour. This is going to put uh, this, this center of circulation here where we're seeing the indication of circulation towards Boiling Springs at 237, uh, 10 Islands at 241, Ohatchee at 241, and Middleton at 242. And at this point, all indications are pointing towards a, a very strong circulation here moving over the Coosa River. Uh, so what I want to do here is I'm going to switch this back to the correlation coefficient and see if we can find indica indications of a uh, debris signature. Not showing that at the moment, but based on what we're seeing in velocity here, uh, it is very possible that we have a tornado uh, that is uh, on the ground at this point uh, moving over the Coosa River. So I'm going to name off some of these roads that are in this, the uh, direct path of this circulation here. Woods Bend Road, Valley Road. This is going to be moving very, very close to the city of Raglan. So if you're in Raglan, hang tight in that safe place. Make sure you've got those shoes on, your helmet on as the circulation passes pretty close to you here pretty soon. It's also going to be cr crossing very close to the city of Macon. Um, and Boiling Springs here. River Road, County Road 73. If you live near Mitchellville Road, that's going to be uh, crossing near you here pretty soon. State Route 144. Eventually, the circulation is headed in the general direction of Ohatchee. Um, and I'm going to draw an arrow here to kind of give you an idea of where this circulation is headed. So headed in this general direction. So this is a general direction here of where we're expecting the circulation to continue moving. So once again, that's going to move near Ragland, near Sulphur Springs, Boiling Springs, Reagan Chapel, Ottery, and Ohatchee here in the next few minutes. I want to um, check here and see if we have, uh, we do have confirmation of an observed tornado. So uh, we do have once again a confirmation that this tornado is on the ground and this has had that history of spinning up, spinning down at this point. It does appear as if the circulation has once again tightened back up and we are looking at uh, a, uh, a uh, indication that this tornado could be on the ground. So I'm gonna change back over the correlation coefficient product here. At this point, not seeing that show up on TDS, but um, this circulation is moving very, very close to Woods Bend Road. It'll be crossing near Valley Road here pretty soon. Uh, State Route 144, Lock 3 Road, Macon, River Road, County Road 73. Uh, likely some very strong winds at this point near Embry Bend. And this, this, the indication here of this rotation is moving uh, right over the Coosa River at this point. So in the coming minutes, we are expecting the circulation to get closer to the Boiling Springs area, Ragland, Ohatchee. And then if this continues on, it's going to be moving uh, near Alexandria. It might pass a little bit north of you, but you're in that polygon. So that means you're in the safe place. You are listening to what's going on. You've got that, uh, you've got your helmet on. If we could take that banner down, yeah, thank you, because uh, that was covering the circulation there. Um, and I want to draw an arrow here. This is the general direction. It is going to be moving from St. Clair County here into Calhoun County pretty soon. And uh, at this point, let's see if we can find a TDS. Um, and at this point, looking at some of the different radar products, I, I'm having a hard time finding that on any of our other radar products. But just based on that velocity signature alone, uh, likely we are dealing here with a, t a tornado that is on the ground. And this is that one same storm that we have been tracking all the way back from Greene County. It has dropped multiple tornadoes. It has caused major damage in portions of Chilton County. I mean, excuse me, not Chilton County, Shelby County, um, and back into portions of Bibb County. 
uh, this this tornado has caused major damage in northern Shelby County. So this this has had a history of producing major damage. We have multiple homes that have been destroyed at this point. Uh, so if you are in this warning area, take this very, very seriously. Uh, once again, there's that very clear indication of rotation where you see those bright greens coming in contact with those bright reds. Those show us a uh, very, very fast winds going in different directions. So that kind of tells us where that rotation is going to be. Um, passing south of the city of Ragland right now, and it's going to be moving in the general direction of Reagan Chapel and Boiling Springs, passing likely very close to in between Ragland and Boiling Springs. So Valley Road, once again, if you are in and around that area, the circulation is moving your way pretty soon here, and then eventually we'll be crossing uh, towards Ottery, Boiling Springs, Ohatchee. So Ohatchee, you are uh, in the path of what is likely a tornado that is on the ground here, moving in the general direction of River Road, Valley Road, Reagan Chapel, Ohatchee, Grayton. So zoom us down and we'll get a look at some of these roads just so you guys can get a feel for uh, where exactly this rotation is at this point. We talked about Woods Bend Road and this circulation is likely right over Wood Bend's Ro Woods Bend Road at this point. Um, moving towards Kirksey's Bend. So if you live in and around Kirksey's Bend, if you live on that road or even just near that road, if that road sounds familiar to you, then you need to hang tight, hang in your safe place. It's going to be loud. If you've got your helmet on, you're in your safe place, you're going to be okay. So just hang tight. Uh, we'll stay here with you through this warning. Cherokee Drive, Mockingbird Drive, and we're getting that latest radar scan in, and that's why you're seeing that circulation jump a bit, uh, but likely moving very close to Kirksey's Bend. It's going to be traveling down Valley Road and Cherokee Drive, also Mockingbird Drive here in the coming minutes. Uh, moving in the general direction once again of Ohatchee. So if you can hear me and you're in Ohatchee and you're not in that safe place yet, now is the time that you need to head to that safe place. Uh, Boiling Springs, this is moving very close to you. This is likely going to pass just to uh, the east here of Raglan. But Raglan, I want you to still stay in that safe place, but the center of circulation likely going to be crossing uh, County Highway 26, State Route 144, just to the east of you moving very close to Valley Road, Lock 3 Road, and then eventually moving on towards Ottery. So I do want to zoom you out if you are just tuning in and we'll kind of give you an idea of who is in this polygon, who is not in this polygon. Uh, if you live in Asheville, you are not included in this polygon. If you live in the city of Ohatchee, you are in this polygon. Morrisville, Melrose, Post Oak, Sulphur Springs, Weaver, you are included in this polygon. Um, Let me pick it up real quick, if you don't mind, yeah. uh, Taylor. Uh, again, thank you. It's uh, uh, 232, and I just wanted to kind of brief everybody. We've got some really major damage and some entrapment and with some injuries. And as soon as uh, we get more facts from the news department, we'll pass that on. But I wanted to mention the reason we're here, we've got to focus on these storms that are life-threatening. We'll go back and, and do the coverage as soon as we can. But if we can pop me back in the uh, key roll real quick, uh, uh, Dennis or whoever's back there, please. Thank you. All right, so it's uh, 233, and uh, let's kind of focus on what we've got. Very dangerous storm now is passing just south of Raglan. It's about to cross over Highway 77 right here. This Alabama Highway 77, that's Alabama Highway 144. Jax sits right there. It's coming right up on Ohatchee. The uh, Ohatchee High School, uh, elementary school complex sits about right here. Uh, and again, uh, this is a very, very dangerous storm. This is a long track supercell cyclic. It's produced multiple tornadoes along the track, producing major damage in many counties. And it's probably been producing major damage in St. Clair County at this point. We'll know much more about that in a second. But it's uh, across the river now, and it's about to cross over Alabama Highway 77. Uh, this is north of Lincoln. Lincoln is here. Interstate 20 is right down there. And again, that's going to be uh, moving to the northeast. That's most likely going to be crossing over Highway 144 maybe close to the intersection of U.S. Highway 431. Uh, Alexandria sits right here. Uh, the elementary school sits right there at my finger. And uh, everybody in Alexandria and Duke, uh, all these communities along 431 north in northern Calhoun County, you've got to be sheltered right now, is that violent tornado is about to cross over Highway 77. No travel along Highway 77 right now between Southside and Lincoln for about the next 10 minutes. We can give an all clear to US 231. You're clear from this. But again, nobody should be along Highway 77 right now between Southside and Lincoln as this violent tornado is about to cross over. And again, that's going to be crossing over and ultimately affecting uh, the town of Ohatchee uh, and Highway 144. 
you got Sulphur Springs, uh, which is right here. Boiling Springs Road runs right through here. Uh, the Mamre Baptist Church sits right here, and that's coming right up in this general vicinity. So if you're listening to me and you hear the name of your town, please be sheltered. And if you know someone that lives in these places, you call them or text them right now uh, because uh, we have had major, major, major damage and, uh, and injuries with this storm, this same parent storm when it initiated back in, in Greene County. And again, this is the only tornado warning in the entire state right now. So again, uh, it's coming right up toward uh, the 431 corridor, and obviously nobody should be along Highway 431 from Glencoe down to downtown Anniston. Really, we'll just say Saks. Nobody on 431 from Saks up to Glencoe. Nobody on Highway 77 south side down to Lincoln. The circulation pretty much is right on Highway 77 right now uh, near the intersection of Boiling Springs Road and uh, Highway 77. And that is a violent looking circulation. Let's put the uh, uh, correlation coefficient product on here if we can. Uh, and let's take a look at the debris that's being lofted. And so far we don't see a lot, which is a good sign. But uh, look, it's going to take a couple of volume scans for that debris to be lofted to the radar beam height. So again, and we're not saying there's no tornado there. I think there's firmly a, 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 what could be a violent tornado there. So let's go back to our velocity display. And again, you're going to see that uh, circulation pretty much. Uh, right on top of Highway 77. Again, Ohatchee, Ohatchee High School is right here. Jack's sits right here. Uh, you've got the park by the river, which is uh, right here. Uh, this is Lake Neely Henry. This is the Lake Neely Henry Dam, the hydroelectric dam that's operated by uh, Alabama Power Company. And uh, again, that is just a really violent looking circulation. The same kind of thing that came through northern Shelby County that's produced all this uh, damage. And uh, it is still uh, extremely dangerous. So we, we will, again, what I'm going to do is stay with this and we're going to go back and it's very tempting to show all the damage and all of the uh, current situation. But again, as long as we have a life threatening storm, we have to stay with this and we'll stay with it. And as soon as we can get this out of our state into Georgia or it dissipates, hopefully at some point, then we will start bringing in some of the damage reports because there are a lot of them through parts of uh, Green, Hale, Bibb, Shelby, and probably St. Clair counties right now. This has been a long track cyclic supercell thunderstorm. Again, uh, Boiling Springs Road is right here that goes up to Alabama Highway 144, which is right here. Uh, that's Highway 77. The schools, it's right here, Ohatchee High School, elementary school, right here. Tornadic circulation is probably on Highway 77 right now. And as we get farther away from the radar, keep in mind the radar beam is going to be pretty high up, several thousand feet off the ground. Sometimes storms can be tilted because of strong winds aloft, and the circulation might not be at this exact point where you see that couplet. It might be five, six miles in one way or the other, but it's pretty close to that. And obviously the concern is that you've got to be sheltered right now. Can we do a, we'll do a quick storm track and some of the ETAs on this, uh, uh, Taylor? We sure can. Is, uh, we're at uh, 2.37 right now. I want to report, too, we've had uh, damage reported in uh, Pell City area. So that was not too long ago with the same circulation. Right. Um, and I'm going to pull that here the northeast at about somewhere between 45 and 50 miles per hour. And this will give you those uh, times there. Yeah, so let's look at the wet so far. Yeah, those are the, the first off the times. You can see the approximate arrival times on your screen. You can pick out your community and see if you're uh, your approximate ETA. But again, this does not affect sheltering. You need to be sheltered now if you're in the polygon. Let's take WEXO 5 uh, real quick if we can. Uh, this is going to be uh, what this thing looks like from north of Lincoln, looking back up into it. It's kind of hard to see the tornado from that vantage point, but I think it's probably down. Let's go back to WEXO 5 real quick. Oh, we got uh, a I'm CC so now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's go back to the radar real quick. And uh, uh, yeah. There it is. There's our uh, debris signature of debris that is being lofted uh, right now. Uh, let's go to a WEXO 5 real quick if we can. This is what we've got. Uh, Taylor, this is not good. Uh, mm. This is Eagle Point. These are well-constructed homes. And uh, again, I, I just, I don't know about injuries or anything else at this point. Uh, the, the first responders are trying to figure out what we've got, but that's what it looks like in the path of this tornado. And I just show you that quickly to let you know you got to take this thing seriously, okay? So let's go back to um, the radar. And we're working a tornado that is down on Highway 77. Uh, Again, this is Highway 144. That's the dam, the Lake Neely Henry Dam. Uh, and this is moving northeast. And again, uh, Taylor's got that thing coming right over the school here. High school, elementary schools, it's right here. 
Uh, Boiling Springs Road runs right over here. Uh, so again, everybody in Ohatchee's got to be sheltered, needless to say. Hopefully you've been sheltered for a while. This, we've been able to give some long lead times today. But if you know somebody that lives in any of these places we're talking about, please get in touch with them. And remember, you can't be in a mobile home. You've got to be in a shelter or some type of business, a site-built structure. You can't stay in a mobile home. So uh, once again, uh, debris being lofted by a violent tornado uh, that's along Highway 77. It's just crossed the Coosa River. This is the Coosa right here. Again, that's the dam up here. This is Lake Neely Henry. This is Logan Martin down here. Uh, debris being lofted coming right up toward uh, uh, Highway 144. And again, next in line is going to be US 431, which is this uh, highway right here, Alexandria here. I'd say most likely the tornado is going to be passing north of Alexandria. Uh, again, this is uh, Wellington Road right here. This is the Angel Community. Uh, Pleasant Valley School is out here. Uh, if you're in any of these places, once again, you've got to be sheltered. Um, and again, I know that um, uh, this is not particularly, you know, the most enthralling thing is showing you this stuff because there's so much damage, but I've got to do this. Y'all just please bear with us as we've got a violent uh, tornado that's most likely down at Ohatchee in Calhoun County. This is in the western part of Calhoun County, and please understand that if you are in Anniston or Oxford, this will not affect you. This is passing well to the north of you, okay? So we've got a uh, tornado that's about to cross through uh, Highway 144 near the uh, school uh, complex in Ohatchee. Uh, and from there, it's going to keep on moving northeast up toward 431. The better chance of the passage along 431 is going to be north of Alexandria, south of Glencoe. Glencoe is up in Calhoun County, so again, nobody should be traveling along US 431 between Glencoe and Sachs. So I'll just make that whole stretch uh, here. And then once it crosses Highway 431, it's going to cross over Highway 21, and that thing might be coming pretty close to uh, Piedmont. Um, and there are some other storms that are, that are showing broad rotation right now that might require a warning. At this point, we only have this one storm with the tornado warning, uh, and this is the uh, storm that is in Calhoun County, and that's the reason we're focusing on this. Uh, but again, uh, let's expand this out a little more. Let me kind of show Jacksonville and Piedmont relation to this. Uh, so again, Jacksonville is here. Piedmont is right there. Piedmont here, Jacksonville here. Uh, tornado is moving like that. And uh, obviously the next concern, it's going to be uh, the Angel community and again the area right around Pleasant uh, Valley School in Calhoun County. If you live in that area or anywhere close to that area, be sheltered. Jacksonville, you should be sheltered. Everybody in the Polygon has got to be sheltered here. That's why we say respect the Polygon. Uh, but again, that's going to be passing probably a little north of Jacksonville, coming up in the general direction of Piedmont, which is right here. Uh, Roy Webb Road runs here, back over to Highway 278, which is up here. Uh, if you're along Wa Roy Webb Road, you should be sheltered. But again, Anniston is down here. You're not in the Polygon. Oxford, not in the Polygon. This is for the northern part of Calhoun County. Uh, that tornado is right on top of Ohatchee right now. Uh, it's uh, not a good look right there. That's a very dangerous storm uh, that is likely producing uh, very significant damage. Um, Okay, we're getting some good news in my ear. Jacksonville State is on spring break, which is, you know, the case when they had the big tornado three years ago. They were on spring break. So uh, Jacksonville State is on, uh, is on spring break. Um, let's see here. Again, trying to bounce from source to source. Uh, the, th this is a day where there's so much information coming in in terms of damage. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to process everything. Uh, Let's take a look at uh, one image off WEX05 if we can quickly. I just wanted to show this is, again, north of Lincoln looking back into that storm. Uh, that's the wall cloud. There's probably a tornado down. You can't see it because of the hills and trees in through there. But, uh, again, that's what that thing is looking like. So let's go back to the radar. 243, I'm James Spann with Taylor Serralo. It's been a very rough uh, day today. We have had uh, multiple... Uh, problems here with this storm. Major damage, major damage in multiple counties. This is a long track supercell that's cyclic. Uh, the tornado has been down, it lifts, it goes back down again, but it's the same parent storm. And now we've got uh, a tornado down at Ohatchee. This is in western Calhoun County. Raglan, all of St. Clair County will give you an all clear. St. Clair County, all clear from this tornado. Uh, it is now sitting on top of Ohatchee. It's moving northeast. It'll be crossing Highway uh, 431 north of Alexandria, uh, most likely. But again, if you're in Alexandria, same thing. You've got to be in your safe place. Be sheltered until we give you an all clear. 
but nobody should be traveling along, needless to say, Alabama Highway 144 right here. Uh, 144 goes from Ohatchee back over to uh, Highway 431. Uh, nobody should be traveling along US 431 from Glencoe down to Sachs uh, because we've got what could be a major tornado about to cross that highway. And the last possible place you want to be is a vehicle. Uh, the tornado warning for Calhoun County will run until 3.30 this afternoon. It's currently uh, 2.44. And again, this is the only tornado warning in the state at this point. Uh, so this is 431. The next highway is Alabama Highway 21, which is right here. Uh, and again, uh, this will be crossing over Highway 431, then Highway 21, and then moving ultimately into either in Southern Cherokee or Northern Cleburne counties. And we'll see how this thing, if it maintains its life, and it probably will. This is a long-lived supercell. Yes, ma'am. James, I want to point out we do have a new tornado warning now that does include portions of Tuscaloosa, Walker, and uh, Fayette County. This is going to be a northern Tuscaloosa County that does not include the uh, city of Tuscaloosa. Okay, let's take a look at that one. So again, uh, it is, uh, we, we've got now two tornado warning polygons. This is the second one. This is going to include Jasper. Yeah, th this is the uh, tornadic circulation of concern. This is in the far, far, far northern part of Tuscaloosa County. Uh, this is going to be about five miles south of the town of Barry. Barry is in Fayette County, so a tornado warning in effect for parts of extreme eastern Fayette County. This does not include the city of Fayette. Uh, Bowley Springs is right here. Bowley Springs got hit by a horrible tornado uh, April 27, 2011. And uh, this tornado is going to be moving northeast, clipping this southeastern corner, corner of Fayette County. So again, uh, people around Bowley Springs. This is Highway 69. Do we have the Wyndham Springs camera up? Just tried it. We do not. Okay, it's down. Uh, so we don't have that uh, camera. We'd have a great look at that otherwise, but that's okay. Again, we just you learn in these tornadic situations, things go down. That's when stuff happens like that. But again, a tornado is coming up into Walker County from its current location. Some of the communities in the, in the Polygon in Walker County would include Parrish, Good Springs, Pumpkin Center, Oakman, Jasper, uh, Cordova, Dora, Summerton, Sipsey, uh, Boldo. Uh, these are all communities in Walker County in the path of this circulation. So again, we have a tornadic circulation now that is in far north Tuscaloosa County, far, far north of the city of Tuscaloosa. This does not include the city of Tuscaloosa, the city of Northport, or the University of Alabama. This is about 28 miles north of there, and that'll be clipping the southeastern corner of Fayette County around Bowley Springs. If you're in Bowley Springs, you've got to be sheltered right now. You know the routine. No mobile homes, no cars, small room, lowest floor near the center away from windows. And uh, the same thing up here in Walker County, you got Oakman uh, and Parrish, uh, and then ultimately Jasper and Cordova, of course, which is right here. That's Interstate 22. We want nobody on Interstate 22 right now in Walker County. We'll just say between uh, West Jefferson and Carbon Hill. Nobody should be on Interstate 22 between West Jefferson and Carbon Hill. Uh, you need to pull off at a gas station convenience store and just sit this thing out. Again, it's not worth making that uh, risk. Is this, uh, you got some time here, but not a lot of time. Uh, let's do a quick track on this. We'll go back to the Calhoun County storm. And again, in this case, we're going to be bouncing back between the two different tornadic storms. Uh, this is the one that is in far north Tuscaloosa County. And you can see the approximate arrival times on your screen. Uh, Oakman, for example, in Walker County, a 3 o'clock ETA. It's 2.48. That's 12 minutes. That's a lot, not a lot of time. So uh, if you're in any of these communities uh, up here in Walker County, be sheltered right now for a tornado that is in extreme North Tuscaloosa County. And again, uh, it's going to pass pretty close, maybe just south of Bowley Springs. If you're close to Bowley Springs in Fayette County, you need to be sheltered. Oakman, Parrish, uh, Cordova, uh, many of these places are familiar with tornadoes. You've dealt with them before. You might deal with one again today. Uh, this is kind of in the genesis phase, kind of in the beginning phase. We'll see how this thing either ramps up or ramps down. So tornado warning in effect for parts of Walker, extreme southeastern Fayette, extreme northern. Tuscaloosa counties and uh, let's go back to our Calhoun County storm. We're going to be bouncing back and forth between these today. Uh, so again, uh, we, we watch Tuscaloosa County carefully. The Fayette Walker County warning. This is the uh, tornadic supercell that's coming up on 431. It's basically on 431 right now. It, the, the, the circulation on radar might be a little west of there, but that circulation pretty much is on the highway right now. 431 may be about uh, oh, five miles north of Alexandria. Uh, if you're in the community of Duke, and again, uh, everybody out here in the community of Angel and uh, uh, Pleasant Valley School, if you're close to any of the landmarks I'm calling out, you need to be sheltered. And again, please do us a favor today. If you know of anyone in any of these communities that we're calling out, 
we want you to help us and you call them or you text them because for a lot of folks they, they go home and they're not watching the weather and it's urgent that they are sheltered. Uh, Wellington, Duke, uh, Angel, uh, any of these communities uh, out here on uh, Highway 431, it's, it's urgent that uh, you are uh, sheltered from this storm that has produced extensive damage uh, in, parts of, uh, in parts of northern Shelby County. Uh, it has been a really, really uh, rough day uh, with the, uh, uh, the damage we've seen so far. And I'm afraid the day is still young. That's the problem. We've got a long way to go here. Uh, it's coming up on uh, 250. Uh, I'm James Spann with Taylor Serralo back in the Weather Center. Uh, and it's been quite a day so far, and we've got a long way to go here. But this, we've got two tornado warnings that we're working. We've got the one that you see here, uh, possible tornado. In fact, it looks like we have a confirmed tornado based on that TDS coming up on Highway uh, 431, uh, which is located north of Alexandria by about maybe five miles. Uh, and then we've also got the other one in Tuscaloosa County. Let's go back to our northern Tuscaloosa County storm. And we're going to bounce back and forth between these two storms today. Um, and uh, we are certainly just wanting everybody to stay safe. That's the uh, main goal of this. So here we go. This is the uh, northern Tuscaloosa County circulation right here. Does not affect the city of Tuscaloosa. Not at all. Going to be coming up through southeastern Fayette County, not too far from Bowley Springs, and then coming up into Walker County. If you're in Oakman, Parrish, Cordova, Dora, Summerton, Sipsey, Jasper, you got to be sheltered as this uh, circulation is coming right up into the extreme southeastern corner of Fayette County, uh, again near Bowley Springs, and then curving up into Walker County. So anybody in these places up here, you've got to be sheltered right now. Uh, so far, we've heard of no damage from this, but again, this is just a developing storm. We'll see how this thing handle, uh, behaves. Does it ramp up? Does it ramp down? We'll find out. The other ones today have mostly ramped up, unfortunately. So let's go back to Calhoun County, and uh, we've got uh, two tornado warning polygons. Uh, one on each side of the state. So we'll go to number two, and that's uh, GWX. We'll go back to BMX, and again, you can clearly see that circulation, which is uh, located uh, uh, right here. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty tough. I'm almost tough. seeing two TDS signatures Sure looks with like this. it, yeah. But again, that's uh, Alabama Highway 204, I should mention. 204 runs from 431 down through the community of Angel back over to uh, Jacksonville. So if you're on, uh, obviously nobody should be traveling on US 431. Nobody should be along Alabama Highway 204. Uh, if you're near Pleasant Valley School, if you're near the town of Jacksonville, you've got to be sheltered. And again, possibly two tornadoes involved here with two uh, TDS tornado debris signatures here. So uh, we'll see one way or the other. It's a dangerous storm. So this is northern Calhoun County. This does not affect Anniston or Oxford. This is for the northern part of the county. And that dominant circulation, that main TDS is coming right over Highway 431 right now. Uh, in the community near uh, Wellington, Duke, and again moving over toward the community of Angel along Highway 204. So be sheltered from that. Uh, this is a storm that might ultimately affect uh, Piedmont. Jacksonville's here, and again, you're in the polygon. You should be sheltered. Uh, again, we're calling out some really specific places, but the key message here, if you're in that flashing red polygon, I don't care where you are, you've got to be sheltered. I might call out some specific locations in the path of this thing, and yes, this might be passing north of Jacksonville, but understand, sometimes they've taken a little right turn. They veered a little bit to the right of the mean flow today, so just understand, if you're in the polygon, you've got to be sheltered. And again, that could ultimately affect the town of Piedmont, which is located right up in through here. So this is the uh, very dangerous storm in Calhoun County that is north of Alexandria crossing Highway uh, 431 right now. Let's go back to the western side of the state. And again, uh, on the western side of the state, we've got the, uh, the tornadic thunderstorm that is in the process of uh, moving out of northern Tuscaloosa County through extreme southeastern Fayette County. In fact, the circulation is in southeastern Fayette County near Bowley Springs. So really, I think we give an all clear for Tuscaloosa County at this point. Uh, that uh, tornadic circulation, again, is near Bowley Springs in Fayette County, crossing over into Walker County. And again, you've got uh, some of the larger communities would be Oakman, Parrish, Cordova, uh, Dora, Summerton, and Jasper, and Sipsey. Uh, and a lot of these communities have been familiar with tornadoes for a long time. And wh where's this camera from exactly? Okay, so this is from Brian Peters and Evan Chikvera, two of our meteorologists, and they are going to intercept this storm. Uh, Taylor is drawing their location. They're right here. And again, uh, for those that don't know, Brian, of course, has been with us for 
almost 20 years, I think now, but Brian for many years was the warning coordination meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Birmingham. And he's probably trained at least 15,000 storm spotters in his day, and these guys know how to stay safe. Safety is very important to us, but we'll do our best to be uh, intercepting this storm as it crosses Interstate 22. And again, uh, that circulation is going to be coming up through Walker County, right up in the direction of I-22, which runs uh, right through here. That's Interstate 22. Cordova sits right here. So again, uh, uh, Oakland, Parrish, Cordova, Dora, Summerton, Sipsy, Jasper. Everybody here needs to be sheltered. Let's go back to the other storm. We're going to leave that Walker County video going, but we're going to bounce back between the two storms working radar today. Uh, and I do, I'm very cognizant we have had major damage and major I issues. And I promise we'll show the damage and show some of these videos when I can. But we have to focus on these life-threatening storms. We, we can't get off of this. We have to stay with it. So again, a very dangerous storm that's coming right up on Highway 204 right here. It's crossed over US 431. And again, this is the community of Angel Pleasant Valley Schools. It's right here. Uh, so again, if you are close to the school complex there near in the Angel community, please be sheltered. And obviously that's probably going to come across the northern part of Jacksonville. The polygon's been adjusted now and you can see Jacksonville is sitting on the southern edge of the polygon. Most likely the tornado here is going to be crossing Highway 21, a little north of Jacksonville. But still, if you're in Jacksonville, I'd be sheltered. The good news, the, uh, the college is on spring break uh, this week, uh, which is great news. But again, uh, this is going to be coming right up here toward Alabama Highway 21. It's about to cross over Alabama Highway 204. That's the main route that people cut here from 431 back over to Jacksonville. And again, you can clearly see debris being lofted. Uh, so again, uh, in the other box, understand that is Brian Peters and Evan Chickvera. Those are our two meteorologists that are on the storm in Walker County. There's a tornado warning in effect there. Uh, we're showing you on radar a tornado debris signature, a TDS that is coming up uh, near Pleasant Valley School and then ultimately out here across Highway 21 north of Jacksonville. Uh, we don't want anybody driving on Alabama Highway 204, which is this road right here. Nobody along Alabama Highway 21 between Jacksonville and Piedmont uh, for about the next 30 minutes until we give you an all clear. We can now give an all clear to uh, U.S. Highway 431. Uh, we can all clear U.S. 4, 431 from Glencoe down to Alexandria. That segment, this tornado is passed over 431 and next up is going to be coming up on Highway 21. So again, Angel, Pleasant Valley School, anybody north of Jacksonville, uh, nobody traveling on Highway 21, nobody traveling on Roy Webb Road, nobody traveling on Alabama Highway 204. That's our Calhoun County storm. Let's go back to our storm that is coming up into Walker County right now. And again, uh, we've got uh, Evan and Brian on Interstate 22 that is uh, on that storm, as you can see. Um, and uh, again, this is a possible tornadic circulation. Uh, that is in the process of moving out of extreme southeastern Fayette County. Again, Bowley Springs is here. And this is not, it doesn't show, you know, Taylor, this doesn't look as good as some of the other signatures we've seen, but we know these things are cyclic today. Yes, absolutely. So just because right now maybe it's a little bit more broad, that doesn't mean five minutes from now it's not going to tighten right back up. Uh, so that means everybody that is in Walker County needs to stay sheltered in that safe place. Uh, if I'm going to go ahead and circle where the most likely area of rotation is, it's going to be right here. And what I'm going to do also is flip between some of our different radar sites. So I'm going to flip between the uh, GWX and see if we can find a better indication here of rotation. Hard to pick out, uh, but doesn't mean that we won't see this circulation tighten right back up. And you can actually see where Evan and Brian are right now. They've, uh, they're on their way to Corinth and Cordova here. Uh, I'm going to circle where their location is. So they're going to get a pretty good view here of uh, this storm as it continues moving their direction in the next few minutes. I'm going to check on uh, some different um, products here. And it does look like uh, at this point, the circulation is fairly broad. Uh, but make sure you're in that safe place if you are included in this warning polygon, uh, which does include the city of Jasper, Corinth, Cordova, Parrish, Oakman, Good Springs, Dora, Sipsy, Boldo. I do want to take us back to uh, the other storm we've been tracking because there is a new tornado warning that has been issued uh, that lasts until 4 p.m. for Cherokee and Etowah counties for this circulation that we've been tracking all the way from Greene County. Um, so, of course, the National Weather Service has extended this warning into portions of uh, Etowah County 
and also into Cherokee County. I want to point out in Etowah County this warning does not include the city of Gadsden or the city of Hoax Bluff. This includes the city of Reeves. Uh, it does not include the city of Ball Play here, uh, but it's going to be really just clipping Etowah County near Reeves along 74 and then headed into Cherokee County. In Cherokee County, this does not include the city of Center, but it does include uh, Sanford Springs, Ellisville, uh, Alexis, and Forney here. Uh, so we're going to track this circulation. I will do a storm track on this moving to the northeast at, let me check the uh, chat here. It's moving to the northeast at 45 miles per hour. So I'll pull a storm track here and we can get a uh, estimate on some of the locations. And once again, this is going to be an approximate estimation of when it arrives with the circulation in your area. But if you are in that new warning polygon, you need to be getting to that safe place uh, right now. So here's that center of circulation, very clear near Crystal Springs and Angel. Uh, it's gonna be moving towards Couch at 308, Piedmont Springs at 312, Ball Flat at 315, and uh, once again, Piedmont at 316. So this is moving in the general direction of Cherokee County as it moves out of Calhoun County. It could uh, clip the corner here of Etowah County. Once again, this does not include the city of uh, Gadsden. It does not include Hoax Bluff, but it will include the city of Reeves. Um, moving towards Frog Mountain in Cherokee County and also uh, the city of Ball Flat, Pine Grove, Bomar, and uh, it's going to be moving into Cherokee County here pretty soon. I want to point out this, this, this storm has, uh, has had multiple instances where it drops tornadoes and it, every indication at this point is that this tornado is still very strong. Looking at the correlation coefficient there to give us an idea of any uh, tornado debris signature, it looks like we're still picking up on a tornado debris signature at this point. It's not quite as defined as what we've seen during this storm's history, but uh, this has been a cyclic long track supercell tornado thunderstorm that has moved all the way from Greene County, moved into portions of Shelby County, moved through St. Clair County. Now it's in Calhoun County on its way towards Cherokee County here pretty soon. So it has moved uh, very close to the city of Angel and it's going to move towards Roy Webb here pretty soon. I'm going to put back on the storm relative velocity because we're getting a really good indication of where that uh, circulation is based on the storm relative velocity here. I'm going to name off some of these roads. So it's going to be moving up on Mark Green Road here pretty soon. So if you live in around Mark Green Road, and I should point out, as James has been mentioning, if you know anybody uh, that lives in the southern half of Cherokee County, give them a call. Let them know they're in a tornado warning. Uh, that's going to be south of the city of Cedar Bluff and south of the city of Center. Uh, so if you know anybody in Cherokee County, now is the time to give them a heads up, give them a call or shoot them a text. Uh, if you know anybody that lives in the city of Reeves in extreme uh, eastern Etowah County, go ahead and give them a call as well. So I want to circle here all indications pointing that this that this uh, circulation is still maintaining its strength as it moves towards uh, Roy Webb here. And it, it's moving near 21, but uh, on its current trajectory will not cross over 21. And it does look like if it stays on this current trajectory here uh, towards Knighton's Crossroads, it should stay to the northwest of Piedmont. But Piedmont, remember, you are still in that uh, tornado polygon. So we want you to stay sheltered. But if this circulation here continues on its current trajectory, it does look like it's going to cross over into Cherokee County uh, and should miss the uh, the community of Piedmont, but stay in that safe place. I don't want that to be an all clear for you. This is not an all clear. You're still in that tornado warning. Uh, this is going to be moving near the community of Couch. Uh, Dripping, Dripping Rock Road, if you live on Dripping Rock Road, this is headed your way. Roy Webb Road. Uh, it's going to be moving pretty close to Roy Webb Road here where it uh, meets with uh, Kimberly Road, if you live on Kimberly Road, and then crossing over eventually into uh, Southern Cherokee County near Estes Crossroads near Ball Flat. And then if you live along 74 in Etowah County from the, near the city of Reeves, you should be in that safe place as well. And I do want to go back and let's take one more look too at that uh, Tuscaloosa, or rather it's not in Tuscaloosa anymore. They've dropped Tuscaloosa County from that, that warning. Oh, it looks like that whole warning has been dropped altogether. So the warning that did include portions of Walker 
in Fayette County looks at this point like that warning has been dropped and I also look like I have uh, dropped my chat room there. Okay, uh, we'll work on that in a second. Yeah, I think NWS chat is down again. Okay. Um, which is just not good. Um, so again, uh, if you're just joining us here, it is uh, 3.04. I'm James Spann. It's been a really rough day here. Uh, we've had uh, multiple tornadoes and obviously the concern right now it's it's what's happening over here in the eastern side of the state there is a tornado warning for northwest alabama but that's up in the huntsville television market and again as taylor has pointed out that warning for walker county has been canceled right now so again the tornado warning in effect for walker county has been canceled uh, at this point so the only warning we have it's for this violent storm in east alabama right here and again, we'll go in a little bit closer and take a look at this thing. It's passing north of Jacksonville. Um, and again, it's, it's come right out through the area near Pleasant Valley School. That's about to cross over Roy Webb Road. And from there, it's going to be coming up toward Piedmont, the town of Piedmont, since right here. Uh, this is Piedmont. Uh, more than likely, that's going to be passing a little north of, uh, of Piedmont. And coming north out of Piedmont, you've got Alabama Highway 9, which is right here. This is the main north-south uh, highway. Uh, and again, that's going to be crossing over Highway 9, uh, maybe pretty close to the Goshen United Methodist Church. Everybody's familiar with that story, what happened there in 1994. Uh, so again, uh, this is uh, what could be a violent tornado that is down right now. We, we've had reports of major damage in Ohatchee, uh, and we have had uh, reports of some injuries with this tornado uh, in other parts of Calhoun County. And again, I don't know the extent of those injuries uh, at this point. But yes, the, the tornado, again, want to stress the tornado warning canceled for Fayette and Walker County. So we've down to one storm with a tornado in the state, and it's this one. Uh, this is a possible strong, violent tornado that is about to cross Roy Webb Road. This is Knighton's Crossroads uh, on U.S. Highway 278. And uh, there's your tornado. It'll be coming out across Roy Webb Road, then crossing Highway 278, then crossing Alabama Highway 9. So. Uh, the main call to action here, everybody in Piedmont, you've got to be in a safe place. Piedmont, you stay sheltered. We want everybody in southern Cherokee County to stay sheltered. This includes at Goshen and Spring Garden, uh, as this will be crossing out of northern Calhoun back into parts of southern Cherokee counties. So again, nobody on U.S. Highway 278 between the Etowah County line and Piedmont. Uh, that would be, uh, really, I could almost say back over, to, let's just say Hoax Bluff. That's easier. Hoax Bluff to Piedmont. Nobody should be on Highway 278. Nobody should be on Alabama Highway 9 from Piedmont all the way up to the lake, to Weiss Lake. Uh, everybody stay off Highway 9. Uh, we can uh, give now Jacksonville an all clear. If you're in Jacksonville, this is clearly passing north of you. There is no danger to the city of Jacksonville. Uh, this is passing a bit 10 miles north of the city. And again, uh, it's crossing over Roy Webb Road. Next up, it'll be crossing Highway 278 near or just east of Knighton's Crossroads, then crossing Highway 9 just north of Piedmont. And again, if this thing takes a little jog to the right, this might go right on top of Piedmont. These have been making some adjustment, adjustments in their track today. So again, Piedmont is right here. What could be a violent tornado is right here. So clearly, everybody in the town of Piedmont, you've got to stay sheltered. Hopefully, you've been sheltered for a while. I know you've been there for a long time. But again, this is the time you've got to be sheltered. And if you know anybody in Piedmont all the way up Highway 9 to Goshen, you've got to be in a shelter. Call them, text them, help us out with this. Uh, over to Spring Garden in southern Cherokee County. Any of these places we've called out, uh, please be uh, sheltered uh, as uh, this is a very dangerous uh, thunderstorm here. Um, and again, there are other tornado warnings in effect up around the shoals up in the northwestern corner of the state. But uh, just be aware that... Uh, um, uh, this is the only one in our part of the state at this point right now. Um, got a report from Lauren Walsh just passing along some damage reports very quickly while you look at this uh, tornado behind me on the radar. Uh, the, from the Helena Fire Chief, 16 homes damaged, ranging from minor to significant. Trees and power lines and no injuries. That's the greatest word we can give you from Helena. Uh, no reports of any injuries. Uh, they have done a preliminary, a primary search in the process of a secondary search right now. That is from the uh, tornado that came through uh, earlier. Um, and again, uh, uh, it's, just, it's been a rough ride here today. Uh, again, we, we, I, I want to stay kind of focused on what we've got going on here. I, I don't want to get, uh, there's so many video 
images and so many still images coming in of this damage. We're going to get to that as soon as we can. But the people that live in Piedmont and Cherokee County, they're just as important. And we've got to stay on these tornadoes. Uh, so again, we've got uh, what could be a violent tornado that's about to cross Highway 278 uh, near Knighton's Crossroads. And uh, I should mention that a pretty rough tornado came through Knighton's Crossroads April 27, 2011. Uh, it was a pretty rough ride for them, and this could be a pretty rough ride uh, as well with this particular tornado. Uh, a, a teenager, Angel Stillwell, she lost her life in that horrible tornado. Uh, horrible story. Uh, Knighton's Crossroads. I mean, this one is going to be cutting right across Highway 278 near or just east of there and then moving up into southern Cherokee County. Probably, again, Piedmont is right here where my fist is located. That's Highway 9 going up toward Goshen and, and Weiss Lake. Uh, but this thing's going to be close to Piedmont, maybe just north of Piedmont. So everybody's still got to be sheltered uh, in northern Calhoun County and in southern Cherokee County. This is a, a, a very significant tornado, most likely, and this has had a long, long, long history uh, producing uh, major damage here. We, there's People are getting some push alerts about a tornado warning in Hoover area, Birmingham area. There are no other warnings on the board for our area except for this warning that we're talking about on TV right now. Right. That's old information. That, that was from, it's the same storm, but that was uh, a long time earlier this afternoon. Uh, we do know from Stephen Quinn that multiple people are being transported with injuries from homes in Eagle Point. Uh, the extent of the injuries, we just don't know. Uh, and um, multiple agencies are on the scene in Eagle Point. A command center is being established at the uh, clubhouse in the Eagle Point uh, subdivision. Uh, we do know that they've had to pull people that were trapped in their homes. Uh, uh, but again, the extent of the injuries over there, we just don't know. But it's, it's, this is going to be an upper end tornado. And again, I, I'm telling you this so to let you know that you've got to take this thing seriously here. This is what could be a violent tornado that's near Knighton's Crossroads on U.S. Highway 278. That's just a little to the west of the town of Piedmont. Piedmont sits right there. That's Piedmont, violent tornado moving northeast. That'll be crossing Highway 278 right here in a matter of minutes, then crossing Highway 9 in southern Cherokee County, and then ultimately moving on out into the eastern part of Cherokee County. This is the community of Rock Run right here. Spring Garden is over here. And if you're in any of these places we've called out again today, the, the ask is that you help us by calling people that might be in the, uh, in the path of these tornadoes that don't know, that aren't watching television, that don't know uh, the current situation here. So again, uh, this is the one warning we have. The other warning that was issued earlier for Walker in parts of southeastern Fayette, extreme northern Tuscaloosa, that was canceled as uh, that has uh, weakened uh, a good bit. And we have other storms in Mississippi that are going to be moving up into Alabama. And we do note there's a tornado warning for Sumter County. This is in West Alabama. This is in the Meridian Mississippi television market, so we're going to stay with this, but I'm just passing this on for information. Uh, these tornadoes are going to be coming up toward Greene and Tuscaloosa counties if they stay on that same track, or maybe parts of Sumter County or, or Pickens County, I'm sorry. So again, uh, for informational purposes, we have a tornado warning in effect for parts of Sumter County until 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, a thunderstorm is going to be crossing the state line soon, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. And again, we'll take a look at that in just a second. But again, in our part of the state, the television market, I know a lot of you are watching on the digital side, the social side. We have to kind of focus on the TV market side, the people that, are, uh, that we have responsibility for. And this is the one storm uh, in our coverage area right here we have to focus on. This is Cherokee County. This is Calhoun County. The town of Piedmont is right here. That's the largest town near this tornado. But it's in the process of crossing Highway 278. It's going to be crossing Highway 9 uh, near or north of Piedmont. And from there, it goes over towards Spring Garden and Rock Run. And from there, it goes over into Georgia. So really quick, Taylor, let's look at a big picture. If we, if we just kind of do a reset here, it's 313. Uh, James Spann with Taylor Serralo. It's been a really, really rough day today with some uh, very violent tornadoes. Uh, again, this is the tornado warning for Northeast Alabama. This is our new warning. And again, I just wanted to show you if this continues on that track, you'll see that it could come up toward uh, the general vicinity of Tuscaloosa. 
Uh, it's coming into the northern part of Sumter County. This is Greene County. This is Hale. So just a heads up, this is crossing the state line right now. And Sumter County is in the Meridian, Mississippi television market. So they're going to handle that. But the minute it crosses the Tom Bigby into Greene, that's when we start to handle that. So just be aware of that on the western side of the state. Tremendous amounts of rain falling in parts of the state, parts of Walker County, Tuscaloosa County. There's a tornado warning up here around the Shoals. But again, that's covered by the Huntsville station. So let's go right back to our storm that is over here on the eastern side of the state. This has been a long track supercell or a long lived supercell cell that's been cyclic. Uh, we've had a number of significant tornadoes that have been down from time to time, uh, producing major damage, and we could very well have one right now. Uh, the possible tornadic circulation has crossed over Highway 278. Let me just say, in this part of the state, that beam height is probably 12,000 feet. It is way off the ground. This is Birmingham or High Top? Uh, this is Birmingham. I'm going to switch here. Yeah, to let's high look top. at High Top real quick. This is a uh, yeah, same type situation here. Again, we're getting both radars showing that violent circulation way off the ground. We don't know exactly what's happening down at ground level, which is why the spotters are so critical. That's why we do spotter training. Uh, but again, we've got that uh, tornadic circulation, we believe, crossing 278 right now. It's crossed over Highway 278 near Knighton's Crossroads. And next, it's going to be crossing over Highway 9. This is Piedmont right here. Tornadic circulation here. And again, that'll be crossing into southern Cherokee County, north of Piedmont, probably up here toward Goshen. So uh, anybody in these communities we've called out, be aware that this is a uh, very dangerous thunderstorm that is capable of producing very significant uh, damage. Uh, very significant damage. And um, again, what I'm going to do, once we get everything calmed down and have a break, I'll show you some of the video and some of the images. And I know... You know, sitting here with radar behind me, it's not the sexiest thing in the world on television in a case like this, but it's the right thing to do. Uh, we've got to take care of the people in the path of these dangerous storms. And there's the new volume scan. And again, that's a very dangerous storm. It's crossing the line here. This is Calhoun County. This is Cherokee County. It's kind of hugging the county line. And again, you, you can clearly see it looks like it's going to be passing north of Piedmont. Again, Piedmont is located right here. Uh, that storm is going to be crossing Highway 9, awfully, awfully close to the Goshen United Methodist Church, these precious people that were affected so heavily so many years ago back in uh, 1994 on, on Palm Sunday. Uh, if we can, uh, let's see, let me kind of do a quick configuration here. Uh, uh, the one thing I do like to show, it's a video of the current storms that were working. So let's take WEXO 5 really quick if we can. Uh, this is a video from the Calhoun County storm. Uh, this was uh, 431. Uh, near Interstate, uh, or I'm sorry, near Alabama Highway 144. You just can't see much. It's going to be a day where it's going to be hard to see these things. Uh, we'll have some videos where I can show you tornadoes, but it's just going to be tough. Most of these things are rain wrapped. We'll go back to the uh, uh, radar behind me. Uh, I should mention that uh, US 431 North is now closed to traffic at the Alabama Highway 144 intersection. Uh, that is uh, not too far from Alexandria, and apparently the tornado crossed right over Highway 431. And that particular tornado right now is on the Cherokee Calhoun County line, and it's about to cross over Highway 9. So nobody, and I mean nobody, should be on Alabama Highway 9 from Weiss Lake, uh, we'll say all the way down to Jacksonville uh, until this, we'll say Piedmont, uh, from Weiss Lake down to Piedmont. Piedmont is here, Weiss Lake is up here, tornado about to cross Highway 9. The last possible place you want to be, it's a car, it's a mobile home. Uh, you've got to get out of those. You can't be driving in the path of a tornado. A car can be tossed around like a toy. A mobile home can go airborne so easily. Uh, people in mobile homes need to be sheltered in a community shelter or just some type of business that's open. Uh, but again, clearly, this is showing strong evidence of uh, a tornado that could be uh, very damaging. This, this has had a history uh, producing major, major uh, damage uh, today uh, in parts of, uh, parts of the state. And again, I should mention, too, that uh, earlier the SPC Taylor uh, uh, expanded the high risk to include more of the state. And again, we don't want you to get hung up in the colors and the risk categories, but just understand it's a really dangerous day. So, Taylor, you take it for a minute. Let me gather up some of these images here real quick. All right. So I am circling there where the most likely indication of that rotation is at this point. Uh, so we are looking at this circulation here near Estes Crossroads. It has just crossed over into southern Cherokee County. Uh, we're expecting this circulation to continue moving northeast, so that's going to put it near Ellisville, Frog Mountain. It's likely going to be crossing over State Route 95 here pretty soon, um, and it's going to continue on this northeastward track. We haven't pulled storm track in a while, so I'll go ahead and I'll do that. Um, I do want to uh, clear this off of here and grab 
the uh, storm track tool. This is going to be moving to the northeast at about 45 miles per hour. And I want to remind you that this is an approximate arrival time. If you're in this polygon and you're in southern Cherokee County, you should already be in that safe place. That's where we want you to be at any point when a tornado warning is issued. Hey, but Taylor, real quick, let me show some images. Uh, okay. This is from Brian Emfinger, and this is what we're dealing with here. Uh, it's pretty rough. This is major damage uh, that is to a church near Ohatchee. Uh, and this is Brian, Brian uh, took this from a drone, and you can see this is what this thing has been doing today. And again, we show this not to scare anybody, but to let you know that a major tornado has been in association with this uh, particular thunderstorm. And again, you can see the church steeple. You can see the damage at this church. Uh, this is severe damage uh, near Ohatchee uh, earlier today and some other structure out here. Uh, I think Brian says this is just southwest of Ohatchee. So Taylor, back to you. Just wanted to show the uh, extreme damage we've had out there. Okay, so we are looking here. Uh, at this, this rotation once again, and I'm going to pull that storm track here. This is in Cherokee County. This is where we're seeing that indication uh, of that rotation at this point. Moving in the general direction of Frog Mountain, I want to pull this storm track here northeast about 45 miles per hour, and that's going to put it uh, near Frog Mountain at 324, near Rock Run at 330, Sandy Springs at 331, and Forney at 334. So if you uh, live in southern Cherokee County, you should be in that safe place already, but this is when we could see that circulation uh, pass close to your area. So stay in that safe place. That's going to be lowest level and interior room, and make sure you've got your shoes on, you've got your helmet on, and then just st stay put. If you're in that safe place with that helmet on, uh, you, you're you going to be okay. Just stay there. I know it's going to be loud out there. It's going to be a, a little scary for a moment, but if you stay put, the circulation uh, will be crossing your way, and then once it moves out, uh, you're going to get a moment of kind of a break there for a second. But looking uh, here, I'm going to try to switch back to the Birmingham radar and see if we can pick up any different uh, this is kind of showing that circulation in a little bit of a different location at this point. Uh, so the problem with both of these radars is we're looking very high up in the storm. So we're looking at rotation very high up uh, and it doesn't necessarily translate directly to the ground. As James has said, these storms can be tilted. So based on the Birmingham radar, uh, this, this circulation here is starting to cross over near McFray Crossroads. Uh, very close to the city of Piedmont, but likely crossing just north of Piedmont. So basically at this point, everybody in southern Cherokee County should be sheltered. That includes the city of Ellisville, Frog Mountain, McFray Crossroads. If you live along uh, Cherokee County 29, if you live along County Road 31, County Road 8, if you live uh, near Adams Crossroads, near Key, you want to stay in that safe place because at this point we don't have a great picture of what exactly is going on at the surface. So we could show you these different these different circulations higher up in the storm, but we can't show you exactly uh, on the ground what what that circulation is doing. Pretty soon here, this is going to be completely out of uh, Calhoun County. So I suspect that. When is this supposed to expire? 3.30. So I suspect that that warning will be dropped here pretty soon uh, for Cherokee County. Um, but we've got this circulation here. This is based off of the Birmingham radar showing up very near uh, McFray Crossroads moving northeast. Uh, it's going to be crossing pretty close to Pleasant Gap. So if you live near Pleasant Gap, uh, we want you to be sheltered. Hang in there. Um, and if this continues on its current trajectory, eventually this will likely cross near uh, 411 as it does cross over into, uh, into Georgia here in the uh, coming, coming minutes. So I'm just checking out. I've gotten back into chat, which is good. Um, so National Weather Service watching a couple different circulations. At this point, this is the only tornado warning for our area, though. Southern Cherokee County uh, and portions of Calhoun County is the only tornado warning in our area. I wanted to kind of give you a reset here if you're just tuning in, but there are other storms off to the west that we're watching. So we're watching this circulation here in Sumter County. There is a tornado warning in Sumter County. If it holds together, it could eventually cross over into Greene County. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that storm because uh, just based on the history of the storms we've seen today, these have been cyclic supercell type uh, thunderstorms that have produce multiple tornadoes. So we're going to watch every storm very carefully. But at this point, uh, the only tornado warning for our area is going to be uh, this southern Cherokee County storm moving out of Calhoun County. So let's zoom down closer here. A very heavy rainfall all across southern Cherokee County. So yes, it's raining really hard. It's likely windy out there. It could be some small hail involved as well. 
But in terms of where that circulation is right now, uh, at least from the Birmingham radar, looking fairly broad, but we're looking very high up in this storm. And more of the same from the, uh, let's try the uh, high top radar here. High top radar, we're getting a much clearer picture. Here we go. Uh, so we're looking at this circulation here. We're getting a more clear picture. But once again, we're looking pretty high up in this storm. But uh, near Frog Mountain, and this is going to continue moving northeastward eventually uh, towards uh, XE, I apologize if I'm saying that community's name wrong, XE. Uh, this is likely going to be very close or just to the south of Ellisville on its way towards Adams Crossroads and then eventually crossing 411. That, that thing's at the Goshen United Methodist Church. I just hate that. I hate that. that they were hit in 1994 uh, and lost their building, and I hope that it's okay this time. I, I was the first guy to deliver a message in that new building so long ago. Uh, but again, uh, uh, Spring Garden, Rock Run, uh, you know the drill. It's going to be in Georgia soon, but again, uh, Southern Cherokee. We, we can clear Calhoun. I want to be sure we point that out to Taylor. I want to clear mm -hmm. Calhoun County. Um, and uh, uh, so if you're in Calhoun County, all clear. That includes Piedmont. Uh, the concern, it is uh, Southern Cherokee uh, for this violent storm. And again, you saw some of the damage that it produced back at Ohatchee. We're, we're getting reports that we, we've got some injuries at Ohatchee. I don't know how many. I don't know the extent, but the, it looks bad. Uh, and this is something you've got to take seriously. So again, we have a violent tornado that is uh, going to be moving through the far eastern part of Cherokee County, crossing over into Georgia uh, in about uh, 10, 12 minutes from now. So uh, once it crosses into Georgia, we'll start to focus on that new tornado warning back in West Alabama in Sumter County. Uh, at this point, we do not have uh, any part of our viewing area in West Alabama under a tornado warning. When a warning is issued for green, we'll start bouncing back and forth between the two. But again, now what could be a violent tornado has crossed over Highway 9. Uh, and uh, again, in about a minute or so, we can give it clear and all clear to Highway 9. And uh, that's coming right over to the community of Rock Run, uh, Run which is right here. Then it's going to be crossing over into Georgia. And uh, it's just done a lot of damage. Uh, it has not been a, a good situation through the entire state. Th this storm, uh, the, the origination of this storm was in Greene County in West Alabama before noon. It was like, what, 11:15 when we started this. It's the same storm. Th when we say long track, this is what we mean. We, it's been cyclic in terms of tornadoes. There have been times where the tornado lifted, but it got right back down. Uh, and, but it's caused a lot of damage and a lot of misery. Uh, and again, uh, this storm is still capable of producing a large violent tornado that's coming near the community of Rock Run in uh, Cherokee County. This is the far eastern part of Cherokee County. And again, everybody in Spring Garden, Rock Run, stay sheltered. This is U.S. 411. This is the main route from center back over into uh, Georgia. Uh, and obviously, uh, this most likely, this stays a little south of Interstate 411, right, or uh, U.S. 411 here. But that'll be moving over into Georgia fairly soon. So again, that is a tornado warning for the far southeastern corner of Cherokee County in the eastern part of uh, Alabama. Uh, that is in effect uh, for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And again, once this thing gets into Georgia, we'll... we'll let our friends in Atlanta worry about that one. So please stay sheltered. Let's go to West Alabama really quick, Taylor. I want to look at the storm that is currently uh, in uh, Sumter County on the western side of the state. And uh, so here we go. This is your new tornado warning. In fact, you can see multiple warnings over here. So we're going to pop on the radar coming out of Birmingham and take a closer look at this. This is Utah. The storm that, that's moving through Cherokee County started here uh, between 11 and noon today. And again, uh, you can see evidence of circulation right here. Uh, and again, that's going to be crossing the Tom Bigby. The Tom Bigby is this river right here that separates Greene and Sumter counties in West Alabama. And then uh, moving over into Greene County. So if you're in Utah, Clinton, Union, uh, anybody over here in Greene County, just be aware that you've got a dangerous storm that will be crossing the Tom Bigby, ultimately moving in here. A warning could be required. So that's the other one we're watching over here on the western side of the state is the uh, tornado warning in effect for Sumter County. Um, so, uh, in fact, we've got John Oldshue up, and uh, he, back in the back, he says he's on Server 2, Channel 8. And uh, if, if we can bring him up real quick, maybe put him in a dump. Uh, this, uh, this is John Oldshue. And... Uh, he is at Epps on the, uh, the Epps exit along Interstate 59, uh, again, right here. All right, so this is Old Shoe's location, and he's 
you know, looking up into this thing. And again, these have been rain wrapped today. These have been very hard to deal with in terms of visibility. Uh, but John might have a chance of seeing this. So I just wanted to show the setup here in West Alabama. Let's go back to our East Alabama storm. We can leave John's camera up and then he's got a view into this thing. We'll leave John's shot up again. This is John Olshu that is uh, currently down in uh, Sumter County at Epps uh, that's on the Tom Bigby. But this is the uh, dangerous storm. This is this long lived supercell that's been cyclic uh, that uh, is capable of still producing a tornado uh, out here near Rock Run, Rock Run and Spring Garden. Uh, in the far eastern part of uh, Cherokee County, and again, that's about to cross the state line into Georgia. But for the next five to ten minutes, if you're in the far southeastern part of Cherokee County, this is way southeast of Center, southeast of Weiss Lake, south of Galesville, Cedar Bluff, all those places. This doesn't affect you. This is the far southeastern part of the state. Again, that's Highway 278 right down through here. This is Highway 411 right here. Uh, a tornado might clip US 411 about the time it hits the uh, Georgia state line here. But uh, any of these communities out here in the far southeastern part of Cherokee County in northeast Alabama, uh, we want you to uh, stay sheltered. Uh, again, we can give an all clear to Highway 9, uh, which is right here from center down to Piedmont. Uh, the tornado is past Highway 9. Uh, the other concern is mainly for US 411 uh, near the Georgia state line up here. But right now the tornado is kind of between US 278, US 411 in the southeastern corner of Cherokee County, Spring Garden, Rock Run, stay sheltered. Uh, and we're going to stay with that for a few more moments. But again, this is an extremely dangerous storm that has caused really, really significant damage uh, along the way. Uh, and they've just uh, trimmed down that warning. Uh, as James was just mentioning, the uh, Highway 9, you are no longer included in that uh, warning polygon. So the National Weather Service is going to be trimming down this polygon as this, this storm, the circulation does continue uh, to move northeastward toward, towards, uh, towards Georgia and it'll be crossing over, eventually ending up, uh, there we go, there's that new tornado warning uh, from uh, FFC or the Atlanta National Weather Service. So it's gonna be heading towards uh, the general direction of Rome, Georgia in Cedartown, Georgia here coming up pretty soon. So that's our one tornado warning we have in our area. I wanna give us a, a zoomed out view of what's going on here because we do have uh, that storm that we are still watching as well for portions of Sumter County that if it holds together, will likely be crossing over into Greene County. Um, elsewhere, we've got a lot of rain and thunder out there, but we're focusing on the two uh, storms that we have that have had tornado warnings associated with them. So we've got that one that's moving through southern Cherokee County and then another uh, tornado warning that we're watching uh, that if it holds together will likely cross over into Greene County, but it has not done so yet. So we're going to keep focusing on that southern Cherokee County storm. Once again, does not include Cedar Bluff or Center. Uh, but you can see uh, these bright colors here indicating very heavy rainfall. I'm sure it's very loud, uh, but looking from the Birmingham radar, you can see uh, that indication of this rotation ongoing. And as we've been saying, this is that same storm that we've been tracking all the way back from Greene County uh, from earlier in the afternoon that has had a history of producing multiple tornadoes. Um, I've been trying to kind of look at different radar products here and see if we can pick up uh, we're not able to pick up a debris signature at this point, but I think this th we're kind of far away from the radar sites at this point anyway uh, to get a clear picture of that. But uh, definitely still showing all indications that there is rotation going on and there could be a tornado still on the ground very close to Rock Run crossing over Cherokee County 45 and it's headed in the general direction of Forney and 411. So you should not be driving in between uh, Bomar and in the Georgia Alabama state line on 411. If you're on 411 at this point um, near the Georgia Alabama state line, you need to be pulling off getting to a, uh, a structure if you can, any kind of structure, a gas station, a store that will let you come in. We don't want you to be in a car at this point uh, because at the, we've got this circulation that's just really held together. It's held together all the way um, for hours at this point on and off. Uh, dropping tornadoes at different times. So we're going to talk about the uh, Cherokee County 45 area. That's where that circulation is located right now. County Road 29 uh, coming up on 411 here pretty soon. So I, I, you got a couple minutes, but you should still be in your safe place at this point. You're still included in that polygon. And then eventually here in a few minutes, this will be crossing over into uh, Georgia. Uh, but I want to give Pleasant Gap an all clear. If you live in Pleasant Gap, you are 
at this point, this, this circulation is to the north I'm, of you. I'm sorry, Taylor. For some reason, our app is sending out a tornado warning for uh, Hoover. Please, there's no tornado warning for the Birmingham Metro. I'm just going to be, make that perfectly clear. Back to you. Okay, yeah. I, I got a notification as well. So, yeah, that's probably from that earlier uh, storm that we had going through. Uh, but at this point, we've got one tornado warning in our area. As I zoom us out, give us that DMA view. Um, lots of thunderstorms elsewhere. So we do have thunder, lightning, heavy rain, some gusty winds in other locations. But of course, our focus today has been on those tornado worn circulations as we're going to focus on those storms that are uh, producing tornadoes. Right now, we've got that one uh, warning out for portions of Cherokee County that it's it's headed towards the Georgia border. So it's going to be crossing over the Georgia border here pretty soon. I will head back down to that Sumter County storm really quickly just to kind of get a check on this because this will be crossing over uh, into Greene County here pretty soon and we will see whether or not this uh, warning is extended to include Greene County. There are indications of rotation uh, moving in the general direction of Gainesville. If this storm holds together, heads up if you're in Greene County, if you live near Mount Hebron, if you live uh, near Clinton, Union, you're not under a tornado warning yet, but just keep focused at this point because a tornado warning could be coming for you here if this circulation does hold together. So we'll keep watching that very carefully. Just trying to give you kind of a heads up if you live in northern Greene County along uh, I-20 and northward, uh, you could have a tornado warning issued here pretty soon. But the one tornado warning that we do have for our area is going to be this Cherokee County storm. So I want to zoom us back down here and see what we're looking at in terms of uh, that storm here. So let's put on that reflectivity and we'll switch over here to the high top radar and that even though we're looking pretty high up in the storm that's still pretty strong indication of rotation there near Adams Crossroad uh, getting very close here to 411 so if you're on 411 you need to be pulling off if you are anywhere near the Georgia Alabama border driving along 411 you need to get out of your car to a structure that means a gas station or any kind of store that'll let they'll let you in just get out of that car make sure you're not driving on that road at this point and then very soon here this circulation here I'm going to circle it will be crossing over into Georgia and then uh, if you live across the border there of course the Atlanta market will be picking up that tornado warning for you and you'll be uh, switching over to that channel to watch this warning as we kind of get back to uh, some of the storms that are impacting um, okay here we go we've got that new Greene County warning so now We've got this one circulation here, but as we were just talking about, we're watching that other storm that's still located in Sumter County, but we now have a new tornado warning that does include Greene County. So we will go down to that storm and we will tell you who's in and who's out of that warning. And it is for locations along and to the north of I-20. So Utah, you are included in this warning polygon. So that means you need to get to your safe place. Mount Hebron, Clinton, um, Allison, you're right on the uh, the border there. Bulogy, you are uh, right on the polygon there. But it does look like if this storm stays on its current trajectory, it's going to stay to the north of you. West Green, you are included in that. Union, Knoxville. Uh, par parts of I-20 are included in that warning polygon as well, but I want to zoom us down because uh, Mount Hebron, this will be moving up on you here pretty soon. I'm going to pull up this velocity here. We're looking from the Birmingham radar. Let me check the Columbus radar and see what we've got. Uh, so here is that circulation we're looking at, and I will pull storm track and give you a approximate arrival time. Uh, worth noting that Lewiston, you are not included in this tornado warning polygon. Rosemont, Forkland, you're not included in this tornado polygon. It's going to be uh, Mount Hebron, Clinton, Utah, and let's pull that storm track. Let me check the motion here, 45. Um, okay, so here we go. I grab that. I'm going to pull this from the center of circulation so it might start raining at your house sooner than this. And if you're in this polygon, you're headed to that safe place now. You're getting your family, you're getting your pets, you're heading to that safe place, which is going to be the lowest level of your home, interior room. You've got your helmet on, you've got your shoes on. And if you're in this warning polygon and you live in a mobile home, you're headed to that shelter, 
you're headed to a friend's house, you're headed somewhere safe like a, uh, a store that will let you in, but you cannot stay in that mobile home. So we're looking at this circulation here, uh, moving very close to the Gainesville area, about to cross over into Green County here in the coming minutes. It's going to be arriving in um, uh, the uh, Mount Hebron area. At 3.50 p.m., the city of West Green at 3.53, Clinton at 3.57, Utah 401. Uh, you're in this polygon, you should be in that safe place, but based on this current trajectory, likely stays north of you, but I, I, I we got to be careful because these have been kind of turning a little bit to the right today. So uh, stay in that safe place. That's where you need to be uh, until this warning is canceled for you. The city of Union, you are included in this polygon. And then much of I-20 through Northern Greene County is included in this warning polygon as well. So uh, indications right now that yes, we do still have that circulation continuing to move from Sumter County into Greene County. So we've kind of gone over who is in that Greene County warning. So if you are in that polygon, get to that safe place. Now I want to give us one more check on this uh, Cherokee County storm here. As I do expect, it's starting to cross over the border now into Georgia, and we can kind of just focus on that Greene County storm then. Yes, at this point, this storm is crossing right now as we speak over the border from, or from Alabama into Georgia. Uh, so let's circle this here. This is where we're seeing that rotation. And this is going to be headed into uh, Floyd County in Georgia here. So still right on the border, but 411. Uh, crossing over 411 right now and then eventually headed into Georgia. Uh, so if you live in Rock Run, we can give you an all clear as this this storm starts to cross over into Georgia. So let's zoom out and give us a DMA view here, or a view of central Alabama. I'm going to switch radar sites back to the Birmingham radar site and thunder in a lot of a lot of places. Worth noting here, we've been talking a lot about northern Greene County. That's where we just had that new tornado warning issued for. But there is another storm here. Uh, to the south of York and Livingston that could eventually impact Southern Greene County. So if you live in Southern Greene County, you're not in a polygon yet, but just be ready in case this storm does hold together and starts to cross over into Southern Greene County. But right now the locations that are included in this Northern Greene County storm are going to be Utah, Union, Mount Hebron, Knoxville, Crawford Fork, Lizzieville. So right now the circulation is crossing very close to Gainesville and it's going to be let me switch radar sites there. Yeah, if we it, I was going to say if we got John Oldshoe's uh, live stream by any chance, uh, if we could maybe double box that. Uh, okay, I think John is uh, um, not close to this storm. Uh, Oldshoe might have lost connectivity out there. Um, Okay, yeah, you know, I was mainly, John is close to this circulation, so uh, if you can pop me back on here real quick, let's kind of do a reset. It's, uh, it's 341. We have a tornado warning in effect now for the northern part of Greene County uh, for this tornado near Gainesville. This is the Tom Bigby River. That is the boundary between Sumter and Greene Counties in West Alabama. And again, this, uh, this is in a very favorable area for more tornado activity. We have uh, very unstable air. We have very strong shear. And again, that's a very dangerous storm. And uh, let me expand this out and kind of explain who's in and who's out for those that are watching us in, uh, in Greene County, uh, because Greene County is in our television market. So let's expand this out a little bit. And again, you can see that uh, this does include Utah. Utah is down here in the southern edge of this. Kind of the town of Bology is a bit south of the polygon. But again, uh, Utah is involved, Clinton, Union. Uh, uh, this is Highway 14 going back up toward uh, Aliceville, uh, Mount Hebron. But the bottom line is anybody in northern Greene County, Northern Greene County need to be in a safe place right now. This does not include Forkland down in the southern part of the county. This is the northern part of the county. And while, we, while we're talking here, let's say, let's remind everybody that, that our Cherokee County storm is over in Georgia. So the storm that was over Cherokee County has moved out of the state. So now we can focus on the one tornado warning we have, and it's this storm that is currently moving out of Sumter into Greene counties. And again, this is a dangerous storm that could produce some significant damage. Now, this is the city of Tuscaloosa right here. Uh, and on this track, uh, most likely this will be maybe clipping the southern part of Tuscaloosa County, maybe northern Hale County again, but it's going to be close to Tuscaloosa, but most likely it's going to pass a little to the south, but it's, we just don't know at this point. Uh, but again, the immediate concern, it is for those people in uh, Greene County. 
Uh, and let me see, do we have our, while we're looking at this, do we have our Shelby County representative on the phone? Uh, okay, I, I'm, we've got so much going on here. Again, it's, it's, we've got so much damage and so many things that have happened, but our emphasis here has to be on storms that are life-threatening. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to stay on the storms a as they approach. And as we can, we'll go and show some of the damage pictures and some of the video. But again, the, the call to action right now is for people in the northern part of Greene County. This includes the city of Utah. You're in the Polygon. Union, Clinton, uh, Jenna, the community of Knoxville, which is right here. Not Knoxville, Tennessee, Knoxville, Alabama, uh, all in the Polygon. So that is the one tornado warning we currently have in effect uh, at this point. Okay, so let's take uh, Old Shoe Stream again. So this is uh, Old Shoe. John is on Interstate uh, 5920, and uh, he's in the process of trying to intercept this uh, particular tornado. And again, we're going to watch this. It's been a really tough day today with tornadoes that are rain-wrapped, that are very poor visibility. It's been very hard to see these things. And just understand it's going to be a situation where you might not be able to see a lot with our cameras and our dash cams and our sky cams. It's just uh, that kind of day today. Um, but while we had a very brief break here, I, I thought I'd sh very quickly, really quickly, let's go. Oh, Taylor, go. We do have a new tornado warning that includes northern Jefferson and Blunt County. Okay. That's going to last until uh, 445, and uh, you can see that circulation here moving very close to Warrior. Okay. So we have a new tornado warning that is in effect. This is going to be for northern Jefferson. And again, you can see that circulation is on Interstate 65 and US 31 near Warrior. That's near the Blunt County line. And this will be moving up into Blunt County. Uh, so this is a very dangerous storm that is near Warrior. This is an extreme North Jefferson County. This has nothing to do with the city of Birmingham. And that circulation is going to be moving up into Blunt County. So we'll do a track on this. And again, you can see some of the approximate arrival times. Uh, of these of the tornado, uh, the community of Nectar at 357, Locust Fork at 357, uh, easily. That's uh, between Aniana and Cleveland at 402. Uh, so if you are in any of these communities, be aware that that's on the way. Let's take the track off. Let me again kind of describe the polygon for those people that are listening. And just so you'll know, a lot of people are listening by radio. We get so many power outages on days like this. We have to be pretty descriptive. So in terms of Blunt County, this includes a pretty good chunk of the county. This includes Aniana. Cleveland. It includes Hayden, Nectar, Locust Fork, Susan Moore, Sneed, and Bluntsville uh, for this tornado that is sitting near the Jefferson Blunt County line. And again, that'll be probably passing near or just south of Hayden. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 160 that goes from the Interstate 65 back up here toward Cleveland. Uh, but if you live, if you have a Hayden mailing address, it could affect you. Hayden's a very populated community right now, and that tornado is moving, uh, it might parallel Alabama Highway 160, Hayden back up to Nectar and Cleveland, and then from there it most likely goes a bit north of Aniana. Aniana is kind of on the edge of the polygon here, but you've got to respect the polygon if you're in this, and again, if you see this, and if you know somebody anywhere in this, I want you to call them or text them and help us out. Let them know that you're in a tornado warning. You need to go to a safe place, kind of help them out on what to do, uh, and be sure that they're watching us because we're going to have a lot more of these dangerous storms. The day is still young. It's 346. We've been here since about 11 o'clock this morning, but we've got a long way to go. So again, a dangerous storm with a possible tornado that's going to be paralleling Alabama Highway 160 near Hayden, near Nectar, coming up toward Cleveland. This is Rosa. Rosa was hit last Wednesday by an EF1 in Blunt County. This is Aniana right here, and that will keep on moving northeast up into the northern part of Blunt County. This is almost out of Jefferson County completely. It's going to be in Jefferson for only just a minute or two more. So in just a second, we can clear Jefferson here, and the concern will be exclusively in Blunt County. And again, that uh, tornadic circulation is going to be riding very close to Alabama Highway 160, Hayden, Nectar, Cleveland, and back up towards Sneed. So that is our Blunt County storm. We have two active warnings now, so we have to bounce back and forth. Let's go back to our tornado warning in Greene County in West Alabama. And again, we've got John Olshue who is looking up into this, and we're going to kind of watch John's camera together. That's a pretty violent looking circulation right there, very violent, and uh, that's going to be crossing Highway 14. And if I had to guess, John is at the intersection of Alabama 14 and Interstate 5920. Uh, and uh, Taylor, you might, okay, he's in Bology, I'm sorry. John is actually in Bology uh, down here at this exit looking north. So he's not at this exit, he's at this exit looking right up into it. 
Uh, so, John, thank you. That, appreciate the clarification. And again, that's the, the base of the storm right there. And again, notice the trees and the hills and the rain wrap stuff. We've been fighting this stuff all day, which is normal down here in the deep south. That's what we do in situations like this. But again, that's your tornadic circulation that is going to be crossing Highway 14 north of Utah. I think it's pretty clear the greatest danger with this is going to be north of the city of Utah. Uh, but again, then crossing out into the northern part of Greene County, not too far from Union, Snotty, Knoxville, Jenna, these communities up here in the northeastern part of the county. But I do think this circulation is going to stay north of Utah, but still, you're in the polygon. If you're in the polygon, you've got to respect it. You've got to stay in your safe place. Uh, and again, all of these storms, all of these storms today mean business. This is serious stuff. And uh, again, uh, uh, we're watching all of our spotter streams here. So you, I sometimes wish people could put themselves in my shoes for one day. The amount of information you're seeing, it's staggering coming in here. It's marvelous we have this technology, but it's almost like an air traffic controller. But we're trying to get a grasp on uh, damage reports and live streams. And uh, again, uh, it, it is a... Uh, can we take John Brown's live stream real quick? I just want to show John. Is, John is out in the field as well, along with John Olshu. Uh, uh, I'm trying to see John's location. Uh, he, he's trying to catch the Blunt County storm. He's on I-65. Uh, John is, is, was doing his best to get up there and catch that storm uh, near uh, Warrior. And again, that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're seeing today. This is not Oklahoma. This is not Kansas. This is not North Texas. It is different. We have HP supercells here, not LP. And uh, again, these guys are doing their best out there today. But we'll go back to these streams in a minute. But let's go back to the radar. Yeah, John is in Warrior right now. And we got uh, John Brown is in Warrior. John Olshu is uh, near Bology. And again, he's trying to get in position to see this one. And again, the, the next highway is Alabama Highway 14 right here. So North Green County, be sheltered. That's a really dangerous storm. Let's go back to Blunt County. You're going to see us bouncing back and forth uh, today. Did you see that last message from Old Shoe? Uh, in Slack? I saw that he was oh, a possible tornado crossing at Bology. Okay. Uh, if we got John's live stream Does he back have up. Eyes on it? Uh, yeah, John is in the top box. And again, uh, John is looking north into this. Again, this is John's position here, looking north into this circulation right here. And uh, John had a possible tornado. And like the rest of us, it's so hard to see these things today. And this is why you're going to have to take our word for it that they're down. These are dangerous by looking at these radar signatures. But again, uh, we're, we're going to leave both of these shots up in Greene County. One live shot is from Utah, one is from Bology. Uh, our crew is in Utah, John Olchew is down in Bology, uh, meteorologist. So let's go back to our Blunt County storm real quick. We're going to leave those Greene County videos up, but I want to bounce back and forth between these two storms that are equal. Uh, so again, this is our Blunt County storm that's very close to Hayden, right there. All right, and uh, Alabama Highway 160 is right here. This thing is riding Highway 160, just riding that highway. And uh, that's going to be coming up toward the community of Nectar and then the community of Cleveland, which is right here. So uh, in terms of the highest probability of having a tornado in Blunt County, it'll be pretty close to Highway 160, Alabama 160 in through here. Uh, and, but again, as far south as Locust Fork, I'd still be sheltered. Most likely this tornado is going to pass north of you, but sometimes they can veer to the right of the mean flow. They can do that. We've had that happen today. Uh, but there's the next volume scan. And again, this possible tornado is coming right up Highway 160 uh, in the vicinity of Nectar and Cleveland. And from there, it's going to probably go a little north of Aniana. Uh, and it looks like this tornado might pass a little farther to the west than the one we had last Wednesday that hit Rosa, which is right here between Cleveland and Aniana on U.S. Highway 231. Easley and Rosa are right here. This is Cleveland. This is Bluntsville. And all these communities are in the polygon. Aniana, Cleveland, Bluntsville, Locust Fork, and Hayden, obviously. You've been in the polygon for a while. But you can see how this thing is just going to be traveling right up Alabama Highway 160. So again, uh, if you are in Blunt County, in any of these places we've talked about, be sheltered. Uh, I really, really, really want you to take these things seriously today. It's just been a rough day. We, we've had injuries. We've had major property damage. We, we have not gone to a lot of our reporters where, where they're on the scene with all of this horrific damage yet because we've got to protect life. That's why we're here. We can get to that when we can and we will. But as long as we have life threatening weather, we have to stay with this and we might have to stay with it for a while. I know there's some cool videos and some amazing things here and some damage pictures and so many things I have to show, but we just have to stick with the most urgent need of the day, which is to warn people in the path of these storms to be in a safe place. And again, the urgent need for Blunt County, everybody 
from Hayden, Nectar, Cleveland, really up to Sneed and Susan Moore. Those are my, that's the main concern for these places right here. Uh, more than likely, this tornado is going to pass north of Aniana, most likely, which is right here. That's the county seat of Blunt County. Uh, but again, the possible tornado near Hayden moving northeast, so much of Blunt County under a tornado warning. And if we can track this one real quick uh, before we go back. Um, this one's moving very quickly. You know, and I, I don't like what I'm seeing coming out of Ohatchee. Uh, th this is the tornado that came through southern, the southern part of the Birmingham metro and uh, ultimately came through places like Ohatchee. The, the Ohatchee damage is really bad. Uh, uh, we do know that there's a lot of entrapment. We do know that there's a lot of injuries in Ohatchee. And um, we'll just kind of uh, leave it at that. But uh, we, we, it's, it's a rough day. It's been a very rough day, and it's just really beginning. So we don't want anybody to let down on their guard. There are more storms to come through the evening hours and into maybe 9, 10 o'clock tonight. So it's going to be a long evening, so please uh, hang in there with us. In fact, Taylor, let me let you take it for just a second while I do a couple of quick report uh, checks here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us back down to that Green County storm. We focused uh, for a while on this Blunt County rotation, so let's go back down to this tornado warning because we are seeing very, very strong indications of what is likely a uh, tornado on the ground in Green County. Let me check the uh, correlation coefficient before I say that. At this point, we're not seeing a TDS, but w just based on the history of the storms we've seen today, this could very well be on the ground here pretty soon. So I want to circle this very strong indication of circulation here, moving in the general direction of the city of Clinton. So this will be moving towards Clinton here pretty soon. Uh, this is riding along Alabama Highway 39. It's going to be crossing over State Route 14 here pretty soon. Um, and then it'll be continuing along SL Spencer Road, eventually ending up close to the city of Union and then Snotty here pretty soon. And as you can see with that latest radar scan, um, all indications pointing to this is a tightening circulation. And we are seeing uh, indications that this rotation is, is strengthening. So uh, I want to pull a storm track on this. And we can kind of give you an idea of the cities that are in the path of the circulation. Remember, if you are in the polygon, you need to be in that safe place. That means you have your helmet on, you've got your shoes on, get your kids and your pets and head to that safe place now. Uh, but this is an approximation of when we could see the circulation move into your community. So we're looking at uh, Clinton pretty much now. So if you're in the city of Clinton, hunker down. I know it's going to be loud. You're going to hear the wind. If you're in your safe place and you've got your uh, let's take back the radar on there. There, there we go. Uh, if we, if you're uh, in your safe place with your helmet on, then you're going to be okay. Just stay in that safe place. Uh, it's going to be moving towards Union here at 4:05, Snotty at 4:11, and notice we're starting to show some Tuscaloosa cities on that storm track. I want to point out that there is not a tornado warning at this at this time um, for Tuscaloosa County, but if this circulation holds together. Uh, a, a warning may be necessary for cities like Ralph and Foster's here coming up in the next few minutes. But at this point, it is northern Green County that is included in this tornado warning. Uh, this circulation right here, very tight circulation moving through the city of Clinton. Uh, it's moving pretty parallel to I-20, but of course, I-20, you're in that polygon. So we do not suggest you driving along I-20. It's going to cross over 14 here pretty soon. So uh, moving towards Clinton at this point, each radar scan, we're seeing that indication uh, that this rotation here is holding its strength, maintaining its strength as it keeps moving northeastward. I'm going to circle it for you here. And this is where we are looking at the strongest winds going in different directions pretty much right over the city of Clinton at this point. Uh, so I'm going to zoom you down and give you some road names. Pool Road, if you live on Pool Road, the circulation is going to be crossing really close to you here pretty soon. Um, Whispering Pines Road near the community of Union, the circulation is headed towards you here pretty soon. Uh, Johnny Allen uh, Memorial Road. County Road 191, County Road 181, SL Spencer Road. So these are all roads that are in the path of this circulation uh, that could be producing a tornado. I do want to check the correlation coefficient, see if we can find a debris signature. At this point, which is good news that we, we aren't seeing debris being lofted at this point, but 
Uh, that doesn't mean that we don't have a tornado down. So treat this as a tornado down just based on the history of all the different uh, storms we've been tracking today. Uh, this, this could very well drop a tornado very close to the Clinton area heading into northern Green County. Let's go back to the Blunt County storm and get a check on that because we do have multiple tornado warnings across our area at this point. And you can see the circulation here is headed in the general direction of Nectar. Uh, so near passing very close to High Rock, riding right along State Highway 160. I'm going to circle that area of rotation right here. And uh, this is going to be headed in the general direction of the community of Cleveland as well. So I'm naming off these cities. You should already be in that safe place anyway because you are included in that warning polygon. And if you do have family or friends that you know that live in Cleveland or Nectar, make sure that they are in their safe place. Send them a text, give them a call, make sure that they know that there is a possible tornado on the way for them. If the circulation holds together, it's going to be headed towards the community of Royal and eventually we'll be crossing over 231 uh, near that city of Cleveland. So really close to where 160 meets 231 here is where we're going to see that that circulation cross over in uh, Blunt County. So what I'm going to do if you're just tuning in, we've got two tornado warnings in our area. So I went up. Oh, we just got another tornado warning now that does include port southern portions of Greene County and portions of Hale County. So I'm going to tell you all of these tornado warnings. We've got one tornado warning here that's impacting portions of Blunt County, another tornado warning here that's impacting northern Greene County. And then for this second circulation down here in Sumter County, we now have a new tornado warning for locations in Greene and Hale counties. So I want to show you who's in and who's out of that new warning. This will include Forkland. This will include the city of Greensboro. Demopolis, you're right on that line, but this includes 43 uh, in southern portions of Greene County. Bulogy, you are right in between both of these tornado warning polygons in Greene County, uh, but this will include Millworld, Greensboro, Melton. Wedgworth, you're right on that line there, but now two different tornado warnings for portions of Greene County, and then much of Hale County here included in a new tornado warning. Akron, you are not included in the tornado warning. Greensboro, you are included in that tornado warning. Uh, so at this point, we have two tornado warnings for Greene County, one for Hale County and one for Blunt County. Let's get a quick check on this circulation here moving uh, from Sumter County near Livingston towards southern Greene County. It's, it's headed very, very close to uh, the city of Forkland here. And I will do a storm track on this, and then we will also go back to that northern Greene County circulation. These are moving pretty quickly. I'm going to pull this northeast at about 60 miles per hour. Um, and this is going to be moving towards Forkland here by 416, Bird Eye at 418. But remember, if you're in that new polygon, if your we alert went off or if you got that notification that there's a tornado need a warning out for you, it's that time to get everybody ready, head, them to head down to your safe place or if you live in a mobile home and you live in and around Forkland, if you live in and around Greensboro, it's time to head to that storm shelter or head to a, a sturdy structure. So at this point, we have three tornado warnings that we are working across our area. Is over. I think so uh, too. So again, uh, let's kind of do a reset here. It's 402. I'm James Spann with Taylor Serralo. Here's the big picture, and we've got the tornado warning for Blunt County. Again, this includes Aniana, this includes Cleveland, this includes Bluntsville, uh, and again, that's Blunt County. We have the tornado warning for Green County. We have the new tornado warning that's in effect for Southern Green and parts of Hale County. So we're going to be working multiple storms today, and we have to bounce back and forth between these things. It has been a rough day. We've had major damage. Uh, and again, I don't want to start calling out places. The damage has been so widespread. I know that Ohatchee has really been hit hard. Uh, we, a lot of people are hurt there, and it's not a good situation. We've had uh, injuries reported in other parts of the state, and, and the day is just beginning. So uh, everybody, please just kind of strap in, pay really close attention, and help us by calling people that are in these polygons to be sure they know about it. So let's go back to Blunt County. We'll start and work our way back to the southwest. So this is our Blunt County storm. Uh, this is a thunderstorm that is capable or maybe is producing a tornado right now. 
Uh, so this is the reflectivity. We're going to go to the velocity display. We'll take a look at the couplet. And again, you can see it approaching Cleveland right now. Uh, this is US 231. Cleveland is right here. And uh, again, that's Cleveland right there. So again, everybody in Cleveland, you need to be sheltered. That'll be passing north of Aniana. Uh, again, Aniana is basically uh, out of the polygon. Clearly, this tornado is going to be passing north of the town of Aniana. Going to be coming through Cleveland, uh, very close to the school. Uh, the school is right there at my fingertip. And then moving up in the direction of Sneed and Susan Moore. So again, if you're in Sneed, Susan Moore, uh, be sheltered. Uh, the, we can give you an all clear for Hayden. Hayden, Locust Fork, all clear. In Blount County, you have no danger from this storm. The greatest concern, this thing is coming right on top of Cleveland right now. Uh, and from there, it goes right up into northern Blount County in the vicinity of Susan Moore and Sneed on Highway 278 up here. So that's our Blount County storm. Now let's go back to West Alabama. And again, we're going to have to work multiple tornadoes today, so please be patient with us. Uh, let's go back to the first storm, the northernmost storm, Taylor, which is the one in northern Greene County. And uh, again, you can see the evidence of circulation right here that's coming up into toward the southwestern part of Tuscaloosa County. Pretty nasty looking signature right there. This thing has just crossed Highway 14. Uh, that's Interstate 5920. This is US 11 and US 43. Possible tornado that's going to be moving northeast just north of Interstate 5920. And that's ultimately going to come up into southwestern Tuscaloosa County. This is Ralph right here. This is Romulus. Uh, so again, uh, uh, if you are in northeastern Greene County, southwestern Tuscaloosa County, if you're close to Ralph and Romulus Fosters, I'd be in a safe place now just to be on the safe side. These things have really produced major, major problems uh, today. Uh, and we, we don't want to hear of any loss of life. That's our goal. No injuries, no loss of life. We know that we've had a lot of injuries today and, and about loss of life. I don't know that yet, but we want to be sure that you're OK. Uh, we can rebuild a house, we can rebuild a church, we can rebuild a school, but we have to be sure that you're okay. So again, a tornado in northern Greene County, this is north of Utah, this is not include the city of Utah, coming up towards southwest Tuscaloosa County. Let's go down to the one below it. We have one in southern Greene County, and this is south of Utah, uh, and uh, this particular thunderstorm is coming out of Sumter County, and that's going to be moving up into southern Greene. So in southern Greene County, there's the tornado right there. Uh, coming up on the town of Forkland. This is US 43 right here, uh, and it's basically sitting on top of the river. This is the Tom Bigby River that separates Sumter from Greene counties. And again, this is going to be coming up on Forkland. Nobody should be on US 43 south of Utah. Uh, this will be crossing Highway 43 near Forkland, maybe a smidgen north of there, and then moving up into uh, parts of Hale County. Greensboro, you're in the Polygon. Wedgworth, Sawyerville, you're in the Polygon. This is mainly for the southern uh, central and southern part of Greene County. So again, a possible tornado that will be crossing over Highway 43 in southern Greene County, crossing the Warrior, coming up into Hale County, affecting uh, possibly places like uh, Sawyerville, maybe Greensboro. And again, we'll have to watch that. This thing could wind up in the Birmingham Metro again later this afternoon. So again, that's our third tornado circulation. So three circulations on the board. Let's go back to Blunt County. And again, you're going to uh, be popping these things uh, uh, very quickly. And I tell you what, if we can put, John, let's see, John, which one of these is John's uh, box in? Uh, okay, this is John Olshu on the top, and uh, John is getting, uh, he's on the interstate, and he's trying to get in a position to see the, the tornado, just to give you some reference. And uh, again, we've got the camera that's in Utah. Right now, Utah is not in any polygon. Uh, tornadoes going north of Utah and south of Utah, so the top camera is kind of the one to watch. That's Olshu's camera. So again, there's your tornadic circulation. This is near Cleveland right now in Blount County, not Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, this is US 231, Aniana here, Cleveland, Bluntsville. Tornado circulation moving like this. Uh, those folks in Susan Moore and Sneed need to be sheltered. Royal right here in Blount County, you need to be sheltered. As this moves in this direction just like that. Uh, this is clearly going to be passing north and west of the city of Aniana. Aniana, uh, the downtown Aniana is not in the polygon. You might have an Aniana mailing address, and you are. You can see how close it is. There's the polygon line right there. But again, that's your tornado circulation right on top of Cleveland. Uh, and again, that'll be moving out of Cleveland and coming up towards Susan Moore and Sneed in the northern part of Blunt County. So there's a tornado warning in effect for uh, Blunt County. Uh, and let's see, that expiration... Put, put a quick cursor in there. Let's see the expiration time, Taylor. That is going to be 445. Okay, 445 this afternoon. All right, so that's Blunt County. We'll be back to Blunt County in just a minute. Let's go back down to Greene County. We've got two polygons in Greene County. Not one, but two polygons in Greene County. Um, 
So let's look at our northernmost polygon, which is this one right here. Uh, again, you can see tornadic circulation right here. Uh, this is going to be awfully close to the Knoxville exit on Interstate 5920. This is US 11 and 43. This is Interstate 5920. If you've ever driven that stretch down below Tuscaloosa, you know the Knoxville exit. Well, uh, it's right here, and that's going to be pretty close to that exit, very close, and then moving up into southwestern Tuscaloosa County. I would imagine in a matter of minutes, we're going to get a tornado warning in effect for Tuscaloosa County. Um, so be aware of that. If you're in Tuscaloosa County, and again, listen, if you're in Ralph Foster's, uh, I'd be in a safe place right now. The warning's about to come, but so that will give you more time to get into a safe place. This is far, far southwest Tuscaloosa County. This is US 11 and 43. That's Interstate 5920 right there. Tornadic circulation coming up into southwest Tuscaloosa County. So let's go down to the southern part of Greene County. Uh, we've got three tornadoes on the board right now. We're working. Uh, the southern part of Greene County is featuring a tornadic circulation that's going to be coming up on Forkland. Uh, that thing is basically now into Greene County. This is the river right here. That's the Tom Bigby. The circulation is crossed over the Tom Bigby. And again, it's going to be crossing US 43 right here near or just north of Forkland. Forkland's the uh, larger little community on 43 is head south out of Utah going town door Demopolis. So again, everybody should not be traveling on Highway 43. And uh, once it crosses off of 43, moving on to the east, this is the Warrior. So it's crossed the Tom Bigby. It's going to cross the Warrior and then move into Hale County. This is Alabama Highway 14. That runs from Greensboro back over to Wedgworth, which is right here. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 69 going up toward Moundville. And uh, this tornadic circulation might pass a little west and north of the city of Greensboro. But again, if you're in places like uh, Sawyerville, uh, again, Greensboro, you're in the polygon. You respect the polygon. You get into a safe place. But uh, nobody traveling along US 43 in Greene County, southern Greene County, south of Utah. Nobody along Highway 14 between the Tom Bigby and Greensboro, and nobody on Highway 69 between Greensboro and Havana Junction. And if you live in a trailer out here, you got to get out. Uh, you've got to go to a community shelter or just some gas station, a fast food restaurant, something that offers shelter. Uh, so again, that is a tornado warning in effect for Southern Green and parts of Central and Northern Hale County. Let's go back to Blunt County. And again, I just got word that that, uh, warning has been canceled. Okay, the Blunt County. Okay, good. Uh, so Blunt County, they, they, you're right, they just did. Uh, so this is good news. So let's go back to Blunt County real quick. But the tornado warning has been canceled for Blunt County. So if you're in uh, Susan Moore, Sneed, Cleveland, you can come out of your storm pit right now, and you can see it's just noise up here right now. There's very broad circulation. That is not really a tornado signature. So the weather service has canceled the tornado warning for Blunt County. No warning here. So Blunt County, no warning. So let's go back to West Alabama. We'll focus on the two tornadoes we have right now. So the warning in effect for Blunt County has been canceled. Uh, we have a tornado. Uh, here's a new one for Tuscaloosa County. All right. So here we go. Uh, we have a tornadic circulation right here that is moving up out of Greene County. And if we can expand it out again, I want to show the whole polygon. Taylor, thank you. Uh, it's located near the Knoxville exit, and that's going to be coming up through parts of southwest and central Tuscaloosa County. This one does include the city of Tuscaloosa. This includes the University of Alabama campus. This includes the city of Northport. This includes places like Duncanville. This includes Cottondale, Alberta City, Coaling. It includes Ralph, Romulus, Elrod, Buell, Fosters. Any of these places I'm calling out, you're in a tornado warning right now. And again, this includes the city of Tuscaloosa. Uh, this is going to be moving right up into town. So what we're going to do is get that uh, sky cam on top of the courthouse, uh, the one we want to watch. And again, you can see a lowered CC value right there which means that we have debris being lofted. That's a TDS, a tornado debris signature. So we have uh, debris that is being lofted. The tornado warning for Tuscaloosa County will be in effect until 5 o'clock, um, I'm sorry, 515 this afternoon. Uh, so again, this is a tornado that is northeast of Utah that's about to move up into the southwestern part of Tuscaloosa County right here. All right, so again, you've got Tuscaloosa, Northport involved in this. You've got Ralph Romulus, and I, I said Buell and Elrod. Let me make a correction. Buell and Elrod, you were not in this polygon. That was my bad. Uh, the line has been drawn right here. So Buell and Elrod, you are not in this polygon. If you're in Ralph and Foster's, you are. Romulus, you are. Uh, the city of Tuscaloosa, you are. Most of Northport, most of Northport, yes. The University of Alabama campus, yes. Taylorville, Duncanville, Hull, uh, Inglewood, Coling, Alberta City, Cottondale, Brookwood. All of these places are in the tornado warning polygon. 
And uh, again, we're going to be watching our uh, various cameras. It has been a day where it's been so hard. Uh, let's look at Old Shoe's camera real quick. We, can we put John's camera? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, John thinks he has a visual of this tornado. Uh, okay, there we go. So this is John's camera. And again, uh, it's, on the, it's on the horizon. It's on the horizon. And if you look uh, off in the distance, Okay, this is not John's. Okay, th this is right. All right. So let's go back to let's just go back to me on the radar. If you guys see anything here, uh, let me know. So possible tornado. In fact, I say possible. Whenever you see debris being lofted, there's no possible. It's there. A tornado in the northeastern part of Greene County coming up into Tuscaloosa County. Uh, again, the initial point of entry is down here near Ralph, which sits right here. Again, uh, Romulus. Uh, Sipsy Valley High School and that school complex is in this polygon. Coker and Buell and Elrod, no, you're not. You're not in the polygon. Coker, Buell, Elrod. Romulus down to Ralph Foster's, yes, you are. Uh, Tuscaloosa sitting right here, of course, downtown Tuscaloosa. So this is going to include the city, and that's moving right up the chute. And we'll see how this behaves. It looks like it would mainly affect maybe the southern part of the city, but it's really too early to call. These have varied off the track a little bit. And again, the camera you see over here, uh, that is the camera on top of the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse uh, looking back into this. And on a day like today, it is just so wet. And these things are so wrapped up in rain. It's really hard to see. But again, this is a... Uh, a uh, situation that is uh, everything we call out today uh, is going to be serious. Uh, we've had a lot of serious damage. We have had major, uh, major damage. We've had injuries. It's been a really rough day. We don't know how rough it is yet. And again, once we get past the weather event, we can kind of hand it off to news and let them cover the aftermath of this. But it's a really uh, tough day today. So every one of these things I want you to take seriously. So again, this is a tornado warning for Tuscaloosa County. Let's go down to the southern storm. We're not going to forget those of you to the south. We have another tornado that is currently indicated. We'll put the velocity back on and look at that thing. Oof, that thing yeah. is spinning like a top. Uh, it, it's passing interstate or US 43 just right at Forkland right now. Uh, this is a very, very violent looking dangerous storm that is crossing US 43 near Forkland, maybe just north of Forkland. The Forkland Town Hall sits right there where the word Forkland is. Uh, Yelberton store sits right there. And that'll be crossing Highway 43, then crossing the Black Warrior, then moving over here into, uh, thank you, that's Old Shoe Shot, by the way, that we're watching. That'll be moving over here into Hale County. And again, uh, nobody should be along Highway 14 from Wedgworth back over to Greensboro. Nobody should be along Highway 69 from Greensboro up to Havana Junction. And again, Greensboro's in the polygon. So Greensboro, you stay sheltered. Uh, uh, Sawyerville, you stay sheltered. Uh, this is a very dangerous storm that's coming out of Greene County near Forkland. It'll be crossing the Warrior as a brief water spout and then coming right over into Hale County. So that's the tornado warning there. So let's go up to the northern storm again. We've got two storms that are parallel tracking each other, if you will. And Olshu, the camera you're seeing here, he is on the northern storm uh, that is in the far northeastern corner of Greene County right in through here. And uh, that storm is about to cross over into uh, Tuscaloosa County. And John is on Interstate 5920. Um, and we're just going to kind of watch this and see if we can see anything in his particular shot. But this is debris being lofted. Uh, that is a tornado debris signature, and uh, John is probably coming up from the south, which is the way you want to approach this. And uh, for those that don't know, John is a meteorologist. John has been a colleague of mine for a long, long time. He was here with us for many, many years. He's since retired, but he always comes back to help on big days like today, and we're thankful for John's service. But uh, this tornado is crossing over into Tuscaloosa County right now, and uh, it's coming up on the community of Ralph, which is right here. This is the southwesternmost community in Tuscaloosa County. And that's going to keep on just trucking right up U.S. Uh, 11 and 43 and Interstate 20 right toward, really, uh, the city of Tuscaloosa. Uh, so, uh, again, we're going to kind of watch John's camera. If you watched this back in 2011, John and Ben Greer, they had the big Tuscaloosa tornado down in Greene County before it got into the city. Today, the structure is a little different with these storms compared to that day, and that these are, are wetter storms. They're, they're rain wrapped. We just can't see a lot today. Uh, so again, you're going to have to watch us on the radar and watch this stuff carefully while we do our best to get these things on camera. So we've got a tornado that is moving up into southwestern Tuscaloosa County, and everybody in the city of Tuscaloosa should be sheltered. Uh, those in the campus of the University of Alabama should be sheltered. 
uh, Tuscaloosa, the University of Alabama, Northport and Point South, all the way down to the Hale County line. Uh, those are the communities in the path of this. This Englewood, Taylorville, Maxwell's Crossing, Duncanville, Cottondale, Alberta City, all of these places, you're in the polygon, including downtown Tuscaloosa. So just be aware of that. And we're going to watch that camera really carefully as this thing comes up in here. Uh, in other tornado situations, you've seen this impressive view of the tornadoes and again, I caution you today we just are not going to be able to do a lot of that you're going to have to just take our word and stay sheltered there's been a lot of damage today that we've had injuries these are very serious storms that you've got to take seriously if you got a helmet put that thing on if you know somebody that maybe lives in here that's not paying attention call them send them a text and say flip on the television and go to your safe place forget flipping on the television just go to a safe place and, uh, and listen, our, our radio partners in Tuscaloosa, the Town Square media stations, we have Alt 1017, uh, 95.3 The Bear, WTUG 92.9, and their other group of FM stations are simulcasting us right now, so you can hear us on a commercial radio station in Tuscaloosa. And we're so thankful for them doing that for us. So a tornado warning in effect for Tuscaloosa County for a tornado that is showing debris being lofted that is basically at Ralph in the far southwestern part of Tuscaloosa County. And again, uh, John Olshu's camera is trying to look up into this thing from the south. He's coming up from the south. And uh, so far, we've not seen much. We're going to stay with that for just a second. And let's go down to our southern storm. We have two storms that are paralleling each other. And we're going to kind of bounce back between the two. Uh, the southern storm is uh, coming across uh, Highway 43. Uh, just north of Forkland, and uh, that's going to be crossing the Warrior into Hale County. Uh, so again, if you're over here at uh, Sawyerville, Greensboro, uh, we want you to be sheltered. This is a very dangerous storm. All of these today are very dangerous, uh, all of them. Uh, so again, southern Greene County, Forkland, curving back up into southern Hale County and central Hale County over toward Greensboro. Greensboro, you're in the polygon. You've got to be in a safe place, respect the polygon, be in there and stay in there until this thing passes, until we give you an all clear. But that is a very violent circulation here in this storm that is in southern Greene County, uh, just a little east of US 43. We can now give an all clear for US 43. If you need to travel from Utah down to Demopolis, you can do that at this point, as the circulation is now east of Highway 43, about to cross the rivers of water spout, then coming over into Hale County. And again, this is Greensboro right here. You've got uh, Sawyerville. Uh, Havana Junction is right here. No traveling on Highway 14 between Greensboro and Wedgworth. No traveling on Highway 69 between Greensboro and Havana. Let's go to our northern storm. And again, uh, we're watching uh, Old Shoe. And it look, is, John says he thinks that's the tornado. Um, so we're kind of watching this together. I do uh, not know why that warning is not showing on our map right now, but that warning is still in place. Right. Don't, don't worry about that. Understand if you're in Tuscaloosa County, you're under a tornado warning. And, uh, you know, that might be it right there. But did he kill, did they kill it? Um, Expires? Cancels? No, I, I, they might have, but we're not have, uh, no. Tornado warning for Tuscaloosa County is still, uh, still happening here. Um, it says 420 BMX cancels tornado warning, hail Tuscaloosa. Wow, I see that now. So anyway, let's just hold it right here because John has, again, I don't see a tornado in John's shot. Uh, so we'll make it official. The Weather Service has canceled the tornado warning for uh, Tuscaloosa County. They believe that uh, uh, evidence is off the board. And uh, John, let's just leave that shot right there. Um, so again, we're looking at uh, what uh, circulation. I don't know if a tornado's there because of all those pine trees. Um, and uh, John is along Interstate uh, 5920 near the southwestern corner of Tuscaloosa County. And again, you can see we're watching that. I've, I've not seen a tornado. John, who's there, you know, and we always like to have confirmation from people that are actually there. John says that he uh, believed that it was a tornado. Uh, but the Weather Service believes that the storm structure is weakened to a point where they can cancel the warning. So it is true. Taylor got it right. Uh, the, the tornado warning for Tuscaloosa County has been canceled. Uh, they canceled the tornado warning uh, two, two and a half minutes ago at uh, 420. Uh, and they've let the warning for Greene County expire. So the, the northern storm, we do not have uh, a tornado warning at this point. But again, we're still watching this thing because these have been very cyclic today. But I, I believe the thinking is that the southern storm has become dominant and it's taken away the inflow from the northern storm, which has reduced the danger to 
the uh, city of Tuscaloosa. So if we can double box, I, I want to keep John shot in here. And again, John is on the Northern Storm. I want to make that perfectly clear. That's the one coming into Tuscaloosa County. And again, let's make it perfectly clear. The warning has been canceled for Tuscaloosa County. So if you're in Tuscaloosa, Northport, the University of Alabama, you are not in a polygon anymore. It's over. Uh, the concern is this southern storm right here. And again, this is becoming the dominant storm. Uh, this storm is crossing the Black Warrior River uh, between Green and, Hale ha Green and Hale Counties. That serves as the border. And that violent circulation next will be crossing Highway 14. So again, uh, probably passing a little to the uh, west and north of Greensboro. It'll be crossing Highway 14. Sawyerville, be sheltered now. Again, uh, uh, you've got to be sheltered right now. Uh, and again, Greensboro, I want to make it perfectly clear here, Greensboro is in the uh, polygon. Uh, so if you're in Greensboro, we want you to stay sheltered. We firmly believe that the tornado is going to be passing north and west of Greensboro. But uh, again, I'd say my, my greatest concern is Sawyerville. Uh, it's a community on Highway 14, right in the path of this thing. Uh, Sawyerville was hit by a really bad tornado, April 27, 2011. They know the pain of a tornado, and, and uh, I, they're typically good at responding here. Uh, so this is Wedgworth. You're not in the polygon. Sawyerville is. So Sawyerville, uh, be sheltered. If you're anywhere just north and west of Greensboro, uh, stay sheltered. And understand this. Uh, in fact, let's expand this out. Let me kind of show you a big picture on this because uh, understand this thing could wind up in the Birmingham Metro. Let's keep expand. I want to I want to see Birmingham on here. All right. So uh, keep on going. Keep on going. There we go. So if this stays down, guess what's going to happen? It's going to come right through the southern part of the Birmingham Metro again, a place hit so hard by tornadoes earlier today. One big tornado. So uh, again, this particular tornado that is near Sawyerville in Hale County uh, will likely traverse if it stays down. And it could. We've had these long track supercell storms today through parts of Bibb, northern Bibb, and then right up into northern Shelby County, much like the first one that we experienced. And we got a lot of cleanup and rescue work underway. So just be aware of that. So again, we've got uh, potential for a violent tornado coming through Hale County, a little west and north of Greensboro. And if it stays down, it could affect northern Bibb, northern Shelby, maybe southern Jefferson, the Birmingham Metro. And again, this northern storm has diminished and the weather service has canceled that warning. So at this point, the tornado warning for Tuscaloosa County has gone away. I wanted to make that uh, perfectly clear. So we are now at 425 and uh, we have had a rough day today. We've had a lot of damage in a lot of different parts of the state. And uh, uh, tell you what, what, let's go back into our, we got the one tornado warning. That's the one thing about it now. We have just one uh, in the state. And I want to just very quickly show some of the things that have happened today in an effort to let you know that uh, this has been a pretty serious uh, situation. So uh, if we can, let's take WEX 05 real quick. Uh, this is what it looks like in a lot of neighborhoods. These are well-constructed, well-engineered homes. Uh, this particular damage is from Eagle Point in, uh, in northern Shelby County. Uh, yes. at 5 o'clock. They are still doing a door-to-door -door searches. Hope to be finished by dark. No serious injuries reported. That's great. That's the greatest thing I've heard all day is no serious injuries from Eagle Point. That's the tornado, by the way, you see right there that came through Eagle Point crossing over Double Oak Mountain. If you travel U.S. Highway 280, you can uh, uh, see the damage on 280 on the mountain up there. And, and this is another reminder that, listen, guys, tornadoes do happen on mountains. Uh, and I'll shoot straight with you guys. That's my backyard. Um, it, it's, been a, it's been a rough day, a uh, very rough day. Um, and look at this. Uh, goodness, that's a two by four going right through a brick wall. I want to say that home is in a, I'm sorry, Dennis, was a two by 10? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, this is some uh, video. This was from that same tornadic thunderstorm. This was taken, I want to say, near Lincoln. Uh, and it's down. Uh, you just can't see it. It's down and it's rain wrap, but uh, that's what's going on right now on the Warrior River between Forkland and uh, Sawyerville uh, in West Alabama. Uh, this is some of the damage on Highway 280 going up the mountain right here. This is right on the slope of Double Oak Mountain. This is the tornado that came through Eagle Point, 
came up on the mountain, came down Highway 41, hit some of the Greystone neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, it's been a pretty uh, rough ride, obviously, for those folks. And again, that's some of the damage on US 280. It looks like a car was damaged by perhaps a falling tree on Highway 280. Okay. Yes. We have an update. This is not a good one. We have three confirmed dead in Ohatchee. Mm. You know, I saw that and I didn't want to report it until you guys did. We just got it confirmed. Uh, goodness gracious. Um, I hate to hear that, Pam. Thank you for that uh, update. So real quick, we'll go through some more of these images and we'll get right back to it. Uh, and again, this shot, uh, this is Eagle Point right here. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, in that neighborhood near Lee Branch uh, off US 280. And uh, again, this is some of the damage in Pelham in a business uh, in Pelham. And you can see uh, this is damage to a church in Ohatchee. This is uh, where we've had the loss of life today. At least three people have been killed here. And again, uh, thanks to uh, Brian Emfinger for uh, sending us these uh, drone shots of the damage near Ohatchee. A uh, very, very tragic story. And, and again, the day is not over yet. So let's get right back to it. I, I, I wish I could, you know, go report damage the whole time. We, we've got to focus on this dangerous storm. That is nasty. Uh, this is right at Sawyerville. Uh, Greensboro here, Sawyerville right here. And once it crosses Highway 14, it's going to be crossing Highway 69 between Havana Junction and Greensboro. So the, the danger for Greene County is over from this storm. So the tornado warning for Greene County, all of them have expired. We have one tornado warning in the whole state right now, one, and it's what you're seeing right now. This is in uh, Hale County in West Alabama. Uh, what could be a violent tornado is down. Let's look at the CC product real quick, uh, and we'll do a storm track, too, uh, on this, and that we just have one. That's pretty noisy uh, for such a violent velocity signature that we really don't see tornado debris being lofted. So let's go back and do a storm track on this. Uh, this is going to be the... Uh, uh, approximate arrival times of a tornado in your this neighborhood. Uh, and remember, you should be sheltered. This is, uh, this is not when you go to a shelter, when you see these times on the screen. This is when the tornado will likely arrive in your neighborhood, the approximate arrival times here. And again, uh, you can see places like uh, Harper Hill at 441, uh, Phipps at 450. These are very small communities out here in rural northern Hale County. Uh, and from there, this thing's going to be moving up into northern Bibb County, uh, but that is the one really big issue we have right now. So let's take me full screen. John is in, in rain down in Greene County, and that warning is expired, so we'll just kind of stay full screen for the moment. Uh, and again, if you're just joining us, the tornado warning for Tuscaloosa County was canceled uh, at this point. Um, and uh, uh, so we have one tornado warning that is currently in effect, and that tornado warning is in effect for Hale County. A possible large tornado, it could be down near Sawyerville, moving northeast. And from Sawyerville, it's going to be crossing Highway 69 between Havana Junction and Greensboro. This tornado is going to be passing north of downtown Greensboro. Now, again, downtown Greensboro obviously is right here. That's Highway 69. That's how you go to Tuscaloosa from Greensboro. Don't drive on Highway 69 uh, anytime soon. And quite frankly, I would not really want to be on Highway 25 right now. Uh, in that uh, this is going to be crossing 69 for sure. It might miss 25, maybe clipping 25 up and through here. 25 runs from Greensboro back over to Pondville and Brent. In fact, the old, yeah, there's your uh, debris right there. That's your uh, TDS, your tornado debris signature. Tornado, this uh, debris being lofted several thousand feet. The beam is way off the ground here. This is probably lofted 15,000 feet. And uh, that's going to be moving from Sawyerville back over into the northern part of Hale County. And again, when you get up in here in this part of Hale County, this is pretty sparsely populated. This is the Talladega National Forest. And, and I, uh, there's a East Alabama side of the National Forest, a West Alabama side. This is in that West Alabama side. Uh, and again, so there's not a lot of population density here. We don't get a lot of reports out of here, but we, we've had one tornado come through here earlier today. Look at that thing. Goodness. Mm. That's bad. And we are getting re multiple reports of tornado on the ground near Sawyerville. Yeah, it's, uh, that's not good. That is not good. Uh, so again, um, we've got a tornado that is clearly down at Sawyerville in Hale County. That's about eight miles uh, west of uh, Greensboro. And you can certainly see by this signature, this is not good. That, that is a confirmed, probably a large, destructive tornado. Uh, at this point. Uh, and uh, this will be moving across Highway 69 and then probably touching Highway 25 on the way to Bibb County. This is Hale County, Tuscaloosa County, Bibb County. And again, a, a reminder, if you joined us, that, that warning for Tuscaloosa County was canceled. 
is this storm took away from the northern storm. This became the dominant storm. Sometimes when you have a storm that's on the south side of another storm, it wins. It becomes the dominant storm. Uh, so again, uh, th this is a uh, what could be a very large tornado that is down passing north of Greensboro. I want to go out to a big picture real quick, Taylor, and just kind of expand this uh, and just show the state, or at least our end of the state, and what's happening. We've had some other issues today. We've had some flooding problems and hail and everything else. And notice there's a lot of rain in through here, just a lot of rain falling. And it's been pretty interesting. You know, the, the, the high resolution models really suggested the better tornado tracks up in through here. But it sure looks like it's going to wind up being south of Interstate 59. Models are models. The weather is going to do what it's going to do. It doesn't look at updraft helicity. It doesn't read blogs. It's just going to do its thing. And again, it sure looks like the greatest concern it's going to be down here south of Interstate 59 for now. This is where the air is fairly ripe, unstable, not really contaminated. Uh, and that's the one storm on the board. It's raining in Tuscaloosa. You've got thunder and lightning and it's pouring. But there's no evidence of a tornado. That's the reason the warning was canceled. Same thing if you're north of Birmingham. Same thing in Blount County. At one point, you had a tornado warning. That tornado warning was canceled. Uh, the storm over here that prompted the tornado warning. In fact, you know what that thing is? That's the same one that brought the damage in the Birmingham Metro earlier today. The same one now passing north of Atlanta. You talk about a long track storm. Uh, so we can focus on that one storm, as you can see, that's uh, a little north and west of the city of Greensboro down here. This is in Hale County, about uh, 30 miles south of Tuscaloosa. So let's go back to our Hale County storm. Uh, and we are watching this together. It is 434 on Thursday, March the 25th. And uh, yeah, I, I'm seeing Stephen Quinn's report from the Calhoun County Sheriff. Three dead in Ohatchee. The death toll could go higher. Um, at least two injured. Uh, Lauren Walsh from Hale County EMA has multiple reports of a tornado on the ground in Sawyerville. Um, Calhoun County EMA again search and rescue underway. They can confirm fatalities in Ohatchee. They cannot give a number, but again, the number we have is three from the Calhoun County Sheriff. The death toll could go higher. Uh, so uh, again, we've had tragic loss of life today. Um, and we we need to prevent that from any more fatalities from getting on the board here. So please pay attention. We have a new tornado warning for Bibb County. So the Weather Service in Birmingham has expanded the tornado warning out of Hale into Bibb in the northern part of Perry County. That's Alabama Highway 5. Uh, Highburger sits right there. This is Brent and this is Marion. Uh, the tornado warning this time does include Centerville and Brent. Uh, earlier, the tornado warning polygon for that first long track uh, thunderstorm did not include Centerville, Brent. This one does. So this one includes Centerville, Brent, Pondville, West Blockton. Um, so if you're in any of these communities down here towards Six Mile, you want to be sheltered as this uh, violent storm is about to cross out of Hale County in about 10 minutes. You're getting some lead time today. And, you know, we've debated this in the weather enterprise. Are we giving too much lead time in some cases? Um, you know, I, I think the more lead time, the better. You know, we, I know that sitting in a shelter for 40 minutes can be uncomfortable, but hey, you know, it, it's the right thing to do. And remember, for people in mobile homes, they have to leave the mobile homes and they have to go to a shelter. Sometimes it takes them five or 10 minutes to get there. But the bottom line is, if you're in these polygons and hail, extreme northern Perry and Bibb counties, what you want to do right now is be out of a car, be out of a mobile home. You want to be in a shelter in, in your home. If you're in a small closet or a bathroom, put on a helmet. Uh, if you are uh, today in a mobile home, you go to a community shelter and let's ride this thing out, but let's all be safe. And in terms of travel, if you're listening to us by radio, uh, the, the major routes you want to avoid is Highway 69 north of Greensboro, Highway 25 north of Greensboro. You want to avoid US 82, Alabama Highway 5. And again, Centerville, Brent, uh, both of these communities, they're side by side on either side of the Cahaba. Uh, you need to be sheltered as well. Uh, and again, if you carry this out, it's going right up into Shelby County. This one will probably take a, a track a little to the south compared to the first one. Uh, so with this, if it stays down, if this is another long track tornado, this most likely will affect the southern part of Shelby County down through here. So again, we're getting a very well-defined tornado debris signature right here. That is a TDS representing debris being lofted. It's not rain. It's not hail. It's debris. It's not a hydrometeor. And this is an amazing product here. When, when dual polarization radar came online, 
about seven, eight years ago. We had no idea this product would be this good, but it's that good. And we can confirm that tornado uh, in through here. But again, I just want to stress that we've had loss of life today. At least three people have died, and we don't want any more fatalities on the board today. So please take all of these warnings seriously. Um, uh, this is likely a large wedge tornado coming through Hale County, debris being lofted over 15,000 feet. The Weather Service just said that. I, I mentioned that a few minutes ago based on the beam height. Uh, that's it. I mean, this, this is really being lofted. And the tornado is basically going to be coming through the Talladega National Forest in through here. There's not a lot of population density, so you're not going to hear a lot about it. But just uh, understand that this is a large, dangerous tornado that is destructive that will be crossing, perhaps clipping, the far northern part of Perry County. Uh, Perry County, you know, it's Marion, Heiberger. And, and let me just say that Heiberger and Marion are not in this polygon. Uh, it is just a small part of northern Perry. But that will be coming up into Bibb and uh, moving really in the direction of Centerville and Brent. And old timers like me remember what happened in Brent, May 27, 1973. Horrible uh, tornado that uh, destroyed uh, so much of the town. It killed five people that Sunday night. I was a junior in high school, and that might change my life. And I'm not saying this will be the same situation. I'm not. This will probably take a different track. It will probably be a different size. But that's a reminder of what these things can do. Large destructive tornadoes. That was an EF4, May 27, 1973. Uh, these are some of the approximate arrival times. Got Hagler at 501, uh, and again, that's a small community uh, really in southeastern Tuscaloosa County. I don't think Tuscaloosa County has anything to worry about here. Uh, this is going to be an exclusive problem for Bibb and maybe northern Perry if you're watching in Tuscaloosa County. I know it's raining, you got thunder and lightning, but this is all south of you, and this has become the dominant storm. Uh, so for the moment, and we just have one tornado but we're, we're working right now, which uh, is a good thing. We were concerned we might have three going on at the same time, or four, which we did earlier today. But we're down to one, and again, that is a really large debris signature, and you can see these small communities up in Bibb County in the approximate arrival times. It's currently uh, 439, but I want to stress, this is not when you go to shelter. This is, you go to shelter now, and uh, that's just to give you an idea when it might come over your neighborhood. So uh, you can't miss that. Uh, incredible debris signature on this, uh, what's probably a large destructive tornado in Hale County, north of Greensboro, crossing over Highway 69, about seven miles north of downtown Greensboro. Uh, give us about five minutes, we'll give you an all clear for Highway 69. If I had to imagine, there are probably trees blocking Highway 69 right now. I wouldn't want to travel that road anyway, but if you have to, this tornado is going to be east of there pretty soon. You can see Highway 69 right here. Uh, and again, this is Highway 25. Uh, Highway 25 comes out of Greensboro, then comes back over to Pondville. The old Weather Service radar site used to sit here, the WSR 57. That thing was a beacon for so long uh, for the uh, people of Alabama. I want to say it's a campground or something. I drive by there from time to time. It's, uh, the, the tower's there. Of course, the radar is gone. But uh, again, that's going to be moving right up through here. This might pass a little north and west of Brent Centerville. Uh, EO line is up here, but listen. Everybody's got to be sheltered. That, that's the screaming message today. We, we call out these specific places, but storms can vary a little bit. They can be a right-turning storm. Uh, sometimes they can dissipate and reorganize in a different place. If you're in a polygon, you've got to respect that and be in a safe place. Just don't get too hung up in you know, specific little spots that I'm calling out here. Uh, you see the flashing red lines. Those are the boundaries. And if you're in that flashing red line, you've got to be in your safe place, in a sheltered place today. Uh, and uh, that's urgent that we do that. We, we have uh, had a really, really, really rough day. So again, a uh, large tornado is now east of, interstate, of Alabama Highway 69. So let's give an all clear to Alabama Highway 69. All clear in terms of dangerous weather from this storm, uh, which is the road from Moundville down to Greensboro. So all clear Highway 69 at points west. Greensboro, all clear for you. If you're in Greensboro, if you're in Sawyerville, all clear for you. The tornado is well north and east of there. Uh, so Highway 69 at points west, all clear. Greensboro, uh, Sawyerville, all clear. Now, uh, we're out here in the, really close to Highway 25. Anybody, anybody along Highway 25 from Greensboro back over to Brent, uh, this thing's going to be riding the highway. Highway 25, and you do not want to be on Alabama Highway 25. You do not want to be on that highway. This thing could probably toss a car just like a matchstick take trees down like matchsticks. Uh, it's very easy for that to uh, be the case. And that will be coming up into Bibb. And again, the way it works here, you've got Alabama Highway 5, that's 219 coming down from Highway 5, uh, coming into Centerville, Brent here, Centerville here. The Cahaba River runs uh, right through here. 
And uh, that you've got some time. You've got some time. And if you know anybody that lives in this polygon, like we've talked about, and I know you're getting me tired of asking this, but a lot of people join us in progress. They don't stay with us for hours and hours and hours. If you know somebody that lives in Brent or Centerville or any of these communities in Bibb County, call them now. Send them a text message and tell them to go get into a safe place. Um, these are serious storms. They really are. Okay, so please have them get into a safe place. So Taylor, let me kick it back over to you for a few minutes. Okay, so we're of course focusing on this one, what is a likely a violent tornado on the ground. I'm gonna circle that debris signature, although I really probably don't need to because it, oh, there we go again. It uh, just updated, but that is a very, very, very strong debris signature there uh, headed towards Hoglesville here, and it's going to cross over into Bibb County here pretty soon, headed towards uh, Mertz, this, the uh, the community of Spencer, Harrisburg. Uh, likely, if it stays on its current trajectory, will stay a little bit farther north than Harrisburg. But of course, you're included in that polygon, and we want everybody. This is this is a tornado you need to take very seriously based on this debris signature that we're seeing. This is likely a very, very strong tornado on the ground, and it has stayed on the ground for quite some time at this point. So I'm going to pull another storm track here. If you are in northern Perry County or Bibb County included in this polygon, this is it. You need to go to that safe place now. We're not waiting until uh, the, what this storm track tells you. But this is a storm track based on the current rotation. So I'm going to pull this here at about 59 miles per hour. And um, this is moving towards Water Oak, 448, uh, Pondville, 457, Harrisburg, 502, Spencer at 502, and uh, Goodson at 504. So if those communities sound familiar to you, you need to be in that safe place. Get your family, get your, your pets, head down to that safe place, put the helmet on, put your shoes on, uh, and you're going to ride this thing out in that safe place. Uh, with this last scan here, we're still showing that very strong indication of what is likely a large violent tornado on the ground. As high as this is lofting debris, uh, this is likely a very strong violent tornado. And I'm, I'm not saying that to scare you, I'm saying that because I want you to take this seriously. Because uh, this is a tornado on the ground moving towards Bibb County. This warning does include the city of Brent. So if you live in Brent, head to that, that safe place now. If you're not already there, you should already be there. Uh, if you live in Eolien, uh, West Blockton. Eventually, if this holds together, it'll be headed towards Six Mile. And I want to zoom us out and kind of show us here the, the trajectory of this storm. If it holds together like it is right now and moves into Bibb County, eventually another warning may be necessary for portions of Shelby County. So downstream from, from this Bibb County warning could be another warning that includes uh, portions of Northern Chilton County and Shelby County. We're going to wait and see if this storm holds together, but that's just a heads up for portions of Shelby County. If this storm does stay on its, uh, its, its, its trajectory, there could be a warning for Shelby County coming up here um, as this moves through Bibb County. So at this point, we're still watching this circulation. It's going to be in portions of northern portions of, of Hale County. Uh, but this has just been showing this constant de debris signature here. With this latest radar scan, the positive note at this point is that it is not as well defined, but that is still a debris signature. We're still seeing indications that this tornado is likely on the ground. I'm going to pass very close to Water Oak community, and we are going to... Uh, to have to watch this one very carefully because at, at this point this has been on the ground for quite some time and like we saw with that first supercell storm we watched that tornado track all the way from Greene County all the way across into Georgia and we've still got warnings going on in Georgia from that same cell so if you live in Shelby County just keep an eye on this storm it's going to be crossing over into northern Perry here pretty soon and then moving into Bibb County uh, but we could see this storm continue to track northeastward and really be cyclic like we've seen with the uh, storm earlier. Wexo 5, uh, Wex 5 um, if we can. Uh, yeah, that's our tornado in Hale County. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is a, uh, a shot of the tornado that is in uh, Hale County in uh, West Alabama. Um, this is from Max Olson, and that's what is moving out of uh, Hale County into Bibb County. So understand, this is a serious situation here. So again, I just wanted to show that to let you know that we've got a clear visual on this, and that is in rural Hale County moving up into Bibb County. It's on pretty much on the Bibb County line. 
So uh, let's go back to the radar. It's uh, 447. Uh, James Spann here. We've got uh, John Brown is uh, on Highway 5 headed to Brent. Um, and if we can check John's, I don't know which one of these John is on, but I, I want to kind of maybe double box John Brown. Yeah, let, let's double box uh, me and John Brown. Uh, John is on Highway 5 headed into Brent to intercept this storm. And again, for those that ask, uh, John Olshu and John Brown, these guys, uh, they're trained. They know exactly what they're doing, and uh, they will be safe. They're not going to put themselves in harm's way here. But we've got what the, that, that you saw that large tornado. Uh, that thing is, again, sitting on the line here. This is Hale County, and uh, this is the far northern part of Perry County. It's on the really the Hale-Perry County line. That's going to cross over into Bibb County. This is Brent, and this is Centerville right here. And again, these storms today have had a, a, at times a tendency sometimes to veer to the right. Uh, instead of this constant northeast motion, sometimes they'll veer a little back to the right. And just be aware of that. So again, we want every, that's why well, there's a polygon here. There's room for error. Uh, and again, you might hear me calling out something, but uh, just whatever. If you're in the polygon, respect the polygon and be in a safe place. Uh, and again, uh, John Brown in the stream you're seeing uh, over here is headed down to, uh, he's on Alabama Highway 5, headed down to Brent from uh, Woodstock and North Bibb. And he's coming in from West Blockton, so we'll see if John can intercept this thing. John is basically coming down this highway right here, and he's going to be in a position to intercept this storm, which is located right here. Uh, so again, uh, this is Bibb County. We have a tornado warning in effect, and this is the only tornado warning in the entire state. Uh, just wanted to uh, uh, point that out. Uh, seeing some more damage images coming in through here. Um, we do have a new tornado warning for Jefferson County. Oh, really? Okay, well, let's, get, let's go. New tornado warning for Jefferson County. All right, this yep. is going to include the city of Birmingham. This is, and I've got our camera pointed that direction. All right, so uh, we've got a tornado warning in effect now for Jefferson County. And again, we've oh got. Oh my a, goodness! Yeah, there it is. That's that rotation. All right. So this is out in the eastern part of the Birmingham Metro. Wow. Downtown Birmingham is over here. All right. So this is Trustville. It's located right here. This, quite frankly, is out here, not too far from the uh, airport. Uh, the airport property is right here, so it's a little east of the airport. So we have, uh, in fact, if we can get that Birmingham Coca-Cola camera, uh, that's going to be right there at it. Uh, Birmingham Coca-Cola is located right here. This is the Birmingham Airport, Birmingham Shuttlesworth International Airport. Uh, what looks to be just a violent circulation that popped up basically out of nowhere is uh, located now just to the east of the airport. And again, that's going to be coming out uh, toward Trussville and the eastern part of Birmingham, out here toward Roebuck. Uh, so again, if you are in Roebuck, uh, center point is up here, Roebuck, Huffman, any place around Medical Center East, uh, Vincent, uh, St. Vincent's East, uh, you want to be in a safe place and that this thing is very close to you. This Interstate 459 right here, uh, and that goes, of course, down into uh, Shelby County. So this is coming out near the Birmingham Race Course, the eastern part of Birmingham, north of Irondale, and that's going to keep on moving in the direction of Trustville right here. So everybody in Trustville, you need to be sheltered right away. And again, we've got the double box going. We've got our sky cam from the uh, uh, Birmingham Coca-Cola looking back into this. And naturally, like everything else today, it's been pretty much rain wrapped. But it looks like we've got a tornado that is down uh, currently in the eastern part of the city of Birmingham. And there's a tornado debris signature. So we've got debris that's being lofted now. And again, uh, this is Interstate 59 right here. This is uh, Roebuck. Uh, this is uh, near W.J. Christian School. I'm just trying to throw some landmarks out here. You might, you might know what, what you've got. And uh, that'll be coming out across Interstate 459, US 11, and coming right up into Trussville. Uh, so just you've got this Target shopping center out here. There's a Target. Uh, there's a Best Buy. Uh, I want to say it's the Promenade. Uh, well, you know the name out if you live out there, that shopping center. But that's going to be coming right up into Trussville. So everybody in Trussville has got to be sheltered. Everybody in Trussville needs to be sheltered now. Uh, small room, lowest floor near the center, away from windows, as we have debris being lofted in the eastern part of Birmingham. Again, this is Roebuck proper right here. This is uh, kind of South Roebuck, and again, this out near W.J. Christian School, and that'll be crossing over Interstate 459 soon. The Birmingham Racecourse property is right out here. That thing's going to want to travel right up U.S. 11, right into 
the uh, middle of, of downtown Trustville, which is right here. The municipal complex is right here. The interstate right here, Interstate 59. So we've got a tornado warning in effect now for the eastern part of Jefferson County. This does not include downtown Birmingham. This is east of downtown Birmingham. Again, out here in the far eastern part of the city. And there's your debris signature right now. It's uh, uh, very, very close to St. Vincent's East Hospital. It's near the intersection of 459 and Interstate 59. Uh, up in the northeast part of Birmingham. And from there, that's going to keep on going right up into Trustville. Everybody in Trustville has got to be sheltered now. Uh, now, don't wait on this. Uh, we've got uh, evidence that the tornado is down. This is debris being lofted. So again, a tornado that's down uh, near Interstate 459 and US 11, uh, very close to Medical Center East. And that's going to keep on moving to the northeast. There might be some jogs in the path. Uh, let's expand this polygon really quick. I want to show people that are in the polygon. Uh, so here's your polygon. This will include clay. And let me just say, th back in here, you're done with it. Uh, you're done with the danger. The concern, it's from the, the debris signature onto the east. This uh, will include Argo and Trustville and Clay and Chalkville. Uh, those are the main concerns out here for areas near Interstate 59. So again, Clay, Chalkville, Trustville, Argo. Uh, clay is up here and it might pass south of there, but if you're in the polygon, please respect it and go to a safe place right now. Implement the plan that you've been working on for the past several days. Tornado warning for the eastern part of Jefferson County, a debris signature right now near 459 and 59 in the eastern part of Birmingham that is moving northeast just like this. Okay, so again, this is a series, every, every situation here today. Uh, Birmingham Fire Station 27 reporting they have trees down in Roebuck from this storm. Um, so again, we're getting reports now of trees down in Roebuck from this. And again, it's clearly lofting debris, no doubt about that. And you can see that debris signature is along US 11 uh, near the cemetery out here in the funeral home. And again, the, the target uh, that'll be coming right up Highway 11, right into Trustful. Uh, it'll probably keep on going up US 11 uh, up here toward uh, Payne Elementary School. Uh, bottom line is if you're in the city limits of Trustful, if you're in Clay, if you're in Chalkville, you got to be in a safe place. Argo, uh, US 11, Interstate 59, anywhere close to those highways in the eastern part of Jefferson County, that's your tornado signature moving like this. It's going to cross into St. Clair County soon. So if you're living in some place like Margaret or Springville, you might have to deal with it fairly soon. So a TDS, a tornado debris signature that is in Trustville right now, right now. OK, so that is uh, the the system. We have two tornado warnings on the board. We've got the one in Bibb County. We have the one in Jefferson. We're going to bounce back and forth between the two. I'm going to stay with this for just one more minute. But the bottom line is, if you are living in Trustville, anywhere near Trustville, anywhere in this polygon, be sheltered, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. Have a helmet on. Uh, if, you've got, if you have them, put, this is the time where you put these things on. We've had four deaths today. The death toll is up to four in Ohatchee now. Uh, we don't need any more of that. This is the new warning, new tornado warning for St. Clair County. So we've got the tornado located here in Trustville moving northeast. This will include Springville, Odenville, Branchville, Margaret, Asheville, uh, Shoal Creek Valley out here, and Raglan is in this as well. So again, Asheville, Shoal Creek Valley, Raglan, Odenville, Branchville, Springville, Margaret. If you're in any of these places or near them, you're under a tornado warning. Um, Again, watching more of the uh, reports coming in here. The tornado warning for St. Clair County um, will be in effect until... I can put, put that. There we uh, go, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. All right, and right now it's 456. And um, the lightning has really increased in Jefferson County. That's a, a representative of, of an increasing updraft. And the debris is currently being lofted to 8,000 feet in this storm. Uh, so uh, again, uh, St. Clair County under a tornado warning for a tornado that's in Trustville right here, uh, very close to downtown Trustville, uh, Camp Coleman Road, US 11, uh, Deerfoot Parkway out here, Payne Elementary School. Uh, these are just approximate landmarks and that tornado is crossing over into St. Clair and again, Margaret is next in line here. If you're anywhere near the school in Margaret, you need to be sheltered. Uh, Springville on the northern flank up here, uh, Odenville and Moody on the southern flank on 411. Uh, from Springville down to Odenville and Moody and Branchville, everybody needs to be sheltered from this thing. 
Uh, it might split the difference between Interstate 59 and 411, but one way or the other, if you're in that polygon, be sheltered. Asheville, you're in the polygon. Here's the split. That's 231 going down to Pell City. That's 411 going back down to Odenville. And uh, this particular circulation is going to come right up the chute right in through here. Shoal Creek Valley is right here. Uh, Steel is in the polygon. Steel is up on Chandler Mountain, or part of Steel is up on the mountain. Uh, they're kind of on the northern fringe of this. And, of course, if this continues, a warning might be required for Etowah County. So just keep an eye on this. And, again, today the storms we're dealing with, they tend to be these violent long-track tornadoes. So, again, we have a tornado that is currently moving through uh, Argo and Trussville, uh, moving a little south of Clay, and it's about to cross over to St. Clair County. So let's go back down to our Hale Bibb County storm. Hale County, you're clear now. We can give Hale County an all clear. Uh, it's a problem for Bibb County. And again, the great concern here, it's going to be Centerville and Brent. Again, uh, that is a potential for violent circulation right here. This is Pondville. Uh, and again, that thing is going to be just coming right up the chute toward Brent. It's getting really close. You don't have any time left. You don't. If you're in Brent, if you're in Centerville, be sheltered now. All right, that's a small room, lowest floor near the center. You're going to have a helmet on. And uh, if you know anybody at the last minute here that, that's not paying attention, that, that hasn't done anything, please call them or text them. Help us get in touch with them and tell them they've got to be in a safe place. We've seen uh, images of this. It is a large wedge tornado, and that is a very, very nasty debris signature. This is a southern storm. It's the dominant storm. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. It's probably going to come up into Shelby County. But again, Centerville and Brent, right through here. This is Brent. This is Centerville. They're split by the Cahaba River. You've got to be in a safe place. That is an urgent, urgent request. Uh, so please, this is a very dangerous situation, extremely dangerous situation for a tornado in Bibb County coming up on Brent and Centerville. So that's Bibb County. Let's go back to our storm that is coming up into St. Clair County, moving out of Trustville. Uh, and let me just say the tornado warning that was issued for Jefferson County, that tornado is basically moving out of Jefferson County, moving into St. Clair. Uh, so this is the debris tracker. Let's go back to the velocity, and I will say it's a little broader here, but still, there's no doubt this thing is spinning like a top, the storm itself, and that circulation is near Argo. Argo sits on the St. Clair-Jefferson County line, um, and uh, you need to be sheltered. Uh, so again, the call to action here, it is a tornado warning including Margaret, Springville, Branchville, Odenville, Asheville, Shoal Creek Valley, St. Clair Springs. Be sheltered. Let's go back to Bibb County. We now have a tornado emergency for Centerville and Brent. This is a tornado emergency for Centerville and Brent. A violent tornado is approaching from the southwest. It's coming right for both towns. I don't mean to scare anybody by saying this. I'm saying this to, to get you to do something. Uh, we need you sheltered. You should have been sheltered 25 minutes ago when the warning was first issued, but the National Weather Service in Birmingham is calling this now a tornado emergency for Brent and for Centerville. This is a very dangerous situation, reminiscent of May 27, 1973, uh, that horrible, horrible Sunday night where so much of Brent was destroyed. I hope it dissipates. Maybe it will, but we have reason to believe that it won't. This is a day where we expect these long track violent tornadoes, which is more than likely what this thing is right now. And again, you can see that uh, uh, debris signature uh, that is just so clear. That's Alabama Highway 5, by the way, coming south out of Brent right here, and uh, Brent here, Centerville here. We'll watch the volume scan, and again, uh, the next volume scan, you'll see it pop up, and it's going to move pretty quickly northeast. Uh, this particular tornado is moving at a pretty good clip, uh, but let me just read the text of the National Weather Service warning. The tornado damage threat is catastrophic. A confirmed large destructive tornado is eight miles southwest of Brent, that blue spot right there moving east at 50, moving northeast at 50 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. There's no red lights out here. It's just going to keep on going. And uh, it's basically going to be right in town awfully soon here. Uh, so again, Brent, Centerville, two cities are side by side. The Cahaba kind of separates the two. Uh, and I just don't like the way this, uh, I don't like the way this is looking right here, guys. This is tough. That's 25 right there. The old sawmill restaurant sits right there. Violent tornado right here, downtown Brent here, downtown Centerville. This is the Bibb County Courthouse is right here. Uh, this is just really tough. Uh, so uh, let's, ta let's take John Brown's. Uh, uh, John is uh, five miles north of Brent, and he's going to wait right there. Uh, is this John's camera? Okay, thank you. This is John Brown. He's near Brent. Let's double box this one. I want to leave John's camera. He, and again, 
you know, for where he is, it's going to be hard to see anything. So we're going to double box and put me in the big box with a radar, and John will be in the little smaller box, but I want to keep his camera up. And uh, if anything happens, John is going to go into Brent from his location. Again, he's five miles north of Brent. He can't, the, the ultimate goal is to get to where you look in here from the south. He can't do that safely. He, he's up here. John is located about right here. Uh, and he's doing the right thing. He's, he's going to let it pass, and then he's going to get in there and maybe look at the back of this thing or see what kind of damage has occurred here. But I wish I had the words, the, vo the vocabulary of power to, to, to encourage you to, to go in a safe place here. Um, I'm an old country boy from Butler County, Alabama, and, and words don't come easily for me sometimes, but this is urgent. Uh, and again, we don't say that to scare anybody, but this is a very destructive, violent tornado, most likely. We've seen images of this thing when it was in Hale County. And again, you can see the uh, debris being lofted here up to about 15,000 feet as a very, very lowered CC. What, what that, that tr tree limbs. And uh, if, if we had any buildings hit, parts of buildings, boards, bricks, glass, nails, and things like that, anything except a hydrometeor. And again, that's in the process of moving right into Brent right now. And uh, keep in mind, the way the volume scans work, the radar has to do some work. So it, it could be in Brent right now. It could very well be in Brent now. And then moving up through Centerville. Uh, so again, John Brown, uh, the stream you see, John is up Highway 5. He's probably about right here on the northern edge of the polygon looking down into this. And again, all you're going to see is a big rain mass. That's pretty much all we've seen today. Uh, but this is an extremely dangerous situation. So uh, let's very quickly go back to St. Clair County. Again, we're going to bounce back and forth. Uh, I hate to get away from this one, but the St. Clair signature is not as uh, impressive. But hey, it's still a dangerous storm. Uh, let's put the velocity display, and again, you can see the evidence of a tornado near Margaret, right here. All right, here. And uh, that's kind of moving. That's Alabama Highway 174 right here. Um, that is located, runs from Odenville back up to Springville. Um, goodness. Wellhouse, if you're listening, be sheltered. Um, Branchville, Odenville, U.S. 411, Interstate 59, U.S. 11 up here. But nobody should be along Alabama Highway 174. Uh, it's a nasty, nasty looking signature here coming right across Highway 174. And that's going to be moving right up toward Asheville. Uh, if you're in the town of Asheville, please be sheltered. Uh, and if you have an Asheville mailing address, this is Whitney Junction right here, St. Clair Springs. That's Alabama 23 right here, St. Clair Springs here. The uh, state prison is on Highway 23. Uh, everybody in the path of this thing has got to be sheltered. So again, Steele, Asheville, Shoal Creek Valley, Odenville, Branchville, Margaret. It's right over Margaret now. Springville, St. Clair Springs. Please be sheltered. Let's go back to Bibb County. We're going to go back and forth. And again, John's got the camera. He's on Highway 5 in Bibb County that's looking down to the south. And again, the, the, the Jefferson County tornado warning is over. This storm is in St. Clair. Just wanted to make that perfectly clear. So again, there's your velocity couplet. Let's go back to our correlation coefficient. There's your tornado, debris being lofted right pretty much into Brent. Um, I was hoping this thing might go north or south of town, but it's going to go right through town. Um, that's tough. This is the uh, new U.S. I call it the new U.S. 82 over here. Crosses the uh, Cahaba right here, Centerville here, Brent here, and uh, this is just looks bad. This is a tornado emergency, a tornado emergency for the cities of Centerville and Brent in Bibb County in West Alabama. And again, if this thing continues, and there, here's our new warning right here. It just popped up for Shelby and Northern Chilton, okay? So this is a new tornado warning. This is going to be to the south of the first tornado that came through Shelby County. So here's your new tornado warning. And again, Brent Centerville, be in your safe place. This in, in Shelby County is going to be basically from the Shelby County Airport in Columbiana south into Northern Chilton. This includes Jemison. So in that broad zone from Union Grove, Jemison, up to the Shelby County Airport. This includes Calera, Columbiana, the town of Shelby, uh, the town of Wilton. This includes Montevallo. Uh, if you're in any of these communities out here in southern Shelby, northern Chilton, be aware that that tornado is coming right up in your direction. And uh, this is uh, right now a large destructive tornado, and this is a tornado emergency that is in effect. Again, the Weather Service calling this a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado that's over Brent, uh, that's moving east-northeast at 50 miles an hour. Uh, so that's your tornado that's going to be crossing over Brent and then coming right up into southern Shelby 
and into northern Chilton counties. Of course, it will not affect this entire area. Polygons are, you got to have a little room for error here. You, you can't make them too narrow. Uh, but the bottom line is, if you're in the polygon, you've got to respect that. And understand, if you were hit by a tornado earlier today, Helena, Pelham, you are not in this. Helena, Pelham, Greystone, Mount Laurel, Grace, uh, Shoal Creek, all these places hit so hard by tornadoes earlier today, you're not in this. You don't have to do anything. Alabaster, you're not in the polygon. Helena, Pelham, Hoover, Chelsea, Westover, you are not involved in this. Again, this is going to be for Montevallo, Wilton, Calera, Columbiana, the town of Shelby, Jemison, and everybody else in southern Shelby and northern Chilton counties. So let's zoom back into the, uh, the TDS that's coming into Brent. And, uh, you know, I, it's just horrifying. You, what you're watching here, it's graphic violence. Uh, I have no joy in, in watching these signatures like this. But, uh, again, it's right out here near the old Sawmill restaurant. And, again, this is Main Street in Brent right there. That's Highway 5, Main Street, and coming right up into town. Uh, and, again, uh, uh, this is Centerville right over here, Brent right here. Violent tornado coming right up into town. John Brown is, again, he's on the move now. John is in this torrential rain. John is, John's position is on Highway 5. He's coming down from the north, and John will stop. He's not going to get involved. Look, nobody wants a part of this. I mean, this, this is extremely dangerous stuff. John will stop when it's safe. Then he will go in and look and see what's happened for us down there in uh, Bibb County. We hope and we pray that somehow you get through this with little damage. But uh, again, we've seen this tornado. It's a, this is a tornado emergency. The potential damage threat by the Weather Service, the term they're using is catastrophic. A confirmed large tornado right on top of Brent moving northeast at 55. Uh, so again, that is what's happening in Bibb County right now. Let's go back to St. Clair County really quick, and we're going to leave Bibb County's camera up with John Brown. Let's go to St. Clair County. This is going to be the uh, tornado that is between Springville and Odenville. All right, right here. So, um, again, the circulation's a little broad, but clearly there could be a tornado down. This is Springville. This is Odenville. That's Alabama Highway 174 right there. And that circulation is right on top of Highway 174 moving northeast, and next in line is going to be the town of Asheville, which is right here. Uh, St. Clair County is an interesting county. There are two county seats in St. Clair County, Asheville and Pell City. Uh, back in the old days, there's mountainous terrain in here. It was hard to get the horse and buggies over the mountains, and they had two county seats. And uh, so you've got a courthouse for St. Clair County in Asheville and one down in Pell City. Uh, this one is headed for the northern courthouse for the town of Asheville. Uh, the school complex, the high school, the middle school, the elementary school is right here on U.S. Highway 231. This is the split. 411 going to Odenville, 231 going to Pell City. Shoal Creek Valley sits right in through here. So, uh, again, just be aware. If you're in Asheville, if you have an Asheville mailing address, if you're up here at Whitney Junction, you've got to be in a safe place. Now, like the Bibb County storm, is this as violent? Probably not, but, hey, a tornado is a tornado, okay? So be sheltered if you're in St. Clair County for this storm. Let's go back to Bibb County. And, again, we're watching John Brown's uh, live stream. We're all watching this together. And, again, John is in torrential rain. He's coming into the uh, Bibb County storm from the north, which is not the direction you want to come in, but he's coming in safely. He's not going to get close to this thing. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at the uh, CC once again. Uh, we'll have the lowered CC uh, right there, right in downtown Brent. Uh, this, again, this is Main Street. The uh, First Baptist Church was destroyed. Uh, the building, wow. The First Baptist Church was destroyed May 27, 1973. A man by the name of Andrew Mitchell was killed. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, it was a horrible, horrible event. And this thing's coming right up towards Centerville. If there's any difference in the track of this one in the 1973 tornado, this one's a little farther to the south, and this one's coming right up on Centerville. I mean, right up on downtown Centerville. Again, this is Main Street in Brent. There's probably some damage here. But instead of coming right down Main Street, it's coming right up into Centerville, right here. Uh, this says East Town. This is Centerville. All right. So uh, again, this is a very, very, very dangerous storm. You should be sheltered. Uh, there's not much we can do at this point. Uh, hopefully, you sheltered when the warning was issued about 35, 40 minutes ago. Uh, but remember, from here, this is going up into Southern Shelby and Northern Chilton. The Weather Service continues a tornado warning for uh, both of those areas. Uh, in that, uh, this is going to probably stay down. This could be one of these violent long track tornadoes. And again, we've got John Brown's uh, video here. And John, he's going to freeze up from time to time. Understand 
when you've got tornadoes and you've got the cell networks and the instability, it can come and go, but we're going to stay with that, and we're going to see if we have any. John will let us know if there's any damage down there. He's coming right up on this, and he's going to, once it's safe, he'll either loop around on the south side or just check the damage out. But this, this thing is on top of Centerville right now. Wow. That's just uh, horrifying. There hasn't been a radar scan in a long time where there wasn't a, a yeah. debris signature. Right. And again, uh, we, we have great concern this could cause catastrophic damage. Uh, Nothing is good about this. Nothing. Oh, look at it now. Uh, oh boy. Mm. Um, so again, you know, the, the only thing I can say, it, it might have scooted a little south of downtown Brent, and maybe scooting a little south of downtown Centerville. But boy, it's close. Uh, it's crossing over uh, US 82 right now. And uh, next, it'll be crossing over Highway 25 right here, the community of six miles. It's right here. So uh, let's expand this back out real quick, and let's show Shelby and uh, uh, northern Chilton counties. And uh, uh, Evan and Brian are actually at the Shelby County Airport, so okay. north of it as well. So we've got uh, our two meteorologists uh, at the Shelby County Airport, which is right here, and they're going to be north of this. There's your violent tornado. And again, it's going to be coming out through the eastern part of Bibb County like this. Um, and again, uh, this is Alabama Highway 139 that goes from Wilton down to Randolph. And it'll be crossing Highway 139, then crossing over into either northern Chilton or southern Shelby counties in through here. So a tornado is over Centerville. Uh, it's going to be moving through uh, the eastern part of Bibb County. This is a tornado that can cause great property damage, and it can cause loss of life if you don't do anything. You've got to do something. Uh, and once it crosses out of Bibb, it's going to cross over to northern Chilton and parts of southern Shelby counties. Uh, and again, in Shelby County, understand, if you were hit earlier by a tornado, a lot of people were, places like Helena and Pelham, uh, Lee Branch, uh, some of the Greystone neighborhoods, uh, Shoal Creek, those kind of places. This will not affect you. This is south of you. So you, a lot of people are trying to clear, clear up trees and uh, homes have collapsed. It's just a horrible situation there. This does not affect the first damage path that came through Shelby County. This is south of there. Uh, so again, there's your tornado, which is now just to the east of Centerville. It's moved out of Centerville and Brent. And uh, we're going to find out from John Brown here in just a second uh, what's going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, John has taken the back road to meet Highway 25. Um, seeing John, uh, reports of uh, injuries and entrapment in the eastern part of Birmingham on uh, Willow Drive off US 11. This is from the tornado that's in St. Clair County right now. Um, numerous trees down, and again, this is the tornado that uh, came through the eastern part of Jefferson County, eastern part of Birmingham. It's in St. Clair County now. So, uh, if we can just go back with me with radar for just a thank you. Uh, so again, tornado, eastern Bibb, southern Shelby, northern Chilton, be in a safe place. That is a large, destructive, violent tornado. Let's go back to St. Clair County real quick. And uh, we've got a sky watcher that is in Margaret, and uh, he reports no damage in his immediate area in Margaret a couple of minutes ago. And this tornado went pretty close to Margaret. Uh, but at this point, we, we heard of no damage in St. Clair County. We have heard of damage in Jefferson County. The circulation looks pretty broad. That's not really a classic tornadic circulation here, but it's approaching the junction here where 411 and 231 split and it looks like the rotation is broad and it's going to really pass maybe a bit south of Asheville uh, down here toward the Shoal Creek Valley. So uh, Shoal Creek Valley, just be aware you've got broad circulation and you're under a tornado warning. That sucker could tighten back up at any minute, okay? It could tighten back up at any time. So just be aware of that and you need to stay sheltered. You can see the tornado warning polygon for St. Clair County. This does include Ragland. It includes Steel, Shoal Creek Valley, Asheville, Whitney Junction. Everybody in the polygon needs to stay sheltered. This does not include Pell City. This is for the northern part of St. Clair County. Again, that circulation is broad, but it could tighten back up. So let's go back down to Bibb County. 
And again, we've got uh, Brian Peters and Evan Chickvera. They're on that storm that's coming up into southern Shelby County. You can see their uh, live stream on the bottom there. Then that's John Brown's stream on the top window. He's trying to get up into this Bibb County tornado in a safe way. Th this is a uh, th this is extremely dangerous stuff. Extremely dangerous. And don't you dare go out and try and shoot some YouTube video to get you know eighteen dollars and twenty cents of Google AdSense money. You could risk your your life doing that. That makes no sense. If you've not been trained in spotting, you got no business being out there today. And I've seen way too many people try and do that. But there's a large violent tornado, which is just north of US 82. And that's going to be moving east northeast. And again, uh, wow, six mile is here. This is Alabama Highway 139, uh, Briarfield, Ashby. I drove right down that road uh, Saturday a week ago. Um, so if you're anywhere close to these places we've called out, remember to help us. Call or text somebody that you know that might happen to live in these places and have them go to a safe place. This is a very, very violent tornado, and that's coming right up in the general vicinity of Briarfield and Ashby. The town of Wilton sits right up here. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 25. Highway 139 goes down to the south, down toward uh, Randolph and uh, ultimately toward Maplesville, Highway 139 there. Uh, but that thing is going to be crossing Highway 139 around Briarfield or Ashby. Uh, wow. So be sheltered here. It's probably going to clip the far northern part of Chilton County, then come up on US 31 and I-65. This is US 31 from Calera going down to Jemison. That's I-65 coming south out of Calera down toward uh, Clanton. And obviously the greatest concern now is the fact we don't want anybody driving along Interstate 65 or U.S. Highway 31. Nobody should be on either one of those highways right now, south of, say, the Tank Farm exit in Pelham, and as far south as, let's just say, the Thorsby exit, or Jemison, Thorsby. So nobody on U.S. 31, nobody on I-65 with a very dangerous tornado that is down. This could be a long track tornado. This thing could be down for a long time. It's been down for a long time. And again, that's coming right out. The community of Six Mile is right here. That's Alabama Highway 25. That's Alabama Highway 139 coming south out of Wilton, Briarfield, Ashby, down toward Randolph. And uh, from there, it's going to cross over into northern Chilton and extreme southern Shelby County. So uh, I wonder if the uh, Weather Service in Birmingham is going to uh, abandon or go to their shelter here, Taylor. Uh, I they, haven't seen that yet, but I would not be surprised. I think, you know, th they're up here. And they're really, I think, far enough north as to where they're going to be okay. So I think they'll keep control. If they have to abandon the station, they'll give control to the National Weather Service in Peachtree City, Georgia. They're backing them up today. Uh, and again, this is the radar site right here on one side of I-65. They're on the other side of the Shelby County Airport. Uh, but let's go back to the St. Clair County storm. That's our Bibb County storm coming up toward Chilton, northern Chilton and southern Shelby. We're working two tornado warnings right now, two. So let's go back to uh, St. Clair County. Um, And this is broad rotation. It's broad, but understand there still could be a tornado down at any time now. Uh, the greatest chance of a tornado is just about maybe two miles south of the uh, high school. Near the vocational school sits right here, right off uh, 231. So it's near the vocational school. If we have a tornado down, that's an if. We don't know at this point. We don't see debris being lofted. And that circulation is coming right over toward Shoal Creek Valley, uh, north of Raglan. Uh, and from there, it's going to cross over into uh, Calhoun, and we'll just have to see how this thing behaves if the Weather Service extends the warning. In a case like today, it might not be a bad idea to do that. Uh, it's just a course of least regret. We really don't see the intense circulation here. It's pretty broad, and I would suggest that's not really a tornado signature here, but still, based on what's happened so far today and what the atmosphere has produced, you, you've got to take this thing seriously. So again, if you're in Asheville, if you're in Shoal Creek Valley, if you're in Raglan, uh, you need to be sheltered until this thing gets out of the county. So we'll give you an all-clear as soon as we can do that. We can give you an all-clear for Branchville, Odenville, Springville, Margaret. So again, for St. Clair County, if you live in Springville, Branchville, Odenville, Margaret, all-clear for you. The concern, it's to the east of there. And again, this uh, circulation coming right on top of Shoal Creek Valley, a little south of Asheville. So be sheltered. Let's go back to our storm in Bibb County. And again, we're watching John Brown's live stream at the top. John is trying to come back in a position so we can uh, intercept this storm or at least see what type of uh, damage um, that's been done down there. 
And then we've got Evan Chickvera and Brian Peters, our meteorologist in Shelby County, uh, in a position to intercept uh, this storm. Again, they're going to be coming in from the north. So there's your tornado right here. And again, this is a very large destructive tornado with debris that's being lofted. Uh, it's just south of Six Mile. That's Alabama Highway 25 right here. And that's going to be crossing Alabama Highway 139, which is right here, Briarfield, uh, Ashby, down to Randolph. And from uh, Bibb County, it's going to cross over into the extreme northwestern corner of Chilton County uh, and then back up into southern Shelby County. Uh, and uh, again, this is the location, right, of uh, Brian and Evan? Yes. Okay. So uh, they are right here. And um, we'll see again. Brian, I don't worry about Brian. I mean, Brian has been doing this a long time. And he's going to be safe. And he understands the magnitude of this uh, threat here. But uh, we're going to stay with his camera. But again, that's our tornado debris signature that's just as strong as it's been. It, it has not wavered here in the last 15 to 30 minutes. And uh, we are, uh, as soon as we find out what's happened in Brent, we'll pass that along in Centerville. Um, best possible case is that perhaps the violent tornado pass may be just south of those two cities. But boy, it's a close call, uh, very close call. Um, and we got a lot of trees down from the St. Clair County storm in the eastern part of Birmingham. I've seen a lot of reports of that. Uh, uh, but again, the, the focus right now, it is, this is Shelby County right here. This is Chilton, and this is Bibb. And again, you can see the TDS right here. Uh, and uh, we can give an all clear to Centerville and Brent. Uh, the danger from this storm has ended for you. We hope you got away with little damage, but I'm afraid that's not going to be the case. We'll find out here very shortly. Uh, and again, uh, John Brown will tell us much more. He's down there in that area. But nobody, I mean, nobody should be driving along Alabama Highway 139. Uh, that is the road from Wilton down to Randolph and down to Maplesville. And again, you can see these communities out here, Briarfield and Ashby, and that thing is going to be crossing Highway 139 in just a matter of minutes, matter of minutes. Uh, they're suppose going to, uh, I think the new state prison is under consideration for this general area down here. Uh, but it's going to cross over into northwestern Chilton County. And from northwestern Chilton County, it's going to cross over into southern Shelby County, pretty close to Calera. And again, we've got uh, uh, Evan Chickvera and Brian Peters. They'll be working this storm from southern Shelby County. You can see their, uh, their live stream on the bottom over there. And John Brown is in Bibb County kind of going back into the Centerville Brent area to see what's happened down there. So uh, I'll let Taylor, you take it here for a few minutes. I'm going to gather up some reports here real quick. Okay, we are getting word from the National Weather Service that they are going to extend the warning as well for the that northern circulation into uh, Calhoun and Etowah counties, and that has just been issued. So I am going to take us back up there and talk about that new warning that's just been issued. Of course, we're watching this violent circulation that's about to cross over into uh, northern Chilton and southern Shelby County, but I do want to take us up so we can see where that new uh, warning is going to be. And I'm going to switch over here to the velocity so we can see the wind speeds. Um, and this is going to uh, include everybody in Etowah County, south of the city of Gadsden. So that's going to be Old Harmony. That's also going to include portions of 759. Gadsden, you are right on that line there. So if you uh, live in or around the city of Gadsden, I'd say you get to your safe place just because you're right on that line. This warning does include the city of Hoax Bluff, Ball Play, Pilgrim's Rest, Cobb City, and then also in portions of uh, Calhoun County, this is going to include Crystal Springs, uh, Colwell, Colvin's Gap, and uh, it does not include Alexandria. It is going to be right on the line of Ohatchee. So uh, those of you, I know you just dealt with a tornado warning in Ohatchee. We had a lot of damage in Ohatchee, and we've actually had some uh, fatalities in Ohatchee today. This circulation is likely going to stay to your north. Uh, you are right on the line of that warning polygon there. This will include Glencoe, Pilgrim's Rest, Old Harmony, Markton, Hoax Bluff, Gadsden is right on the line there, and uh, Crystal Springs, and uh, it's going to be northern portions of Calhoun County, which does not include the city of Jacksonville. It does not include Alexandria and does not include Sachs. Uh, also, Aniston, you are not included in that Calhoun County warning. So right now we're looking at this circulation here as passed to the east of Asheville at this point. Kind of broad circulation picking up here, but it's moving in the general direction. It's going to ride the Calhoun and Etowah County line there. It's eventually going to be crossing over 77 
and then eventually moving towards 431. So I want to draw this line here and kind of give you a, an idea of what we're looking at. It's going to be moving towards Oak Level, the Markton area, Pilgrim's Rest, um, and I will pull Storm Track. We haven't done that yet. So uh, this circulation is moving to the northeast at 55 miles per hour. And if you are in that polygon, if I just called your city out, you need to be getting to that safe place now. I don't want you to wait until the circulation gets to you. Uh, so that means grab your family, get your pets, head down to that safe place, make sure you've got that helmet on, make sure you've got your shoes on, and you are just staying in that safe place until we can give you the all clear. But this is going to be moving into uh, Markton at 534, Southside at 535, Oak Level 537, Pine Grove at 539, uh, Reeds Mill at 540. So you can kind of see some of these locations here. Uh, that this circulation is going to be moving towards. I will check the correlation coefficient, and I have to say we haven't really been picking up a debris signature, but just based on what we've seen so far with the storms today, we have to assume that this could be dropping a tornado at any moment or that we do have a tornado uh, on the ground. So based on this velocity here, the National Weather Service has chosen to extend this warning polygon for portions of Calhoun and Etowah County. So we just talked about that storm. I want to go back down to the violent tornado we have ongoing uh, in, in Bibb County that's about to move into extreme northwestern Chilton County. Uh, so we can see it here. It's moving through Ashby and Briarfield at this point. I'm going to put on that correlation coefficient. Uh, it's getting a little bit noisy just because we are pretty close to the radar site. Um, so I'm going to use the... Uh, Clearly, it's showing that there is still debris being lofted, but you can't get as clear of a picture as you can on this... Uh, velocity here. So this is moving right over the city of Ashby at this point. Uh, it's going to be moving across State Route 139 here pretty soon. And then it's going to be crossing over into northwestern portions of Chilton County here, moving to the city of Wilton. Let me redraw this circle here. Um, in, near the city of Wilton in southern Shelby County. Here's that new circulation here. It's passing just to the north of Oakley. And eventually, if this continues on the same path, it will be crossing over 31 and 65. This, this current trajectory will take it over 31 and 65. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a polygon, on, or rather a uh, storm track on this one as well. It's going to be moving to the northeast at... 55 miles per hour. These are approximate times, so uh, don't wait until the time shows up for you. But Clara, it'll be moving towards the Clara area, 540. Shelby Springs at 544. And uh, the city of Shelby at 549. So we have what has been a long track, violent tornado on the ground from Greene County that has traveled all the way through portions of Bibb County and is now about to cross over into Chilton and Shelby County. So I want to circle this circulation here. Has now just crossed through Ashby. It's right along County Road 33. Let's check this correlation coefficient. And that is where that, that lowering of the CC is. This is that tornado debris signature right here. Uh, but there is a lot of noise going on at this point. So we're going to stay with the velocity uh, to get a clear picture of where this circulation is and where it is headed. Uh, so at this point, Nobody should be driving along I-65 or uh, 31 at this point, as th this is a large, violent tornado. It's been on the ground for a long time. We've been watching these long-tracked supercell tornadoes today. Uh, this will be moving in the general direction of Valley Junction. Uh, Montevallo, you're in this warning polygon. Stay in your safe place. <sighs> if this does continue on this, this current track, it does look like this storm will, will move right south of your location, but it could clip some southern portions of Montevallo, so I want you to stay in that safe place. This is headed towards Valley Junction, Roberta, and then eventually it's going to be moving on towards Calera here in the next few minutes. And I want to circle where Brian and Evan are. So we do have Brian and Evan. Uh, they are along I-65, very close to Calera here, so they're going to try to intercept. It looks like they actually are potentially on the move again. Uh, right here is where they are located. So they're going to try to give us a visual 
on, uh, and this, this is their shot right now. So uh, that's what we're looking at. At this point, they're not going to probably be able to see that circulation, but they will, coming up here pretty soon, likely get, a, get an image of it. And with this latest radar scan, we have seen uh, that storm cross out of Bibb County, and it is now into northwestern Chilton County. So this is moving along County Road 173. Uh, this is going to be moving along County Road 54, State Route 155, and uh, I've circled there where that's where that uh, tornado is at this point. So it has crossed out of Bibb County into northwestern Chilton County, and it's going to continue moving northwest here, eventually crossing here pretty soon into southern Shelby County. So I want to put on that correlation coefficient again. There is where we have that tornado debris signature showing up, and I also want to take us back to the other circulation that we are tracking because we have two separate tornado warmed storms that we are watching very carefully at this point. So let's move up here. I'm going to put on the storm relative velocity and this is going to give us a look at what is, is, it's hard to pick out an exact circulation on here. There's circulation going on. There's broad circulation here in this entire area and this could drop a tornado at any time. So this is headed towards Old Harmony, Pilgrim's Rest, eventually headed in the direction of Cobb City, Glencoe, Caldwell, Colvin's Gap, and headed towards the city of Reeves and Hoax Bluff. So if you are in this polygon, which is really, it's riding along the Calhoun, Etowah County line, uh, stay in that safe place. That means that make sure you and your family and your pets are down in that safe place with your helmet on, with your shoes on, and uh, we'll continue to watch this circulation as it moves towards, uh, towards, towards the northeast. At this point, I haven't received any reports of damage from this circulation, um, but of course we're going to take it very seriously like we are every storm today because we've been dealing with just violent storms all afternoon. Um, with these tornadoes that have just been long track tornadoes. We've had a lot of damage today. We've already had some loss of life today uh, in the Ohatchee area. And uh, we're hoping that we do not have any more loss of life, but we are dealing with some very violent tornadoes. And so we'll go back down to this, this storm here. And uh, we'll look at this correlation coefficient here. And this is going to show us that violent tornado right along County Road 54 in northwestern Chilton County. Now, if you are in Chilton County and you're in Clanton, you are not included in this, this warning polygon. This is well to the north of you. This is to the north of Jemison. This is to the north of Thorsby. This is moving in the general direction of Calera. And I'm going to circle where Evan and Brian are at this point. They're right here. They're on 31. So if they continue moving south on 31, they're going to probably give us a pretty good, pretty good picture, a pretty good visual of this, this tornado that is on the ground moving through northwestern Chilton County. So let's zoom out. I want to kind of give you a, uh, a picture of some of the cities in Shelby County. We have uh, Columbiana included in this warning polygon. Shelby Springs, Calera. Eventually, this would be moving towards Wilsonville. This, this circulation is getting pretty close to Brian and Evan. Uh, do we have their shot pulled up? Can we uh, take a look at that and see uh, what, they are, what they are seeing at this point? Because that circulation is going to be coming up on them. Yeah, Evan and Brian. So, so we're looking at their shot right now. This circulation is getting pretty close to them. They're going to be on 31 right there. And they're about to cross south of the storm, which is where you want to be because they don't want to be in that rain. Uh, so it looks like they're going to give us a pretty good angle here of, of this, what has been a long track violent tornado at this point. Because we're so close to the radar site, having a hard time pick out that uh, debris signature, but it's there. We've had a debris signature with this storm for all the way since Greene County. Uh, so th this storm has been on the ground for a long time. I want to point out that the tornado warning has been expired for Bibb. This tornado is moving away from you. So if you live in Bibb County, uh, you can have an all clear now that includes Ashby, Briarfield, Oakley. This tornado is now in northern Chilton County, about to cross over into southern Shelby County here. Coming up on Calera here pretty soon. Uh, so this is going to be moving towards the city of Calera. This is passing just to the south of Montevallo. 
Uh, stay in your safe place, Montevallo, because you're still in that polygon, but this is likely going to pass right to the south of you, headed in the general direction of Calera here pretty soon, and then eventually into Shelby Springs and Columbiana after that. This will be crossing over I-65 here, uh, so we don't want anybody driving on I-65. We don't want anybody driving on 31 south of Alabaster in Shelby County. Uh, as this, this violent tornado is going to be crossing over the highway here pretty soon. Let's go back to that CC product real quick uh, if we can. Uh, I'm the, having uh, a hard time with the uh, Yeah, with the uh, ground noise. return. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's go back to the uh, velocity. Uh, it is uh, 537 now. It's uh, been a really rough day. And again, uh, to get your bearings straight here, we've got a uh, tornado, uh, as you can see right here. So this thing has crossed Highway 139, and it's in the process of uh, crossing. This is Alabama Highway 155, by the way. 155 runs from Montevallo down to Jemison. Uh, it'll be, it's, it's, it's sitting on the Shelby-Chilton County line. And uh, again, you can see, Unit 32, that's uh, Brian, right? Brian and Evan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, these guys are here, and they're going to have to be careful. Again, I trust Brian to be in a safe place, but this is coming right for Calera. So again, if you live in Calera, anywhere in Calera, if you have a Calera mailing address, you've got to be in a safe place right now. Uh, so again, uh, we're watching the camera from Evan, which is on the lower right. And uh, again, uh, John Brown is trying to come back on this storm from the, uh, from the west. But this will be crossing US 31 near Calera, crossing Interstate 65 near Calera. So we advise absolutely no traffic now on either US 31 or I-65 from Alabaster down to Jemison uh, for about the next 15 minutes. So again, we have potential for a violent tornado that is located uh, only maybe a mile or two west of US 31 and west of Interstate 65, and that's going to be crossing these two major thoroughfares right here. And we've got to, can we get Evan and, and Brian, or do we, do, can we talk with them? Yeah, uh, can we talk with these guys? Uh, Denise, are, are they on the board? Anybody in the back? If one of you ladies could check and see if there's anybody back. Um, okay, uh, we're going to get them on here in just a second. I, I want to talk to them and uh, because they're looking at this monster. I mean, they've got a direct look at this thing. And uh, so, again, you guys back in the back, the minute we can talk with them, please let me know. So you've got a violent tornado that's coming up on uh, Calera. Uh, again, this is, when it says Calera right here, that's kind of old downtown Calera. Uh, this is 31, that's I-65, and more than likely this might pass near or just south of here, whatever. If you're in the polygon, you've got to be in a safe place. The polygon uh, stretches from uh, the, the southernmost alabaster exit, the Shelby County Airport really, Shelby County Airport exit uh, down into about uh, Jemison. So Evan, uh, tell us, uh, let's take your shot full screen for a minute. Let's uh, What do you have there? And first off, where are you exactly? Uh, pretty scary. We're, we're, we are uh, 31. We're just past. I mean, we couldn't be like three miles south of the, the downtown Little Calera. And we are looking towards right into the heart of this storm. In fact, I'm a little worried that here within the next couple of minutes, we're going to have to bail and go further south because we're actually seeing upward motion on the other side of these trees. It is eerily quiet. Uh, within the last few minutes, we went from kind of a, an overcast sky to this odd blue um, the wind is actually blowing away from us so our backs would be to the wind that is the suction coming as this storm approaches us here uh, we've positioned ourselves as best we can there's a lot of trees down here so this is the best view we could get but i would not be surprised james if within the next few minutes uh, we see something coming out from behind these trees because uh, you can just feel the environment changing here. We went from a temperature of about 66 to 68 most of the day. We crossed here south into Shelby County and into um, uh, south of uh, Calera here, and it has gotten very muggy. It's very unsettled. And uh, again, we, according to radar, we are smack in the path of uh, this storm. So we're going to stay here as long as we can. What we may end up doing is backtracking. 31 is directly behind me. So if you're looking uh, to the south and to the west, uh, 31 and 65 are behind me. We may back up and follow this kind of uh, in a more or less uh, parallel form. Uh, you can actually hear the winds picking up now. Very, very eerie. Um, wow. Uh, Kind of an ominous sound uh, out here. I don't know if you guys Listen, can hear anything. You, you guys, the back you guys got to get in a safe this, place. That's the main concern. Just get in a safe place. All right. Um, all right. That's what we will do. We'll give you uh, some some feed if we can. Okay. We'll, we'll still. Uh, your your video is going to stay up on the air again. This is uh, Evan Chickvera 
and Brian Peters, two meteorologists that are uh, uh, on this uh, storm that has produced violent damage uh, back in parts of Bibb County around Centerville and Brent, and probably in other places too we don't even know about at this point. Uh, but again, we, we're really close to the radar side and that circulation. This is, what the, the, this is what it looked like coming through Shelby County earlier when it was a large violent tornado. Don't let the lack of a strong signature here fool you. It's, it's clearly down. And uh, again, we're, we're kind of watching their stream here. Uh, Brian and Evan, in fact, uh, if, if we still got them on the board, I, I, if you guys can hear me, I, I'd like to know, kind of tell us what you're seeing and exactly where you are. I don't know. I, I am. So. I am talking south. To them. We uh, we're we're in something. Yeah. If you guys, if, if you guys yeah, can hear me, we're, we're, on, uh, we're on the air. You see the wind whipping as we. Okay. Uh, okay. We're in the mezzo. Yeah, we're headed 31 south. Uh, winds really started to pick up. You can actually see the swirling in the low levels. If you look straight ahead, you can see those winds coming in and, and, and rotating. Uh, we're very close, according to the radar in our location, to the uh, base of this storm where that tornado would likely be. We could actually be seeing it here off to Chilton our County south line. and west. We're at the Chilton County line at the moment. Um, definitely seeing the lowering of the clouds too. Uh, like are you I said, driving north or south? We're a little bit too far. Are we are driving south. south. Okay, if you're at the Chilton County line, and uh, if you're at the Chilton County line, that circulation is going to be actually north of you. You're going away from it, which is a good thing, and you're safe. But you guys might want to turn around when you can and go back the other way so we can get a good look at the southern part of this thing. Okay, we'll do that in a second. All right, so thanks, guys. We're, we're going to go back. We'll get a better shot here. Okay. So again, uh, these guys, this is the county line right here, and we want them looking back up in this direction. And this tornado is crossing Interstate 65 right now uh, in extreme southern Shelby County. This is Calera, the downtown Calera right here. That's Alabama Highway 25 right there. Calera Elementary School is right there. The new high school is out here. This thing is crossing I-65 just north of the Chilton County line, and that's going to continue moving on to the east. Uh, and again, it's so close to the radar, we can't show that uh, debris tracker. Uh, let's go to John Brown's live stream if we can. I, I don't know if we can. Okay, we lost his live stream. Um, so we're going to stay with Evan and Brian Peters on their live stream here. But uh, the Weather Service in Birmingham, they, they, they're at the Shelby County Airport, and they are far enough away where they didn't have to give control back over to the weather service in Atlanta. But again, the uh, weather service in Birmingham indicating a large destructive tornado uh, near Calera moving east at 50 miles an hour. Um, okay, this is John Olchew. I think he's at mile marker 234 in Interstate 65. Uh, this is Olchew coming up on it uh, probably from the south. And again, uh, you can see a lot of folks have pulled over. This is uh, Old Shoe uh, on the same storm. And it looks like John Old Shoe might be coming into clear on Highway 25. He's got some flooding there and uh, he's got some rotation, but John is behind it. He's in a safe place. The, there's no tornado near his location right there. Uh, let's go back over to Evan and uh, uh, Brian Peters' live stream real quick. All right, uh, we might want to do a triple box with all with both of their videos, uh, and we we've, we've got these guys so close to this thing. Uh, all of these today have been rain wrapped. It, it has been uh, a frustrating day trying to get these on camera. But then again, that's life down here in Alabama. This is just the way it works. We're not going to be able to do that. But again, this is the uh, uh, debris tracker, and uh, you can see that well-defined tornado debris signature. Is this uh, MXX or BMX? Uh, this is BMX. Okay. And the tornado is now east of I-65, so we can give an all clear now to I-65 and US-31. So Interstate 65 and US-31, you're okay to travel again. Uh, the tornado, let's see, John, John is at, uh, uh, at the Shelby County Airport, and he's coming into it from the north. That's John's position, John Olshu. Uh, but anyway, uh, this thing is going to keep on moving. So let's expand this out. Let's talk about who's next in line for this thing. Let's talk about some of the other towns in southern Shelby County. This is a long track, violent tornado. Uh, and let's bring it out a little farther if we can. Uh, thank you. So uh, that's your tornado right there. This is Columbiana. That's Highway 25 uh, that comes out of Columbiana going down toward Calera. 
But again, the tornado is going to be tracking about like this. This is Alabama Highway 145. This goes from Wilsonville down to Clanton. And uh, this could be pretty close to the town of Shelby. The town of Shelby is down here south of Columbiana. And again, there's your uh, debris signature right there. Uh, this is continuing to move to the east-northeast, so the next major north-south highway is going to be uh, Alabama Highway 145. Nobody should be traveling along Highway 145. And let me just say right now, if you're on Lay Lake, you've got to be in a safe place. Lay Lake, uh, either side, I don't care which side, Shelby, Talladega County side, whatever side you're on, you need to be in a safe place right now. So again, uh, because this has produced so much damage, and we've seen some of the images coming out of Centerville and Brent, it's bad, uh, parts of Bibb County. Uh, this thing is going to continue to cross Highway 145, then cross right over Lay Lake. Uh, this is Fayetteville and Fayette uh, in, in uh, Talladega County. This is Talladega Springs right here. So again, if you have property on Lay Lake, if you're there right now, you need to be sheltered. Again, uh, you, you need to be in a small room, uh, lowest floor near the center, away from windows. Uh, and you need to be uh, in a position, if you can, wear a helmet. And we don't want anybody in a trailer or a car. Uh, we've tried to message that a lot today because those are the worst possible places to be in a situation like this. Uh, but again, uh, Wilsonville, Highway 145 going down to Clanton. This thing's going to be crossing through the, near the town of Shelby. There is a town of Shelby in southern Shelby County. Then crossing Highway 145, this is Lay Lake, and from there it's going to cross over into southern Talladega County. And again, the town of Fayetteville is right here. I would imagine a warning is going to be required soon for parts of southern Talladega County. A couple of quick notes, uh, Mayor Gary Waters of Pelham, he has declared a curfew, which will be in effect uh, uh, for their city. The curfew begins at 10 p.m. and ends at 6 a.m. every morning through Monday. Uh, so again, there is a curfew in the city of Pelham because of damage in Pelham, uh, 10 o'clock p.m. until 6 a.m. Uh, each night through Monday of, uh, of next week. And uh, thanks to uh, Brian White over in the newsroom for, uh, for that. Um, th these damage reports are not looking good, and again, if you're, and they're about to issue a, a new tornado warning for Talladega County in just a second. That'll be coming here shortly. Um, but we've, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. This is uh, Evan Chikvera and Brian Peters. And can we bring them in and uh, tell us uh, what you got there, Evan? It looks like some damage. Now tell us uh, what you got here, Evan. It looks like some damage. Yeah, uh, uh, James, where we were talking to you first, where we were parked looking over that pond and over those trees, we just drove back to it. We went maybe a half mile south, came back, and there were oak and Bradford pear trees completely uprooted. I'm glad we moved. It looks like the very southern edge of this uh, of, of the mezzo part of the storm may have come through here because the damage is very hit and miss. We were also in this neighborhood earlier. We're checking it out because this is a little bit further north uh, as we head back up 31. People were coming out looking at some of the damage. Houses seem okay, but there was definitely a clear path of some larger trees that had come down. It looks like this neighborhood fared okay as well. Of course, you got those trash cans that are down on the ground. But besides that, very happy to see that uh, at least here 31, about three miles south of downtown um, Calera, we, we are looking okay, at least in this neighborhood. What we're going to keep doing, James and Taylor, is, is kind of backtracking up uh, towards the downtown Calera area and then back towards 65, because I do believe looking back at the radar scan, we were on the very southern edge of the circulation. Like I said, we kind of kind of bailed south because we were a little too close for comfort there, but it got, uh, you, could, you could certainly uh, see those winds spinning and those clouds lowering as we got close, but there was no way we were going to see this. I think we were about as close as you could be, and even looking around uh, very close to the circulation, it was just more or less kind of whiteout conditions, but uh, right. I, I am happy to say talking, that in the two please. neighborhoods right. we have, Let's triple box while he's talking, please. in the two neighborhoods we have gone to, the houses are okay. Some oak and Bradford pear trees are down. There are trees in the roadway, and there's power lines down along uh, US 31 as you head away from Calera. I don't know exactly how that'll have any sort of uh, electrical implications, but we are now back on 31, and we are going to continue to head off to the north uh, here towards uh, downtown Calera. But again, uh, the storm has moved on, eerily quiet here now, and uh, we'll keep, uh, keep our live view up, and if we come across any sort of damage, uh, so we've seen some metal roofing as well in the roadway, but uh, that's been kind of the extent of things here on the southern side. Okay, and uh, again, that tornado produced major, major damage in parts of Hale County and Bibb County. Very bad damage. And again, what we do here, instead of breaking away and going to show what's happened in the past, we have to look at what's happening in the future. 
and warn people about the danger. And that's what we're doing here. So again, we have our new tornado warning now for Southern Talladega County. Let me just kind of tell you who's in the polygon here. And again, this is for our tornado. This is this large destructive tornado that has been producing so much damage. Uh, it's going to be coming through Southern Shelby County crossing Lay Lake. And again, if you're on Lay Lake, you've got to have a plan and you've got to implement that plan right now. Uh, this is Wilsonville. That's Highway 145. And again, the steam plants, it's right here. This is going to cross over into Talladega County. Uh, this is U.S. Highway 280, Childersburg down to Sylacauga. And the bound, and this does include a small part of Shelby County as well. It's kind of added a few spots in Shelby County. But the bottom line is it's mainly for southern Talladega County. This does include uh, really from Sylacauga back up to Childersburg and then back over to Sycamore. That's Highway 21. That's Alabama Highway 76. And again, there's your tornado right there. And you can see it's going to be coming right in through here. Lay Lake is here. This is U.S. Highway 280 right here. That's Highway 21. So uh, at this point, understand a significant tornado could be crossing in a matter of minutes, Lay Lake coming over into Talladega County, then crossing over US 280, then crossing over Highway 21. This has shown no sign of wanting to lift. It has been a, a long track tornado. So this uh, new tornado warning is in effect for Southern Talladega County. Uh, that is in effect until 630 this evening. Right now it's 553. Uh, and again, the Weather Service in their text, let me, I'm just reading straight off their text for this tornado right here. They're calling the uh, potential for damage catastrophic. They're calling this a confirmed large destructive tornado. Uh, and again, it's moving to the northeast at 50 miles an hour. Uh, Columbiana, and again, in the text of their warning, sometimes with Warren Gen, uh, they'll say things that are kind of funky when it comes to location here. Columbiana is here. You are in the polygon. And again, you should be sheltered. There's no doubt about that. But the greater probability of damage with this major tornado is going to be south of Columbiana. Uh, again, it's pretty close to Shelby Springs, right off Alabama Highway 25. Highway 25 goes up to Columbiana. That's your tornado right there. This is, uh, uh, again, the county seat of Shelby County. The, the better chance of any major, major, major damage is going to be a little south of Columbiana. Still, you be sheltered. Respect the polygon. If you're in it, you've got to do something about it. And again, Columbiana is here. Uh, you can see that tornado moving northeast now. We, we've seen some variations in movement today. From time to time, they kind of veer more to the right, but in this case, it looks like it's moving on to the northeast. So again, Columbiana here, possible large tornado, destructive tornado right here. And again, that's going to be uh, crossing Alabama Highway 145, which is right here uh, near Wilsonville. Wilsonville is in the polygon, probably just south of there. The uh, Gaston steam plant at Wilsonville, you should be implementing your tornado plan right now. Uh, with the uh, Alabama Power Company and all of their generating plants have very good uh, safety procedures during a tornado. So uh, this is the only tornado warning in the whole state, this one spot, right, Taylor? Uh, I had to, um. uh, let's be sure here. In fact, l let's do this. Let, let's, uh, and let me just say, if you're in Columbiana, you've got to be in a safe place. Downtown Columbiana is right here. Got to be in a safe place. Uh, Kingdom's Crossroads, the town of Shelby is right here. I think that's County Road 47 that goes down to the town of Shelby, but that thing is going to be crossing just south of Columbiana. This is very dangerous. Uh, any other tornado warnings? We're, we're going to stay on this if we don't have any. I, I had to nope. step out for just, okay, good. So we just have the one. So at this point, we have one tornado warning in the whole state, and it's this one. Uh, this is in effect for Shelby County. And again, uh, this is Lay Lake right here. This is Talladega County. Uh, right over here, southern Talladega County, and the warning basically runs from Childersburg down to Sylacauga, Seaburg down to Sylacauga. That would include Oak Grove, the Oak Grove that's in Talladega County. If you're in any of those places, be sheltered as uh, this is going to be crossing, first off, Alabama Highway 145, which is right here. Then it's going to cross over Lay Lake, which is right here. Then it's going to cross over U.S. Highway 280, which is here. Uh, probably passing north of Fayetteville, but the bottom line is this is a really, really, really dangerous type storm here. Um, and, and again, let me just say to our knowledge now, the death toll in the state is uh, five. Five people have been killed today. Uh, beyond that, I, I don't know the injury count. I don't know much more about it. There have been many, many places with damage, uh, many places with damage. Um, so again, there's your tornado debris signature right here, very close to Columbiana. Let's zoom into this. I want to show a little closer look at uh, Columbiana, kind of get your bearing straight so you can see where this thing is. This is really, really close to Columbiana. It's kind of doing a more northward job. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. It, it's not moving east. It's moving north, northeast at this point. Uh, but again, the Shelby County Courthouse is right there. Shelby County High School is right there. Elvin Hill Elementary School is right here. And again, that is a really violent tornado passing through the southern part of the city of Columbiana. Looks like it's passing just south of downtown Columbiana. 
and uh, this will keep on moving to the uh, east and ultimately cross Highway 145 over here. But uh, uh, hopefully everybody in Columbiana, you've been sheltered for the last 30 minutes. That's the one thing we do have today, long lead times, in that we've got these large, destructive, long-track tornadoes enabling us to do that. We can't do that for the smaller tornadoes. They come and they go. Uh, but again, this is a large, destructive tornado that is very close to Columbiana, moving northeast at 50 miles an hour. And again, that signature is as good as it's been all day. And this has caused major, major damage uh, in parts of Bibb County. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, so again, we'll be watching this really carefully as this keeps on cutting across that far east and southeastern part of mm. Shelby County. Wow. Yeah. You know, that thing is literally, it's almost at the schools. Uh, and I, I hate that. I mean, it is almost right at uh, Shelby County High School, Elvin Hill Elementary School, uh, which is just southeast of Columbiana, maybe just a little south of there. Uh, that's just uh, horrifying. Uh, so again, this is a very, very, very dangerous tornado, and it will keep on moving to the northeast. So let's expand this back out. And uh, again, uh, we, we've got so many reports of damage and so much that's happened today. I know that everybody wants to know what's going on here, but we have to continue to provide this life-saving information. We'll get to the damage reports as soon as we can. So again, to get your bearings straight, Wilsonville is here. This is Harpersville. This is Vincent. This is uh, Alabama Highway 25 uh, right here. This is Alabama Highway 149 right here. And again, that tornado is going to be crossing Highway 149. 25 cuts down to Columbiana. Uh, this is 149 right here. Uh, 145, I should say, Alabama Highway 145, and that'll be crossing right over 145, then cutting right across Lay Lake right here. Uh, again, this is Fayetteville down here in Talladega County. This is Talladega Springs. This is Childersburg. That's U.S. Highway 280 right here. And again, this is the edge of the polygon over to Alpine and Sycamore. Uh, so major tornado, Alabama Highway 145, Lay Lake. Nobody should be on 145 south of Wilsonville, between Wilsonville and the Chilton County line. Nobody should be on U.S. 231, U.S. 280 right now, uh, between, let's say, Harpersville and Sylacauga. So again, in terms of those listening on radio, nobody, and I mean nobody, should be driving on Alabama Highway 145 from Wilsonville to the Chilton County line. Nobody should be on U.S. 280 from Harpersville to Sylacauga. Wait until this thing passes. This will flip a car in a heartbeat. It's flipped uh, major 18-wheelers in these large vehicles today. Uh, and now they are calling this a tornado emergency. Uh, we now have a tornado emergency that has been issued for uh, Lay Lake, the far eastern part of Shelby County. Uh, this is Wilsonville. And listen, you've got to be sheltered right here. Uh, this... The motion on this has been somewhat erratic, but uh, if you're in Wilsonville, the Gaston Steam Plan of Alabama Power Company, you implement your tornado safety plan. You've got to go through that right now. Uh, this will be crossing the lake, Lay Lake, the Coosa River, over into Shelby or into Talladega County, which is right here. And again, this is going to be uh, US 280 right here, and uh, Childersburg is right here. So uh, understand, based on this current track, it could be pretty close to Wilsonville, maybe pretty close to Childersburg. Uh, you've got to stay sheltered, and you can't be in a mobile home. You cannot be in a car. You've got to be in a sheltered location or a safe place that you have identified. Um, uh, this is a fairly, again, I'm looking back at all of the damage this thing has caused, and it's just brutal, it's a bit brutal. Uh, uh, this has been on the ground basically since it got yeah. originally worn. Yeah, it, right. It, it hasn't lifted. No. This is a long track violent tornado, and it's very chaotic down in uh, Bibb County uh, with uh, uh, trees down and structural damage and uh, just major problems uh, here. So just understand this has caused major, major damage. All right. So uh, this is a tornado emergency. Uh, issued by the National Weather Service in Birmingham for a large, violent, destructive tornado that is just east of the city of Columbiana that is going to be crossing Alabama Highway 145, which is right here, crossing the Coosa, the northern part of Lay Lake, and be, it's going to be very close to Wilsonville, very close to Childersburg, uh, the Gaston steam plant. So again, right in through here, this is where we have to be really, really, really careful. More than likely, this is going to pass well to the north of the city of Sylacauga. Uh, the greater concern is for Childersburg here. That's Alabama Highway 76 going out toward Winterboro, which is along Highway 21. And of course, this thing has showed no sign, no sign of getting off the ground. It's been down the whole time and it's still down. And this is the dominant storm. This is that southern storm. And there's really nothing to the south to block the inflow. 
and it's in a very favorable environment for this kind of thing to stay in place. That's the reason we had concern over the past few days of these violent long track tornadoes. So we've got a major tornado right here that's about to cross through Wilsonville near the Gaston steam plant coming across the Coosa, coming right up toward Childersburg, which is right here on U.S. Highway 280. People in Childersburg need to be sheltered right now. Uh, that is the urgent call, Wilsonville, Childersburg. Anybody close to that, anybody in this polygon, you've got to be sheltered, but especially Wilsonville and Childersburg. And again, this is the velocity display showing the uh, tornado couplet, which is right here. It's been a day of violent tornadoes across the state. We have at least five people that have been killed. We have many people that have been hurt. We've got damage in so many counties right now, but the day isn't over yet. That's the thing. We have to focus on the current situation before we go to all the damage video and the tornado video and all this other stuff. We have to focus on preventing more loss of life. And that's the reason we're focusing on that. And the minute we're done with this, we'll turn it over to news and they can take care of reporting so much that has happened across the state today. So again, we have potential for a very dangerous tornado that is uh, just south of Alabama Highway 25, uh, about maybe four miles southwest of Wilsonville, moving northeast. It's about to come right into Wilsonville. Uh, and it's going to go right through Wilsonville. It's going to be very close to the uh, Gaston uh, steam plant. And from there, it's going to cross over Highway 280 near Childersburg. Uh, so there's your TDS, a tornado debris signature, Wilsonville, Childersburg. And you can see your polygon defined here. So you've got to be uh, uh, sheltered until this thing passes. We can give an all clear to Columbiana. This uh, tornado is now well to the east northeast of Columbiana, moving away from you. So for Columbiana, we'll give you an all clear. Uh, next in line is Wilsonville, right here. That's uh, Alabama Highway 25 going down to Columbiana. That's Alabama Highway 145 going down toward Clanton. Uh, so again, Wilsonville is right here. The steam plant is right here. And that thing is just coming right up through here. Uh, you've got to be sheltered. And again, next in line is going to be Childersburg right here. Uh, so anybody with a mailing address that's Wilsonville or Childersburg, please Understand this is an extremely dangerous, life-threatening situation, and you have to be in a safe place. Have to be in a safe place. The tornado warning continues, but again, for Columbiana, we can give an all-clear. Uh, this is the only tornado warning we have in the entire state at this point, uh, which is a very good thing. Okay, this is the only tornado warning at the moment in the entire state. But uh, understand, we're going to stay right with this. And again, at the minute we can get off get all of these storms out of here. We'll go to news and we can see some of the horrific damage across the state today. But again, the damage has been widespread, catastrophic. It's been horrible. We've had loss of life. We've had injuries. Uh, we will have much more on that as soon as we can. So tornadoes coming right up on downtown Wilsonville right here. Uh, the school sits right there. Steam plant is right here. Uh, the, the big, you've seen those big stacks. You can see those from miles and miles away. Uh, and from Wilsonville, that's going to be crossing over the river into Talladega County. It's going to be passing north of Fayetteville, uh, north of Talladega Springs, well to the north, and then moving up right into uh, Childersburg, which is located right here. Uh, so obviously, once this thing leaves Wilsonville, the next concern, it's going to be Childersburg. Uh, I will tell you, this is so much, so much like the May 27th, 1973 tornado. It's remarkable. You go back and study that one and you look at this, the track, it is so similar. Not quite the same, but it is so similar. And the 1973 was a long track. You know where that thing finally lifted, the slope of Mount Sheehaw. And we'll see how long this one stays down. Uh, but again, Wilsonville, be sheltered. Childersburg, be sheltered. We were repetitive here because people come and they go. We have to repeat ourselves because not everybody watches the entire time like some people do. Uh, and again, you're watching ABC 3340 in Birmingham. We typically have the 6 o'clock news on at this point. We're not able to do that because of the tornado emergency we have in place, and we're going to stay with this, and we're probably going to be here for a while. Uh, we hope we will be able to join our 10 o'clock news tonight, but uh, we're going to be here for a while until this one goes away, and maybe this will be the last one. I don't know. I, I can't guarantee that. The whole thing should be over by midnight. That's the good thing about it. This event will be winding down by midnight tonight statewide. Uh, but again, that's your tornado basically right on top of Wilsonville right now. Uh, not a good look for the city of Wilsonville. This is the river steam plant right here. And this is Childersburg. Uh, Childersburg comes next. So you've had plenty of time, plenty of time uh, to get to a safe place. And uh, uh, 
Uh, let me just also pass along one quick note from Hale County. All citizens are urged to stay off all roadways near Sawyerville, Jerusalem, Mount Hermon. Uh, extensive tornado damage. Emergency services are trying to get to people trapped in their homes. Uh, numerous trees and power lines are down. So again, uh, pe people are asked to stay off the roads in Hale County around uh, Sawyerville. Because, that is a civil emergency message because of the damage from this tornado. Uh, it is a very violent situation here. And uh, let's see, we're at 607. And in a minute, I'm going to show you the whole state, I promise. We've got other storms, we have other things happening, but this is the one tornado that we currently have right now. And we're just going to stay on this product. And again, this is called correlation coefficient, where when you see a big negative value like this, that means the radar, that the returned energy, it's different. There's something different about it. It doesn't correlate with the other echoes that are raindrops. And this is parts of buildings, boards, bricks, glass, nails, tree limbs. Uh, and in some cases, the debris, you know, lofted to thousands of feet up in the air, where, depending on where the radar beam, the radar beam height is. But we got a tornado over downtown Wilsonville right now. That is probably right here. And from Wilsonville, it's headed right up toward Childersburg. And again, this is U.S. Highway 280. So we do not want any, any, anybody driving on U.S. 280 from, let's say, Harpersville to Sylacauga. That, that'll make it easy. Harpersville to Sylacauga, no travel on US 280. That's the last place you want to be right now. And again, a tornado like this can take a car and flip it and throw it uh, in, in a heartbeat. Uh, a car is no good. A mobile home is no good. You've got to get out of a mobile home. And if you don't have a shelter, go to a gas station, a convenience store, fast food restaurant, someplace that offers a site built structure for you. You can't stay in that mobile home. The decisions you make in tornadoes like this are the difference between life and death. This is serious business. So, tornado that's sitting over Wilsonville, coming right up toward Childersburg. A very steady state. Uh, this is the Coosa River. This is Lay Lake, right here. Uh, a lot of folks have homes on Lay Lake. It's beautiful. Uh, the Gaston Steam Plant, the Alabama Generating Plant, is located on the river. Any uh, notes from you, Taylor, in terms of damage uh, on this? I think your mic's off. Uh, it's taken a little while for the damage to come in. Uh, so, of course, you know, as that tornado moves through, uh, there's a little bit of shock. takes a little time for those first responders to get there. I did see a message earlier where first responders are asking uh, for people just to stay off the road. So if, don't go drive to try to see the damage. We want to give those emergency responders uh, the roads so they're able to get in and help those folks that need their help right now, that need maybe are trapped, that need to... Uh, have those first responders able to reach them. So don't go out and try to find storm damage to get pictures or videos. That'll come later. Right now, the first responders need those roads open uh, so that they can get to those who need them the most right now. Okay, so at uh, 609, uh, James Spann, Taylor Serralo, uh, Ginger Z of ABC News, she was here at this time yesterday. She's out in the field, and again, we're, she has done a great job. I've seen some of her work today, but again, we, we're not going to report on what's happened so far. We're sacrificing that for coverage of what is still to come because, again, our main point here is to mitigate loss of life, and we have to stay on the air with this. So, again, this is your tornado warning polygon. You can see this stretches over to almost Alpine on Highway 21 over here. And I should mention that this does not include uh, Sylacauga. Uh, the Weather Service continues to narrow down the polygon. So if you're in Sylacauga, you are not in the polygon anymore. So if you're in Sylacauga, all clear from this. You're good. The concern, it's Childersburg right here. And it seems like we're starting to see the storm becoming more disorganized, Taylor. Uh, yeah, it looks like it, in the last couple of scans here, the, the rotation has decreased a little bit. But, you know, we don't want to give you a false sense of security. We've seen these these cyclic type storms all day today. But at the moment, looks like we, we have that rotation and weakening. And then within the correlation coefficient, we're having a hard time of finding uh, that debris being lofted. So as this storm moved over Wilsonville, it is possible that at this point that tornado has lifted. Uh, but we don't want to give you a false sense of security. If you live in Childersburg, make sure you're staying in that safe place because this could easily come back down and, uh, and, and touch down once again and start to cause damage. So, of course, we're going to stay with this over the next couple radar scans here. But for the moment, um, it does look like a, at least a positive trend. This is the first time probably... And so long. This is the first time since we started tracking this storm that we have not had a constant debris signature and a constant uh, TVS, tornado velocity signature, with this, this exact storm. Okay. And this is the, you know, again, th this event really did not unfold as the high-resolution convection-allowing models kind of portrayed it. It's still a big deal. 
horrible day. But the placement's a little different. Most of the uh, updraft helicity tracks were north of Interstate 59. Most of the damage is going to be south of Interstate 59. Again, that's what we talked about. Weather, weather doesn't understand models, doesn't understand TV weather guys, doesn't understand maps, what people think or say. It's going to do what it's going to do. And uh, the weather always wins. We just try and keep up with it. And uh, again, uh, the tornado watch, I think, was issued very timely today. This was a PDS tornado watch issued by the Storm Prediction Center. And PDS means particularly dangerous situation. So again, let's go to the reflectivity. We haven't looked at that in a while. Uh, and just maybe, again, it's disorganized. That's good for Childersburg. But please, like Taylor said, these have been cyclic, long-lasting supercells. They become disorganized. They come right back, just like a roach. And uh, understand, forget the fact that it's disorganized. If you're in this polygon, you've got to stay sheltered. That is an urgent message. You've got to stay sheltered, okay? Uh, so let's show the state real quick. I want to show the entire state. We've got a lot of counties under flash flood warnings, but we're not going to worry about those right now. But notice there are no warnings anywhere in the state. None. No warnings at all except for that one right there, the one we're talking about. So you might have heavy rain at your place. You might have thunder, lightning. But there's basically one tornado warning. I'll be honest with you. I'm really surprised, which in a good way, I thought we would have more than one at this hour. This is when the event really is peaking. But again, it's not over yet. We are going to have a, a surface cold front come in from the north and west. And as that comes in, we might see a long line of storms forming with potential for damaging straight line winds. That idea is certainly on the table. That could happen. Uh, so far, we've not seen much of a linear type organization over here. Uh, but we've still just got to watch this thing really carefully right here. So let's go back into it. Just wanted to show the entire state. There's nothing else going on in terms of warnings. This is it. We've got the one storm. And the good news, it has become much more disorganized. Um, the warning for Shelby and Talladega counties is set to extend until 630. And uh, it's just dying on the vine. Uh, Check out the track length. They just canceled it. They just canceled the oh warning. Oh my goodness, they did, didn't they? There's nothing there. I mean, there's just nothing there. So the Weather Service in Birmingham has canceled the tornado warning for Shelby and Talladega counties. And at this point, we have no warnings. So I don't know if you guys have are able to show some of the damage if we're ready to do that. Yeah, uh, we can have uh, right, because again, everybody now wants to see the damage and what's happened here today. So let me just kind of run for about another minute, and I'm going to let you guys... I, I want to show some of the things that have happened today because so many people wanted to see some of the damage. And, and again, five, at least five people have been killed here today. This has been a tragic day in, in state history, and we really regret that. But the good news at the moment, we have no tornado warnings. First time, Taylor, since what, 11 something a.m.? Yeah, we were in midday. Yeah, it was like uh, 1130 or something this morning when this started. So for the first time, uh, goodness, uh, in seven hours, we don't have a tornado warning right now. Um, but goodness, I'm looking at so many of these pictures uh, coming in from our sky watchers in, in some of these hard hit areas. And uh, um, I know that in Brent or from in Centerville, uh, we're getting reports of major, major damage, homes leveled, injuries. Uh, it's very chaotic. Uh, entrapment uh, It's just a really bad situation that they're asking for um, help. Uh, I see one of our sky watchers, a, a friend, is trapped inside a destroyed mobile home in Brent. They're trying to get him out right now. Uh, many of the locations in Bibb County are asking for extra help. So, uh, anyway, there might be some hail up in That's through here. That's what I was, yeah, yeah. thinking. That looks kind of like a hail core. This is northeast of the city of Fayette uh, in Fayette County, but there's no evidence of any storm rotation right in through here. Uh, and again, there are no severe thunderstorm warnings in effect, which is pretty remarkable. We have no tornado warnings. No severe thunderstorm warnings. So I think what we are going to do is go to Chris and Brenda and let them talk about what's happened. And if anything breaks, if anything changes, we'll be right back. So uh, let's go over to Chris and Brenda at the news desk right now. All right. Thank you, James. Certainly a violent day of storms all across our viewing area. Five people are dead. We want to show you some pictures from the Eagle Point neighborhood where many homes were absolutely destroyed. As you look at some of these images coming in from the uh, drone video here, the Eagle Point neighborhood, some uh, important notes here that we have received. No serious injuries to report. There have been injuries, but no serious injuries in the Eagle Point area. As you continue to look at these images, think of this. According to the latest media briefing, 32 homes were damaged. 29 of those 
heavily damaged or destroyed. According to the Shelby County Sheriff's Office, no serious injuries. They are still conducting a second and third round of search and rescue efforts just to make sure everybody is accounted for. Also, we want to tell you about the Pelham area. Helena, dozens and dozens of homes damaged there. We don't have any major injuries reported in those areas, but we do know that many, many homes have sustained damage. That particular tornado went from Helena to Pelham. It basically went down Valleydale Road in 119, then hit the Eagle Point area and continued into the Greystone area and Highway 2A. This is the Pelham area that we were telling you about. This is the Cross Creek area. As a matter of fact, as you look at these images, I want to pass this along as well, that the uh, that there is now a curfew for the city of Pelham, a 10 p.m. curfew put out by the mayor. Upwards of 50 homes have been damaged or destroyed across the Pelham area. Again, remarkable, no injuries, serious injuries to report when you look at these images coming in right now. That is in the Pelham area. Brenda, you touched on Helena as well. Our last report had 16 homes damaged in Helena as well. That does not account for the businesses. Obviously, we're talking about homes in this particular situation. And Pelham police had reported earlier this afternoon about 30 homes were also damaged in that area as well. And while tornadoes caused so much damage across the area, there was also flooding on I-65 at exit 308 in Coleman County. And there were also some areas in Coleman County that it looked like the roadways were actually swept away. I also wanted to talk about the Greystone area. Greystone took a big hit. There's a lot of damage in the Greystone area. We do have our team of reporters spread out literally from state line to state line because there is just so much happening. In the Greystone area, uh, there are minor injuries there. This is an image right here of Highway 119. But as I mentioned, the Greystone area, a lot of damage in that area, no major injuries to report. This is basically a scene that you're going to see throughout the really the entire state when James is pinpointing these long track tornadoes. A lot of it is going to be tree damage and we're working right now to get you uh, power outages across the state. Many, many areas have trees down across these limbs, across these lines, and the Alabama power crews are already out. I've seen them out working, trying to restore power, but right now it is an absolutely huge undertaking to try to get some of these trees from across these roads. It's really a big mess, Chris. Alabama Power has access up to the split second to know the power outages, but they're not passing those along to us. The last time we got an update from Alabama Power was about uh, 345 today, and at that point, 345, there were 14,000 customers without power, and that was across the Birmingham metro area. Did not account for the Hale County, the Greene County, and so many others. Brenda, you started off by talking about five dead in Calhoun County. Do want to let you know That's that right. uh, we have a crew heading to that location. They're getting updated right now, but our latest information is that uh, of the five was a family of three that uh, that died in this storm. Another one was another uh, individual who lived in Ohatchee, and then the fifth fatality in this is a woman who died in Wellington. And we also we also want to tell you that this is Adamsville. As we mentioned, the, the damage is widespread all across the state. You can see a lot of water in the roadway. The trees are down there. Many, not just homes, but churches have also been damaged and businesses as well. Some roadways are, are not passable. So tonight, a lot of the uh, police and the sheriff's departments are asking that you not be a curiosity seeker. You can see the high water there. Many areas have flooded today. Some parts of roadways, I know in the Coleman County area in Graysville, uh, high water there as well. Some roadways were actually washed away. You can see in Coleman County, I-65, both north and southbound lanes were covered with water. It was absolutely impassable, a, a huge mess. Now that was earlier today that that happened and uh, emergency crews had to turn the traffic around. You can see what a big mess. And again, as James Spann always tells us, turn around.
don't drown. When you cannot see the roadway, you see the water, we often see people trying to pass through. You don't really know how high that water is and you can get stuck and it can really quickly turn into a very deadly, dangerous situation. You mentioned the roads. Alabama law enforcement agency has been sending out updates pretty consistently regarding the heavily trafficked roads, and there is a tremendously long list of roads that have been impacted. Alabama 119 west of I-65, that's going to be because of trees down. That We've talked about that as well, tree blocking the roadway. Also, US 280 at Eagle Point area, that is closed due to the Eagle Point damage. That's in Shelby County, right. the Greystone area uh, of really, I say Hoover, who city of Hoover put out an update saying that there was no injuries, serious injuries in there, but uh, the city of Hoover does have resources from the city that has now essentially swarmed the Greystone area in an effort to clean up uh, that area and also to assess the damage. And we know that you want to help your neighbors. That's what we do here in Alabama. But the important thing for tonight is to allow the emergency crews to to do their jobs. Right now, we know that many people had to be pulled from the rubble of some of these homes. So we need to allow the emergency crews to do their jobs and don't be a, a curiosity seeker. We know you want to help, but tonight is not that time. We'll check in with James in a moment. We promised our team coverage and y'all said that uh, we have Stephen Quinn who is on the ready right now. Stephen, I, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know your location. So if you'd go ahead and set the scene and explain what you're seeing there. Yeah. Sure, we are in the Roebuck portion of Jefferson County. We are just off of I-59. I can see the overpass, but it's what's behind me is the story here. This is part of that area with this storm that caused that warning in Jefferson County a few hours ago. You see the power lines and the trees that were down in this area. Emergency crews are here. This is along Willow Drive, and you're seeing people here out here now starting to begin the cleanup process. Now, I spoke just briefly with uh, firefighters who are here. They say no one injured as of right now. We're going to work to try to get our way through this area in just a little bit. But this was part of that storm that 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 spun up and then strengthened very quickly just outside of downtown Birmingham and made its way all the way through Springville. This is, as I mentioned, right near the interstate, and it, it appears that the storm cross the interstate. I say that because as we were making our way trying to track it, we saw at least two instances of cars ending up one a tractor trailer actually in the median. You can imagine the winds that this was causing because you can see the damage here that was caused by it. Now, as I mentioned, you see crews are out here right now. Uh, they do appear to be stationary. I'm moving around to get a better vantage point. We're about a block away from what appears to be the heart of it. And while you cannot see it from your vantage point, I can tell you that we do have trees that appear to be snapped, just giving you a sense of uh, how strong the winds were in this particular area. Obviously, the power is out, uh, but this does appear to be somewhat isolated where we are right now. We're hoping to get a better vantage point of it. I can tell you as we follow this storm up into the St. Clair County area, following our storm watchers there, it does appear that this tornado or storm, tornado warned storm that caused this damage was also responsible for trees down along Highway 11 in Trussville, uh, as well as some other areas along there. So certainly one of those storms that continued for a long time, the concern was long track tornadoes. This one spun up quickly, but it did go quite a long way. Crews are out here. The good news, no reports of any significant injuries where we are right now. We're going to try to get you some more information here in just a minute as we just arrived on the scene. Chris. All right, Stephen, we know you just arrived on the scene. That was going to be my question. We don't we want to know about injuries. We hope there aren't any in that area, but also how long do they have a time frame of when that road may be passable? No time frame yet. I will say so. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, in Roebuck. Good news. The interstate, which is literally 100 yards back from where I am, uh, is is open right now. Uh, you do see that uh, paramedics are out here right now, but they don't look very busy, and that's certainly a, a good point. Obviously, you understand why they're out here out of a sense of, uh, of caution. I'm looking, uh, and we're starting to see some heavier equipment that comes presumably to help clear this area. It's going to be a while, Brenda, and the reason I'm saying that, you look over here, you still see the power poles in the street. Obviously, uh, the power is out, but the power crews have to come in here, and then they have to clear that out. So uh, I, I can't give you an exact time frame, but certain to say that it's probably going to be a while as they work to clean up this area here. 
All right. Christian Brenna. Thank you, Stephen Quinn, reporting live right now. And we also want to remind you, as the sun starts to set and you won't have great visibility out there, there are power lines down, there are trees down, there are also road with water covered roadways. So coming around a corner, you may not know what you're going to encounter. So right now, the best plan is to stay put. And if we could take our sky cam very quickly, I wanted to point something out that I know the skies look ominous. James Spann is getting updated right now. He's sifting through some of the images that he's received. As you look at these live images, I wanted to pass along, just as I mentioned it a few minutes ago, our friends at Alabama Power just now sent out a new update regarding the outages. The current outages are about 30,000 customers statewide with about 16,500 in the Metro Birmingham area, 30,000 statewide. And we certainly appreciate those Alabama power crews that go to those neighborhoods and get to those areas to make those necessary repairs as quickly as possible. We had some uh, more video coming in we were just talking about. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at this. This is 119 area in the Oak Ridge neighborhood. Major trees down. Uh, people are trying to assess the damage right now. Of course, tomorrow will be the big day for clearing trees and working through some of this debris. You can see people pulling some of the debris toward the street right now, but it's a shocking thing to come home and see not just the trees down, but some houses that have sustained some major damage. And again, the time to help neighbors in need will be tomorrow. Right now you can see there's emergency crews there trying to assess, trying to help, trying to make sure that uh, people are not trapped. Uh, those trees are so heavy and when the wind and the rain and bring those trees down, it can be a very deadly situation. And sometimes, Chris, those trees can even shift when people are trying to, to move them. So it, it's very important to make sure that uh, you know what you're doing when you're, you attack a tree like that. It's my understanding our uh, Byron Khalil and uh, Bill Castle are heading uh, to Brent. They're almost there. When we get that, uh, we'll show that to you. But watch the center of your screen, the dead on center of your screen right there. You're going to see a couple flashes. That's a tornado that James had pinpointed earlier this afternoon with Taylor Serralo live in the studio here. That's going to be from one of our uh, many algo cameras. And if you just keep an eye on the center of your screen, it kind of starts to buffer right there. But that's actually that tornado that went right across and into the Eagle Point area. Portions of 280, I'm told that there were cars on 280 that were damaged as that tornado was near them because of falling trees and may have uh, tried to uh, to make a, a quick maneuver to get away from the tornado right. and therefore crashed and had a little bit of damage, but no serious injuries in that area, which is uh, which is really something else. And then we do have the images coming in from East Alabama where uh, the fatalities occurred. Yeah, we want to show you those images if we could right now. And we want to remind you too that uh, when James Spann and Taylor Sorallo tell you to pull over, they're not kidding around because this can happen so quickly in a matter of seconds. You can see in Cross Creek, that tree that has just uprooted and fallen on that house. Uh, it's amazing that we don't have more reports of fatalities and also injuries. And you can see there's another tree. This neighborhood is absolutely covered with damage and it's going to take some time to clean all of this up. If we could, can we go back to uh, James is uh, James is waving us on James. You, yeah. I know that you've been going through thousands of images and wanted to give you a quick breather so that you could uh, digest some of those images. Uh, go ahead. Right. I just wanted uh, many, many, many people are asking is the severe weather threat over a lot of weather questions. I need to do address that real quick. And, and also, too, we've not seen video from the hardest hit areas. We have not. Uh, Centerville is hit very hard. Ohatchee hit very hard. There's some places we, we, we should be getting video from those locations soon. And again, the fatalities are all from Calhoun County. Ohatchee back over to Wellington. Ohatchee uh, down Highway 144 back over to Wellington. Again, it's just really rough. And we've not seen the video yet. As soon as we get that, we'll go to that. But I wanted to show the big picture. And again, this is where we stand right now. So we have uh, showers and thunderstorms in progress across the state. For now, nothing is severe. And the question is... Is it over yet? So I want to show the tornado watch, Taylor, if we can. But let's go to the tornado watch, and this is in effect until 8 o'clock tonight. No counties have been cleared from this watch. Uh, and you can see some flash flood warning polygons here, but again, no severe thunderstorm warnings. We have no tornado warnings in effect, and this is until 8 o'clock tonight. So until this watch is canceled, it's not over. There could be additional severe storms. We'll make that perfectly clear. So even though at the moment we have no 
active warnings in place. We might have more later this evening. The threat will be ending 8, 9, 10 o'clock tonight from northwest to southeast. But at the moment, I cannot give anybody an all clear a tornado watch in effect until 8 o'clock tonight for about the northern half of the state. So let's go back to the radar. And again, we've got some spots with we got very heavy rain. Uh, we maybe have some small hail falling. Uh, but again, uh, at this point, and I don't think we can go back to the radar or maybe we can. Uh, if we can go back to the radar, Taylor, thank you. Uh, I want to show the current uh, radar situation across the state that looks like this. And we've got very heavy rain falling through parts of East Alabama, heavier showers and thunderstorms now through parts of Clay and Coosa counties, heavy rain falling around uh, Logan Martin Lake, uh, northern Talladega County, heavy rain falling in parts of eastern Shelby County, uh, heavier rain falling on the uh, Walker Winston County line. But again, right now there is nothing to suggest any issues with a tornado, large hail, damaging wind. And at the moment, we have no severe thunderstorm warnings, no tornado warnings in effect. And I want to make that perfectly clear. And again, uh, uh, we have yet to see the images from the hardest hit areas. You've seen some you know, images from places hit by a tornado today, but the really hardest hit areas, we're going to be getting that back soon, especially from Bibb County. Uh, some of the still images I'm seeing, it's really, really in bad shape in parts of Bibb County around Centerville. Uh, the same thing for Ohatchee and Wellington over here in Calhoun County. So that's going to be what we'll be watching for. And many, many people are asking about their loved ones and their friends. They can't get in touch with them. Uh, there's just a lot I don't know right now, and that's why we're going to go back over to uh, Chris and Brenda here in just a second for the latest on what's happened so far today. But again, my message now, even though it's quiet now, it's not over yet, a tornado watch until 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock tonight. So let's go back over to Chris and Brenda. All right. Thank you, James. And we know that Helena got hit very, very hard. Uh, right now, we want to go to one of our reporters out on the scene. Ashley Gooden is there with the mayor. Ashley. Chris and Brenda, we are actually just getting to see this area for the first time. This is the Cunningham Drive area. Lots of damage. And I do have the mayor here with me. He held a press conference earlier. He was just kind of talking about what you all have seen. Kind of tell people what Helena has seen. It's obviously not something that is common. Correct. Here. Yeah, so we were hit by the tornado uh, this afternoon that came through. So. Um, our residents did a great job of keeping themselves safe. We have a lot of property damage around here, especially around the old town at the amphitheater in this Cunningham Drive area. So that's where our focus is going to be is now helping these residents out. Um, so we know that we've weathered the storm so far, um, but we just want to continue to be alert and make sure that uh, everything that we do, we're giving back to our residents. Right. And I know that you guys earlier talked about how many people came to the storm shelter and you and you were talking about how great it was. Kind of explain what that storm shelter was like today and what you guys are anticipating later in the evening. Yes. So there were a lot of people at our main storm shelter, which is at the high school. Um, but then there were several people, about 20 or 25 people that couldn't make it there and actually came to City Hall. And we were able to house them in our actual jails because it was the safest place in City Hall. So people were getting out of the day. Dangers, uh, and we were just doing everything that we could to make sure that we were protecting them. And I know that you guys said around 16 homes, uh, five or six businesses. Mm -hmm. What can you say for people who have not gotten a chance to see about the damage on old in the old town Helena area. Yeah, so it's it's a lot of, of property damage, trees down, uh, the power lines were down. Uh, we just got, got open 261, so people can travel that main road in and out of Helena. Um, but the power crews, the, the the gas crews are all still working to make sure all the utilities are up and running, uh, and that's our focus is to make sure that people have lights later on today, uh, so that we can start rebuilding tomorrow. Awesome. And, um, I know that this is not your first time driving up and down this street. Kind of tell me what you were thinking when you first saw some of this damage. Yes. Yeah, so what, well, I came here right after the storm hit. Uh, this was the first place that I came was Cunningham Drive. And with the roads being blocked the way that it was, it was just evacuating our cars and getting down here just to make sure all the residents were safe. Uh, and it looked like a war zone. Um, so we wanted to make sure that everybody was safe. Thank you so, so much Thank for you. talking to me. Uh, we're going to stay out here and see what we can see. We'll send the video back to you guys as soon as we can. Again, the good news here is no injuries and no deaths right here in Helena. For now, live in Helena, Ashley Gooden, ABC 3340 News. Ashley, I was monitoring your social media feeds, and you put out some images from some of the damage around Helena. What stuck out to you, and what were some of the areas in which uh, that you uh, came across that had the most damage? 
have to say, uh, the Old Town Helena area, seeing those gigantic trees just blown over and the gigantic roots out of the ground, it's the area over there by the waterfall. And so when we first arrived there, there were people all over the place taking pictures because that was not something that people were used to seeing. That area is normally really well kept and right now it just, it, it really is shocking to look at. So that is one of the areas that um, we first stumbled upon. I'd say another one, uh, we saw some pretty big trees behind the Pelham High School football stadium uh, that were down. We did not see any damage to that building. That is good news. And I also believe, um, and we haven't seen all of the homes that were damaged. Again, there were about 16 of them, but there was one that we came across just a few minutes ago, and it looked like the kind of the front porch area had collapsed over there. But mostly what we have been seeing, trees down, uh, lots of debris in the streets and, and power lines down. And that is the reason why majority of these streets have been blocked off because it is a safety issue when people come in one of these areas and there are power lines down all over the place. Chris. Ashley, you mentioned the water. Uh, is there a problem with flooding in some areas? I know there are some neighborhoods in that area that are prone to flood. To my knowledge right now, we have not had any flood reports. Mayor, do you know of any flood reports at this time? As of right now, no, we do not have any flooding in the area. Uh, but as rain continues to hit upstream of Buck Creek and the Cahaba, we're expecting to say, see some flooding. Okay. And, and what are some of the areas, I guess, that are especially flood prone? Do those people need to, uh, is there a way that those people can reach out to you guys if there's anything that needs to be reported? Yeah, absolutely. They can always reach out to City Hall uh, and we'll be able to address any of their concerns or needs. Uh, so any person that has flood damage, storm damage, uh, we can at least point them in the right direction for that assistance. Awesome. And my last question, just kind of about getting assistance for these businesses um, who are noticing the damage that that they've gotten throughout the storm day. What what do they need to do? What are the first steps that they need to take? So we'll be working closely with the Shelby County EMA uh, along with Red Cross. So we'll be partnering with them to get aid here in the area, both to the residents and the businesses. Thank you so much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Chris and Brenda. All right, thank you so much for that. And yes, flooding will be uh, part of the issue as well this evening. So again, be careful. It don't try to go out and see this for yourself. Yet we have images from all over the state. We're going to show you from state line to state line what happened today. This was a historic day because we had so many tornadoes, one after another, and so many counties involved, Chris. Some of the images I uh, wanted to share coming in from social media. This is all on Twitter. So Ashley Goodens. Uh, photo there, another one right there. This is the Eagle Point damage that uh, we've talked a lot that's in Shelby County as well. Several different images and want to thank you all for helping us tell the story from your backyard because you are our eyes and ears in these types of situations. Another right there from Shelby County. Keep in mind as you look at these images, no serious injuries to report in the uh, Eagle Point area and you can see some of the damage there uh, was quite significant. I also showed you some video just a short time ago from the Cross Creek area that's in Shelby County in Pelham. I wanted to update you regarding the 10 p.m. curfew. Uh, that curfew is in effect for the impacted communities such as uh, Cross Creek area and uh, Oak Mountain Circle, if memory serves. Uh, yeah, Cross Creek area, Oak Mountain Circle. That's going to be that uh, that curfew that the mayor has now put into place for 10 p.m. in Pelham, not citywide. It's for the impacted communities in that area. Also wanted to uh, to bring in uh, another member of the team that's been here all day with James. Taylor Serralo. Taylor, bring us up to date on what you're seeing. And this really was a historic day. Yeah, this was a, a, a really bad, it's been a bad day so far for a lot of folks. We've lost a lot of homes. We've lost some lives today. We had some violent tornadoes that have moved across the state. At this point, we do not have any uh, severe thunderstorm warnings or tornado warnings in our part of the state. There are some thunderstorms out there right now, but nothing is severe at this point. I do want to point out that we do have some more thunderstorms that are forming across parts of Mississippi that we're going to need to watch as they move into our state. And then eventually this evening we will have a, a front that's going to move in and likely a line of thunderstorms will form. 
I uh, wanted to show you that we do still have that tornado watch in effect for central and north Alabama, all of the counties in yellow here, and this lasts until 8 p.m. Uh, so that just kind of gives you an idea of we're not done necessarily with that threat for severe weather yet. We're going to wait until this tornado watch is canceled for us to give an all clear on that severe weather, and that's just not the case at this point. All of those blue boxes you're seeing there are going to be flash flood warnings. Uh, so those cover portions of uh, Shelby County there, Jefferson County, Blunt, Northern St. Clair, uh, Etowah and Cherokee County. So we are dealing with that ongoing flooding issue. Uh, but at this point, we are going to continue to watch uh, these storms out to the west that are forming across portions of Mississippi. So we could have a few more thunderstorms here that could turn severe before the evening is over. So I don't want you to let your guard down just yet. But at the current moment, we do not have any tornado warnings or severe thunderstorm warnings for central or north Alabama. All right, thank you, Taylor. And when we show you some of these images, it's absolutely amazing. There could be a house standing uh, next door and the house next to it is completely uh, down in into rubble. And then there was a church, I believe it was the Ohatchee area, that it looked like the top of the roof was just sliced off. So it's just how these winds hit at the time. And these winds were absolutely very, very strong. It started in the northwestern part of the state this morning, as James Van told us it would. And power out was out. There was flooding in the northwestern part. But then as uh, the day went on, some of these tornadoes just spread out throughout the state. And you can see uh, the area there where there's so much Eagle Point, the widespread damage, so many homes that are destroyed. This is the Sawyerville area. You can see uh, people cannot uh, actually pass right now because they're trying to clear that roadway. And there's so many roads, Chris, that are impassable this evening. And as the sun goes down, as we talked about, it's, it's going to be quite dangerous. I know people want to get out. They're concerned about their loved ones. They want may not be able to get a hold of them, but that's partly due because the cell towers could be out. Um, these high winds also affect cell towers as they also do these trees. When you look at some of those trees, it's just fascinating to think about, you know, some of them just uh, really just eliminated from the uh, the nine foot mark and above and just stripped to their bark. And of course, you got the crews that race in there immediately trying to clear the roads, and that's because they need those first responders to get into that area immediately. I know that we have a lot of uh, various live feeds coming in. Guys, I'm looking at REM 7. It looks like a, a crash or something there. Obviously, uh, that we also have Cynthia Gould. Is, is Cynthia uh, connected to us? Or are we? Are we Centerville. This is Centerville Highway 82. Go, go ahead, James. James. Uh, hello. This is uh, US 82 just to the uh, southeast of Centerville. That's where the tornado crossed. That big truck had flipped. It was on its side and it had blocked uh, obviously one lane of US 82. This is near Centerville. And understand this is in the vicinity where the, some of the worst damage is in the state. Uh, Bibb County has got some severe damage. Uh, for, and again, we really haven't seen the worst of this yet in terms of the video that we've been showing you. Uh, we've got major tornado damage. What you saw right here was located right here down in Brent. Uh, this long track supercell tornado, it, it came through Hale County. You saw the damage in Sawyerville. That's east of uh, west of Greensboro. Uh, it came through Sawyerville, cut right through Centerville and Brent, uh, then came up through Shelby County, caused some damage in Calera. Wilsonville has hit hard. A lot of reports out of Wilsonville. We've not seen any video out of there so far. Uh, and again, the loss of life was over here in Ohatchee and Wellington in Calhoun County. So there is so much going on here, and we're going to stay with this through the evening. We're not going to go back to programming tonight because of this. And again, at the moment, the death toll is five. But some of the hardest hit places you've yet to see, uh, Centerville, Brent, uh, Sawyerville. We have crews in there now, and as soon as we get the video back, we'll be able to share that. And of course, over here on the eastern side of the state, places like uh, Ohatchee, uh, back over toward Wellington, where we had loss of life. Uh, and again, I want to stress that we're not through with this yet. Now, people are asking, you know, is it all over? No, I hope it is. But no, the atmosphere is still supportive of severe weather for at least the next couple of hours. So it made the next hour or so. The tornado watch is in effect until eight o'clock. The air has been worked over by these storms today. So it 
hopefully we'll get away with nothing else, but I can't promise that. So there's a tornado watch in effect until 8 o'clock tonight for about the northern half of the state. And again, this is a PDS tornado watch, particularly dangerous situation. We have storms with heavy rain, frequent thunder and lightning, maybe some small hail, parts of Clay County, Ashland, Lineville, down toward Kellyton. Heavy rain falling from Pell City back over to Riverside, east of Boga and Anniston. Heavier rain on the Tuscaloosa Bibb County line and a band of showers back down in the parts of Green and Sumter counties. But again, the encouragement I have right now is the fact that despite all of this on the board, we have nothing severe. We have no warnings in effect. Uh, but again, the damage is pretty widespread. And it's going to take a while to get crews to all of these locations. But I'm concerned about Wilsonville. I'm concerned about parts of Columbiana. I'm concerned about uh, uh, Centerville and Brent, parts of Bibb County. Concerned about Calhoun County. Concerned about parts of Hale County, parts of Greene County. All of these counties had major destructive tornadoes going through there today. And I'm afraid we don't know the extent of the injuries at this point. I know that we've got uh, crews from Tuscaloosa coming down into Bibb County to assist and what's going on down here. They're doing search and rescue right now. I mean, there's a lot of things we just can't tell you right now because they're still going door to door to door to door, checking on people to see if they're okay, if they're trapped. I know that there's still multiple entrapments that they're working in Bibb County right now. So it is a very chaotic scene, but the first responders in our state are good at what they do. They've done this before and they'll do it again. And they're trying to get people the help that they need. A lot of people are right now with trees down. A lot of people have no damage at all. And if you have no damage at all, consider yourself blessed because it has been a rough day today. Uh, so again, that's the current radar. Uh, multiple strong, violent tornadoes today that have caused loss of life and injuries. So uh, again, but for the moment, I do not have any tornado warnings or severe thunderstorm warnings to show. So let's go back over to Chris and Brenda at the news desk. This isn't over yet. We could still be seeing some more dangerous storms. So okay. staying home I mean, and allow us to be the, your uh, eyes to show large. you the areas that have been hit hard. We uh, also right now have another crew that we want to take you out to see. Mm -hmm. But just keep in mind that if you do try to go mm -hmm. check on a loved one, you can't get a hold of them. You're going to be stuck in traffic. I've covered these tornadoes. I've been out on the scene. And what happens is the first responders have to go into the area and they will not allow you to go in there. So you need to stay safe and wait for now. A lot of updates to provide right now, but I want to get immediately to Brent uh, right now. We have Byron Khalil. He is in Brent. Byron, uh, go ahead and paint a picture and take it away and explain what you're seeing and where you are exactly, please. Well, Chris, we're just outside of Brent. This is Highway 5, and just behind me is what we've been seeing in this part of Alabama. You can see uh, a, a man appears to be cutting these tree limbs, trying to clear this road. From what I can tell, it appears that this there's only one person uh, doing this right now, or maybe a couple of people. It's very difficult to tell, but I know that this road has been blocked for quite some time. If you can't tell by the line of cars here, uh, we were just a few moments ago in Sawyerville where we saw something very similar. Uh, there were a number of downed trees crossing um, Highway 14. I spoke with some of the first responders there and they were telling me that from what they understand, uh, there are no reported injuries in that area. However, uh, of course, they were spending a, a much of that time clearing those roads. Um, we also ran into a crew of first responders that mentioned um, hearing some reports about a person being trapped on pin, a pintail road uh, that's in Sawyerville. We were watching them use chainsaws trying to clear that road so they could get to the other side to find out what the situation was. But as far as what's going on right here, it appears that none of these vehicles will be able to move um, as, until they remove some of this debris. Back to you guys. Byron, before we let you go, I know that you've been uh, really all over portions of West Alabama today and even portions of, uh, of slightly South Alabama today. You've been to Utah, I know. You're now saying you've been to Sawyerville. You're also near Brent. I want you to explain uh, the areas that you feel as though were hit the hardest, at least from what you could see from the roadways you're driving through uh, these areas. Correct. Right, that's correct. Uh, we were in Utah uh, to start the day, and what we saw there was pretty much just a lot of rainfall. Uh, we didn't notice too much uh, damage reports from that area. I even spoke with the EMA earlier, um, who also told me that they had not heard of any reports. It wasn't until we got to Sawyerville where we really started to see the impact of this storm. As I mentioned, um, on Highway 14, there were a number of trees uh, blocking the roadway. It took several crews um, and even some 
construction equipment to clear those roadways. We saw a number of people who live on that road. Um, unfortunately, they were not able to pass. Many of them um, seemingly frustrated by what was going on, but I know that those first responders were working as fast as they could. We also noticed some trees on top of power lines, so we know that those areas are also uh, most likely dealing with power outages at this moment. Um, from leaving Sawyerville, we headed straight this way, uh, on our way to uh, Centerville, rather, and we came upon this road here. We, we didn't know it was going to be blocked until we, we got here, but uh, I'd say this has been the situation for at least the past maybe 25 minutes or so since, we, since we've been in this area. But we know that this has been an issue here uh, for quite a long time. All right, Byron Khalil reporting live for us. Byron, we'll check back in with you shortly. And right now we want to go to Cynthia Gould along Highway 119. Cynthia, what can you tell us? Well, Brenda, we are here in Shelby County. Light rains, the sky is getting very dark. The winds, though, have died down. We're here at the intersection with Oak Mountain Presbyterian Church. You can see just behind us police, sheriff's deputies. They have this portion of 119 blocked off from here all the way to Herdmont Park. Uh, they have power lines down. We saw those earlier and some very large trees in the road. They're having a lot of trouble moving those. Let's take a look at some of that video from the nearby neighborhoods over there where we saw a lot of damage, several trees down. No injuries, fortunately, to report in those neighborhoods. Much worse damage up around here on Eagle Point. Uh, there we're told about 30 homes were heavily damaged all day long. They have been going door to door looking for any survivors. They told us fortunately only two very minor injuries, so they're very thankful for that. Uh, once the weather dies down again, they were going to go back in and continue another assessment, another sweep of the area to make sure they did not miss anyone on those first sweeps in there. Uh, but again, we're live here on 119. Traffic very light. If you're driving around Shelby County, not advisable, uh, but a lot of the roads you're going to find like this are blocked with trees down, power lines down, and they're asking everyone to please stay inside and stay safe. Reporting live in Shelby County, Cynthia Gould, ABC 3340 News. Thank you, Cynthia. That's certainly the message tonight because I just got a text from a friend, uh, Jim and Nix in Trustville. There is a tree on power lines right in front of it. The road is completely blocked by another tree, so please be safe. Stay put. Also just got an email regarding damage at Oak Mountain State Park. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. The park suffered widespread tree damage in areas near Alabama Highway 119 where Cynthia was just reporting from, as well as damage to the park's campground, cable skiing areas. No injuries were reported. The park is now closed because of downed trees and power lines as well. That being said, meteorologist Evan Chikvera is live right now. Evan. Hey, Chris, and I believe I heard Brenna just talk a little bit about some downed power lines, trees on the lines. That's pretty much the worst of what we're seeing. Just to give you an overview, myself and Brian were in the uh, 3340 Storm Chaser. We intercepted that storm as it came near Kalira. In fact, we believe now looking back at the previous radar scans and where we were, we were actually inside at least the edge of an EF0. Here we are uh, right near the Chilton County and Shelby County line. We are um, just to the north of that boundary and we're looking at there's so there's a police officer here uh, Al dot was just here getting part of this tree out of the road we went up towards downtown Kalira there's power there I'm not exactly sure what uh, these power lines are affecting there's a couple neighborhoods up here on the right hand side that didn't sustain damage but they might have power from these lines on 31 going into uh, those neighborhoods so this is kind of what we've been looking at again Brian and myself kind of uh, the damage we have of this it appeared to be ef zero damage as it went through at least our stretch here we also did a a bit of a stint on i-65 to see the damage and the damage that is on either side of the interstate lines up with this damage we're seeing here once again it's structural damage it's trees down and uh, we weren't able to get to that because off the edge of the interstate but uh this is we've seen several emergency vehicles also kind of in caravan moving through here they could be headed towards brent they could be headed towards other parts of of, uh, say Chilton or Shelby counties, but lots of emergency officials out here. A bobcat actually just pulled up not too long ago, and I think what they're going to start working on here over the next, uh, I'd venture to guess, uh, half hour or so before it gets dark is maybe start looking to clear this tree away. 
um, to some of this damage. But again, it's very spotty here. Like I, I think uh, for the most part, we look okay. Certainly when I saw this on radar, me and Brian were sitting here and we thought, oh, that you, this, this could be pretty bad. This is the same storm that was producing some pretty dam uh, damaging stuff uh, just to the west of here. So happy to see it's just a few trees uh, here in the uh, Calera area. But again, Things are moving. The crews were fantastic getting out here. No sooner did we double back where trees were in the middle of the road. We came back here and the trees were cleared. So shout out to Al Dot and all these workers after the storm have gotten out there. Can't say enough about them. And of course, law enforcement as well. Chris, back to you guys. All right, Evan, Chikthera, thank you so much for updating us for the Kalira area. I've been taking notes as mm -hmm. we've done this round robin with all of our reporters in the field, and I wanted to pass along. So, so far we have no injury reports coming in from Birmingham, Pelham, Helena and Sawyerville. That's not to say that there aren't injuries elsewhere. These are the, the, the spots in which we've received reports of no injuries. Then we have minor injuries reported in Hoover. You touched on the Greystone area, mm -hmm. as well as Shelby County, the Eagle Point area you touched on as well. And then we have the five fatalities reported in Calhoun County in East Alabama. Yeah, and right now, as James had mentioned, there uh, are a lot of emergency crews going door to door to make sure people aren't trapped, that make sure people are okay. Now, well, the first dangerous situation, of course, is the heavy wind. And the second dairy situation is the power lines that are down, the water on the roadways, the flooding, and trying to get out there. And if you go in an area then you try to pass it and your car gets stuck, many insurance companies may or may not cover you. So that's something else to keep in mind. But the main concern is your safety and health and staying safe. And if you you see water on the roadway, turn around, don't drown. It, it, we say it time and time again, but there's always one or two people that try it and it's not a good idea. You can see the water on the roadway right there. I know the Coleman area had a lot of high water. Helena is expecting some flooding possibly tomorrow as more rain comes through and as the water starts to rise. So these are things that you have to be concerned about and make sure that you stay in. As we've said before, you're going to get stuck in traffic if you're trying to check on someone in a certain area. Right now, the first responders, the the emergency responders are the ones that need to get in there. The police, the EMA, right now, let them do their job. And a lot of you have been sending us images. This is one of those shots right there. This is uh, th this is Pelham, correct? Oh, this is Oak Ridge. Okay, this is uh, this is uh, in Shelby County. And um, I wanted to let you know that uh, you can also share your images by sending them to share at abc3340.com, share at abc3340.com. I was just looking at my phone at some of the uh, emails coming in from so many viewers explaining and, and, and sharing what is happening in, uh, in their backyard. But so many portions of our viewing area have been impacted by this severe weather system that moved right through in these long track tornadoes. But this is just off of Highway 119 here, and so many homes have been damaged. Of course, the trees down you've heard and seen the uh, the stories before. I'm also looking at some of the live feeds coming in right now to our newsroom and we're able to to uh, touch base on some of that. I know that we have Stephen Quinn. Is he is, is Stephen available? Because I wanted to ask him. I know that he was going to get an update from a Birmingham uh, fire rescue. Uh, Stephen, no injuries. Is that is that the case? That is true. So far, the good news is no injuries and we're learning more about the scope of the damage. 20 to 30 uh, houses that were damaged here along this portion of Roebuck and we're getting a better view now from last time we joined you of just the scope of the damage. Look at this trees that went right through the metal roof above the carport of this house. I'm told in one of these houses here an 80 year old woman was by herself. She survived. Everyone here survived. In fact, firefighters have been going along door to door checking and assessing the damage. This area is closed off to most people. Obviously, the power is out, but people are out here now trying to take store of what has happened here to clean up the damage as best they can. It's not raining.